pink poodle crafts join the poodle pack it's time to get creative and make you laugh make your own or today pink poodle crafts is the way what a good boy hello how's everybody doing today How is everybody doing? Hi, Deborah and Christina and Renee and Gail and Laura. How are you guys doing? Hi, JD. How are you guys doing? Everybody having a good weekend so far? Has anybody done any creating this weekend? Hi, Gail. Have you been creating like good little creators? Whoa. I went to the Creative Reuse yesterday. I also went to Rue 21 with Chris. Um, if you've never been there, they're kind of like, um, they have women's clothes and men's clothes, but they're more like more geared towards like teenagers really and young like young people in their 20s but you know chris is a forever child um but he uh sometimes he likes their jeans there and i mean their jeans are pretty nice and i always have a problem with women's jeans oh my god gail don't get me started about orange is the new black i'm not happy about that ending not at all. Oh my god. Yeah, that sucks. I just about cried at the end of that. But, um, my problem when I buy jeans, regardless of what kind, I typically like, my favorite type of jeans are like boot cut jeans, but they're not as much in style right now. I mean, obviously you can wear whatever, but, um, what I mean is they're not as much in style, which means nobody's really making them now. So, I mean, I'll still wear them, the ones I have, if I can, if I fit them. But some of them are way too big on me. I have others that are too small on me. But, and the reason why I like boot cut jeans is because of my body style. My body style is, I have really skinny arms, really skinny legs. My thighs are really thin. And then I have a, like, a belly. And all my weight is in like my belly and my boobs. Um, so my body, I'm like an apple, picture an apple on a stick. That's me. Although I do have a waist. So, you know, I, it's just, my body is just bizarre. So if I wear skinny jeans, I like them, but I prefer boot cut because the flare of the boot cut evens out my body, if that makes sense. Because if I, if I have skinny jeans on, I look like an apple on a stick because my legs are so stick skinny and then my upper body's a bit bigger um, that it almost looks funny to me. However, if I wear flare bottoms or boot cut bottoms, it kind of, it, it here's like the apple and it goes down and then it, it goes out because of the flare leg. It kind of gives the illusion that I have more proportion. Um, mm, I'm somewhat boot cut jeans. I can't wear, see that's what I mean. I can't wear women's jeans very well. And I can't wear Walmart jeans because they generally are the worst. Um, they don't fit right. I don't like them. And I've not seen boot cut jeans in any store in a long time. Not, not real boot cut jeans. I've seen straight leg jeans are now a thing, but not boot cut. So I haven't bought jeans in a long time because of this reason. Also, the other problem I have is when I go to a store, now if I wasn't wearing plus sizes, like 16, like around a size 16-ish, um, cause I have a pair of 14s that actually fit me, but then most of the time I'm in a 16, it depends on the jeans. But a size like 16 in the waist, the legs, for some reason, these stores or the people that are making these clothes think that people that have a 16 or an 18 waist must have thighs that are like humongous 
because you'll every pair of 16, 18 jeans, I can show you pictures of a pair of 16, 18 jeans and the thighs are ginormous. And my thighs are so skinny, so it looks funny. I can get a, a size 16 or 18 or even 14 that are, well, 14 I can usually, if I, see if I'm a, if, if I can get into a 14, the legs are usually good in, in those. But once you get to like a 16, if you have thin legs, you're going to look funny. Even skinny jeans, they're always so big on me. Like the legs are huge. Um, I would rather have like a size 8 in the legs and then a size 16 in the waist. That would fit me better. So anyway, the point is, when we went to Rue 21, I was looking at this pair of camo pants. Now, I love camo pants. I don't know why. I have several pairs of them. Um, I love them. I just think they're cool looking. I like the color. It goes well with, I don't know, just, I just like that color. I like all the greens and stuff. And I just like, I always liked it. I used to have a really cool camo jacket. I've talked about this jacket before in the past. When I was in high school, I had this really cool, it was a very well used, but really cool, very broken in camo jacket. I had patches on it. It was very, very cool. And it got stolen from me and I was devastated. And I always wanted to replace it. It wasn't a super heavy jacket. It was like the medium kind of jacket. And I never could replace it or find anything even remotely close to it. But anyway, um, I would never wear camo pants and the camo jacket. I usually wore something completely different with either one, like mix and match. But anyway, my point is, I have a pair of camo pants that I still can wear. Um, and they're kind of a, they're kind of like a, a straight leg camo pants. They're, I think those are, uh, I don't remember. If, no, they're not. They're not actual camo pants. I don't think. No, they're not. They were just camo pants. That I had, I used to have an actual pair of camo pants that I got from a, um, army base or an army. Uh, no, not an army base. Um, oh my God, my brain just drew a blank. Anyway, you know what I mean? One of those stores that sells all the army stuff. Anyway, Rue 21, they had a pair in, in the men's size side. Cause I was helping Chris pick out stuff because he was looking at t-shirts and jeans i had looked in the women's stuff but they don't really have a lot of plus size at rue 21 so it goes up to like an extra large which i can fit into extra large pants i can fit into but when it came to their jeans and stuff like i don't even look at rue 21 because their jeans aren't going to fit me um i'm short too when it comes to oh no camo not camel <laughs> <laughs> yes, camel pants. Camel toe pants. <laughs> Hi, Kennedy. Hi, Ray and Sandy and Jody. Um, so anyway, they had this pair of camel pants and they were so cool. They were, because nowadays, guys' pants, they have skinny jeans for guys. And these were like skinny, they were kind of like jeans. The material was, it was a camo and it was more of a canvasy kind of feeling pants fairly heavy but it was like a cross between almost like a denim and a canvas which are very similar if you know like a heavier canvas and a denim and they're very similar in weight which I like I like a little bit of a heavier sometimes I like really light pants depending on the type but if it's gonna be a skinny jean I like it to be a heavier jean so that the pants sit a certain way on my legs. I, I can't explain it. I'd have to show you with them on, but I can't. So these were really cool and I'll, I'll show you them. Um, because they had like, they were skinny jeans or skinny pants. They did, they had an elastic waist and they were an extra large men's, which fit me perfect. Um, in fact, they were a little big actually, but perfect. They have a drawstring too, which I thought, okay, great. Cause I don't really like jeans anyway, like jean jeans with the zipper and the freaking button and all that so they were perfect and they were skinny jeans and they had rips in them like really cool kind of shredded like rips and i really liked them and i was looking on the rack and they had one pair of extra large and chris was like well i don't like them so i said you know what for the heck of it i want to try these on and see if they fit so i try them on and they fit perfect they fit my waist and the legs were not out of control big which is the problem I always have with skinny jeans. I guess guys are allowed to have a bigger waist and still have thinner legs. I don't know. Very weird to me. So then I realized they were buy one, get one free uh, with any of the pants. 
So I went and I looked and I was hunting in the men's section for a pair of jeans to try on because even the jeans counted in that buy one, get one free. So I'm running around looking for jeans. I ended up finding multiple pairs of jeans that I loved because all the guys skinny jeans fit me perfect. They fit me in the legs. They fit me in the waist. They fit me in the ass. They fit me everywhere and they did not look ridiculous and I was shocked. So I ended up with the camel pants and my free pair. I got a t-shirt and then I got um, another pair that was on like a clearance type of thing because it had like a little bit of a watermark staining on it, which will come right off. And it was up near the top portion of the pants, like by the zipper pockets area. So I know that it'll, A, even if I couldn't wash it out, it'll never show because I do not wear shirts that are above my waist. I wear shirts that go down like usually longer, like to my like upper thigh like t-shirts or whatever. And I was like, well, screw it. They were like $12, $10, something like that. And they were normally like $40. So I was like, cool, got those. And so I ended up with three pairs of pants and a t-shirt for like 70 something bucks. Oh, and a pair of socks, two pairs of socks, two pairs of, two pairs of cute socks. Um, I also got a pair of sneakers because I really needed them. Um, because that's the whole reason we went into Route 21 is because Chris wanted a pair of sneakers that they had at Route 21. But he had gotten them like a year ago. And I said, I guarantee you they're not going to have the same sneakers that you got a year ago here. And they didn't. So we ended up going to DSW and we got a deal on sneakers. So he got a pair. I got a pair. Um, I just got some Skechers because I needed sneakers. Because the sneakers I've been wearing are beat up to crap. So, I was very happy. But, if you want, I will run out and grab what I got and show you real quick before we get into the Arteza stuff. This will give other people a chance to come in if they want. So, just give me like a minute and I'll be right back. Okay, so, oh, Chris had bought me the socks. He got me these in DSW and the other two he got me. Um, which, I don't know where the other two went. They actually had a pair of socks with poodles on them, but they were peach, and I don't like the color peach. And I already have a little pair, like a little pair of poodle socks, but I really like the ones with the, the NASA rockets because I love stuff like that. So those were cute. I wear stuff like this in the winter. Um, and plus these were a little bit, little bit thicker. They don't seem very thick, but they're a little plushier than the other ones were. But I wear stuff like this in the winter with my pajamas. Thicker and longer socks. All right, so here are the camo pants. I absolutely love them. Two pieces. Um, Here they are with the string and everything. So they're kind of cool because they've got like this ribbing here. They've got like, like a faux zipper here on the legs. And I just thought they were the cutest things. And look, I have no pants. I wear these same pants every time I leave the house. I don't, I don't have any shorts to wear because none of my shorts fit me. They're either too big or too small because I'm in a really weird size. So the only pants I have are these black kind of boot like yoga pant type of thing. They're the only pants I have that fit me. That's it. And Chris was like, you wear the same pants every time I see you. I'm like, yes, I know. I wear the same black pants. That's the only pair I have. I wear them every single day if I have to leave the house. 
then the only time I wear them is if I have to leave the house. Otherwise, I have a thousand pajamas, but I have no pants to go anywhere in. And then, of course, they get skinnier at the bottom and they have this little, like, scrunchiness. And I just absolutely love them. And these are a little bit baggy on my legs. Um... But they're not bad and I like this little scrunchiness and that's how I like my pants to kind of sit but they're I, I really like these I love these pants I put them on and I was like oh my god I'm in love so that's those and then the pair that I got for free were um, these here which are the men you know these are all men's pants men's these are 36 32 um and see even the thigh on these a little bit bigger than i would like but they were perfect when it got to about here down they were absolutely perfect on my legs and fit nice um so i didn't mind that they were slightly bigger on the thigh but they were actually fine really and they're cute i like pants that are worn looking with like some rips i really like that i don't like plain and, um, and these are kind of cool because they're almost got like a weird acid wash to them where it's got like these little lines, like almost veins going through it. And I really like those. So those are those that I got oh, stuck under my thing. And then the ones that I got on clearance because they had like some sort of damage. These ones I liked a lot too. These ones were bigger though, I think. These ones were a size, weren't they a size bigger? I think these were like, I don't remember. Oh no, these weren't them. Never mind. That's, that's something else. Oh, here they are. I was going to say, that's weird. Yeah, these were, were these size bigger or were they also 36? Yeah, they're 36, 32. Never mind. I tried on the bigger ones that didn't fit. And these ones are a little bit lighter, like an acid wash. And these actually have zippers. They don't go do anything, but they open and close. Um, If I can get the zipper to stuck. The little thing is stuck on it. There we go. They don't go anywhere, but it's like a faux zipper. It's just nothing there. I thought it was going to open and actually <laughs> open to my leg, and then <laughs> I didn't care either way. It's not really supposed to be open. Close. So these are cute, and I like the zippers. And, like, I'll show you where the staining is. Look. It's right here. You could barely even see it. See it? And that's, that's it. And I'm like, my first of all, if I can never get that out, nobody's ever going to notice it, first of all. And... My shirts always come down to at least here, but I know that's going to wash out. It's just dirty water that got on it because they probably were in shipment somehow and it got a dirty water stain on it. But anyway, these go all the way down. They have the two zippers and then they have rips, which I love. And so, yeah, I got jeans that actually fit. Oh, and what's funny is when I came home, now remember I had, I said I talked about this sweater that I got on Poshmark. It's really, really huge on me, but it's very comfortable to wear around the house, which is fine. Um, it's, it was, you know, cheap. And I forgot that the day that I ordered this, I did get something else from Poshmark, totally forgot about it and didn't even think about it. And then when I got home, it was there in the package and I was so happy to have like three new pairs of pants well guess what I forgot that I bought another pair of pants on Poshmark and these are a little bigger um I think yeah because oh yeah these are an 18 um women's but they're era pastel or whatever which are like expensive pants and I got them for nine dollars and they're like in great condition and they were not too big in the thigh they're a little bit big, but they're not, I like, they're, they're, they looked in the picture. I normally would never in a million years buy jeans online, not in a million years, but for $9, I was like, I'll take the chance because they don't look like she had a picture of them like this, where you could see flat out and see most of the time when I see women's jeans, they're like this wide for a size 18 or even a 16. And I, hers didn't look that, and they don't, they're not as wide. They're going to be a little bit baggy. I would have preferred it if they were like this, probably. But see, I can fix that. I've done it before. When I was a teenager, I used to use, I had um, I had my mom's sewing machine. And the only time I ever sewed anything, I would turn the jeans inside out. And I would fold, I would make the thing on the inside. 
I would make my jeans skinnier because I was 100 pounds and, and no jeans fit me. None, no matter what size. I used to wear a size one and the jeans were too baggy in the leg. So I would do this. I would take them and I would make a new seam on the inside to tighten them up in the leg. So if I have to, I'll do that with these. But see, I can't do it with the really, really big ones because it doesn't look right. I can only get away with that if they're just a little too big, like these might be. So I can get away with that with one of these because I can just do that and you don't notice it. So I might have to do that, but I don't think I even will with these. But for nine bucks, a pair of Aeropostale jeans, like, okay. I wasn't going to pass that up. But I did forget all about it. I forgot that I got them. I didn't even think about it because I was so focused on the sweater. <laughs> and then the t-shirt I got, me and Chris almost had a fight over because at first, I was helping him pick out a t-shirt. Now, this was a men's t-shirt. I was helping him pick out a t-shirt. And I said, oh, look at this one will fit you, Chris, because it was an extra large. And then I went to go and I handed it to him. And he goes, oh, I like that. I said, okay. And then I went to look for one for myself. I said, well, I want one too. Went to go look. They had no more extra large. So I was like, can I have that shirt back? And he's like, why? I'm like, because I really, really want that shirt. I said, I thought they were going to have another extra large. And he was like, fine. And he gave it to me. And he's like, but find me something else. So I had to find him another shirt that he liked in order to get this one back from him. Because they had a sale on their t-shirts too, so... So, yeah, I thought that was pretty good, though. Now I have some clothes to wear, at least. But I wanted to wait. Like, last year, when I was still on the prednisone, I would I refused to buy... I refused to buy um, uh, any kind of clothes. And because I knew that I had gained weight, and I was like, well, as soon as I go off the prednisone, I'm going to lose weight. So since I've been off the prednisone, I've lost like 20 something pounds um, or more, I think. And yeah, because I'm 180 and I was 210, 215 maybe on the prednisone, something like that I went up to because of that. And I'm probably going to go down to like, I usually, my normal weight is like 170, 175. At least I'm hoping to get back down to that. And that's good for me because... It just suits my body because of my big boobs and stuff. It always, that, that was fine with me. I don't ever like care if it's any smaller, but I knew I wasn't going to buy any clothes back then. I said, well, I'll wait until I lose at least 20, 25 pounds before I even try to buy any clothes. So I suffered with one pair of pants and never wore anything else. And you, I mean, even when I like, even when I met Emily at the expo last year, those same pants are the only pair of pants I have, and I have not worn any other pants when I left the house other than those. I had a pair of jeans that I bought for the expo that were really cheap from Cato, and they were like $12, and they're way too big on me now. I can't even wear them. So, but yeah, I haven't, I, I always have a problem with getting pants for my legs because my legs are so skinny that... My body's just very unproportioned in that way, and I hate it. I wish I had thicker legs, and I wish, like, some of the weight from my center would be more in my legs so that I looked more proportioned, but unfortunately, I do not. Yeah, I mean, they, they I don't know what it is, but they think that everybody that has, you know, a waist that is bigger than a 12 or 14 has huge legs. I mean, if, if I was a 12 or 14, I still would have a problem with the legs being too big. But, you know, I, it's not that noticeable. But when it comes to, like, an, a 16 or an 18, forget it. The legs are humongous on me. And I always looked funny. And I always hated the way it looked. So I was, you know, I stopped wearing jeans a long time ago because of it. Like, I never wore jeans. Because if I was any more than a size 14, I refused to wear jeans. You bought some pink camo reading glasses? Ooh, I bet they're cute. I was at Dollar Tree today. I'll show you what I got from there after I show you some of the products and stuff I got today. Um, but hi, Barbara and uh, Laura. And anybody else I haven't said hello to? Hello. See, I wish I kind of had thunder, thunder thighs, but only if it came out of my stomach and, and, and evened itself out. 
<laughs> That's all I want. So um, I finally buckled down and, and answered emails from Arteza because, <laughs> you know, I... I mean, like they had mess. They had emailed me a while ago, and like a while ago, and it took. And I just was so busy, and I didn't, you know, I didn't get back to them. And I, I thought, you know, and I finally sat down. I'm like, no, I, you know, I really should do do it because I haven't done anything in a long time where you know I reviewed some products. So, um, they had sent me. I didn't realize they were going to send me. They had told me to pick out stuff from the website that I wanted, pick that, pick something out from the website. And well, long story short, they ended up sending me four things and I didn't, I didn't know they were going to send me that much. Um, so they sent me, um, firstly, this is a whole case of markers and it can't, comes with a, a strap and everything, which, you know, you have, if you want, you want it to be long, you'd hook it on here. Or you can just use it by the handle, which is really nice case, um, which I'll probably keep them in here because, I mean, that's perfect storage. It's not very big. I'll probably take these off and store it under my desk. Um, but I think it's, you know, and they have like all the colors listed with a little swatch, but I'm going to swatch out each color, but I'm going to show you first what I got and then we'll swatch everything. So these are a 60 pack of markers and I haven't played with this, but I think it opens up on the sides. Yeah, it does. And so that this way you can kind of like, like sit it and flip through what you need, which I thought was pretty cool. I think it's 60. Yeah, 12 times five is 60, I think. I suck at math. I'm sure one of you will know. <laughs> so that was a really cute, I like these, this cute little case that they're in and everything. I'm going to put, maybe I'll put one of my poodle patches on there. But I like that. I like the case. And this is nice because if I go somewhere, then it's like, oh, I could bring these, you know. And you can use the alcohol ink, you know what I mean, which I'm, we'll, uh, we're going to go over that. But you could do so much stuff with these um, besides just coloring. But I'm going to do projects with this stuff too. So, um, but t for today, we're just going to play a little bit. Then they sent me this box of paint. Um, hello, Bima. And it has 14 of their premium artist paints, and they come in this crazy little, it looks like a, a juice bag, you know, you turn that into and drink the juice. <laughs> Obviously, don't drink paint, but that's kind of cool because then you can like lay them sideways and just put them in like a basket or something. And you get more, I guess. Cause this is four ounce, 4.6 ounce or 4.06 ounces. So it's over four ounces of paint, which is pretty nice. And then you get all kinds of colors. Um, so we'll go through them momentarily. Ouch. That hurt my finger. And then I got these, which are 12 metallic colors. These are all metallics. Um, so there's you know, tubes of metallic. These are strictly metallic colors, which is cool. Which I think I have it upside down. No, I don't. And then lastly, there is watercolor paints. Mm. Whoops. And this is a nice, um, I mean, like I have smaller pans, um, of like the Jane Davenport paint and stuff, but this is a nice one if you want like a bigger set, but still in a nice kind of take it with you type of pan. And it has a swatch thing, but I'm going to obviously swatch myself and it comes with a water brush and 36 colors, which is cool. So I want to try their water brush. Very cool. So I'm going to leave that out of the box for now. Okay. So 
I want to swatch the colors of the markers. And we will start with the lightest ones. And I don't know if I'm going, well, I guess it'll be kind of an order, I guess. Um, but they have a bullet, a bullet, kind of like a, a skinny bullet nib and then a, um, a chisel nib. Uh, so like the standard chisel nib and then the other side is the, like a bullet nib, but it's not like a real big one. So you can actually write pretty finely with it. Um, and so the bullet nib, this is a very pale, like it would be a skin tone, you know? So, and it's nice and thin, so you can actually like write with it, which is nice. So that's like a light, a light color. What color is that? Oh, they have it on the cap, duh, peach. It's peach. Whoa, get back in there. And then we got, let's see what I'm doing. And then this is pale peach. So this is even lighter. This is even lighter. You can barely see, it'd be a good, to, a good one to blend your light, your peaches together. You probably can't see it till I hold it up. And even then it's gonna be nice and pale, but that's a good, I like that it has a nice pale. I don't have any skin tones, so that's kind of good. And then it's got the clear blender. So that's a blender. I don't really need to swatch a blender because there ain't nothing. It's just out. It's just basically the blender, so blending solution type of stuff. This is Glacier Blue. So it's like a blue gray, I'm assuming. And then yeah nice blue gray very light it would be good for like snow or ice i'm gonna zoom in a little bit so i don't have to we'll zoom in a little and then we got what's this cloudy day cloudy day so that is a gray but it still has a little touch of blue to it a little bit cloudy day good night gail And then this one is Fog Gray. This one's a little bit lighter and it's more of a gray than a blue. So this is more of the gray, regular grays. And then this one is Koala Gray. I like the names. It's not just gray, light gray, medium gray. <laughs> It's a nice dark gray. And then the next one is, this says sage green, but it looks very gray. That's sage, oh, kind of, yeah, I guess it is. It's a very light. It doesn't look very much like the cap though. I guess that's a, that would be, a, I, I would assume a hard color to maybe get but it is it's not and the camera's probably not going to really pick up the green in it or nothing because it sucks and it's not focusing but yeah it's definitely more green that you're than you're seeing on the on the picture which i've never seen a marker that was that color i kind of like that color um and this is dark chocolate brown I like this nib because it would be good for coloring small areas when you need to get into small areas because it's so fine that you can get into little areas with it. Whereas like I noticed, I love brush tips and I didn't think I was gonna like these nibs because 
I usually like the brush nib, but I realized that the brush nib, I have a hard time not going outside the lines when I use a brush nib in a small area. These are like perfect for that. So that's kind of good. So that's the dark brown, chocolate brown, dark chocolate brown. This is noir, so black. Black. And then burgundy. That's a pretty color. Burgundy. You going to bed, Laura? You got work tomorrow? What color is this? Wine red. It's a nice deep dark red. You're not going to be able to see the Halloween stuff I got at the dollar store. And then we go to this color, which is Sienna Brown. Oh, I'll do this first since I... So it has a little bit of a red to it, like a red brown. And then we got Hazelnut Brown. Kind of a medium, kind of normal brown. And jasmine yellow. That's a nice yellow. It's not like, it's more like a straw colored kind of yellow. But when you don't want like yellow, yellow, it's a good color. And then we're into the blues. This is Arctic blue. That would be a good ice color too. Like between that one and, oh, that would be really good. They're very similar. Just this one's darker and that one's lighter. That would they'd be good together for like winter uh, colors and then there's sky blue oh, I'll do it this way and then there is what's the turquoise oh they got turquoise right so many people don't get turquoise right and they make it too much like teal. This has the green in it, which is what it's supposed to have. So kudos to them for finally somebody getting turquoise right. And then this is teal. This should have more blue, which it does, than green. Teal has more blue than green. Turquoise has more green than blue. Perfect. I love that teal. That's a good one. I like that color. And then this one is pine green, which is probably just like a dark teal. Yep. It's a very dark teal, tealy turquoise, but it's kind of like a, you could see the green in it, but you could see the blue in it too. It's like in between. And it looks more blue on screen, I'm noticing. And then we got, what's this? Cer I can never say this word. Cer Cerule yep, that word. Cerulean. Cerulean? Is that how you say it? I can never say it. It's just a word, one of those words that you, everybody has one of those words that you look at it and you've seen it a million times and, you, and you've tried to say it a thousand times and it, I've heard other people say it. I just have trouble getting that word out. I have a friend who can't get elliptical. She has pro problems with the word elliptical and she always says like, what does she say? Like a Ellipti ell elliptical, elli no, ellitypical or something like that. She'll always trip up on that word and it makes me laugh like hell when she does. <laughs> so funny. And this one is uh, Aegean blue. A-E-G-E-A-N. Aegean. Aegean. I don't know that word very well. 
sort of like an argyle or ar argon or something like that. Or maybe that's how it's spelled. I don't know. That's a pretty blue. I like this one too. It's kind of like almost like a, a denim color. And there's this one, which is sapphire blue. Pretty. Yeah, so far I like the colors. They're they're accurate to their description, which is to me, I for some reason I find that that's not usually the case with a lot of colors. And this one is Carolina blue, which I don't know how this is supposed to be. Or if it's a real color, they just made it a color themselves. Oh, here's a dark blue. Denim blue. So this one's supposed to be the denim blue. Oh yeah, that's nice and dark. That's a good denim blue. Just got ink all over the outside of it. Because I suck at putting on a cap. Nice. That's a good one. Good one. And then we got, um, what does that say? Mykonos. Mykonos blue. Mykonos? Mykonos. Mykonos? I don't know. I've never heard of that in a color before. I've heard that name before, but is that like Mykonos? Isn't that like a, a an island or something? Isn't that like a place? Well, it would, if, if it was, that's probably they're referring to the ocean because I think, isn't that Mykonos Island or something? Or am I thinking of the wrong place? I don't know. And then we got forest green. They should call it forest gump green. <laughs> I think they'd get copyright infringement on that. That's a good one. Good green. Then they have jungle green. It's nice to have a good set of colors because I have alcohol ink markers, but the Dick Blick markers that, that I had gotten, I, the color range is weird to me. They didn't really put any rhyme or reason when they put those colors together, which is weird. Like this one makes sense because it goes from lightest to darkest and it has like your range of colors. Well, the ones that I got from Dick Blick, they're not like that. They're very bizarre. <laughs> and I always didn't like that about them because they, I like the markers fine, but I don't like the color that they gave for like the pack of whatever it was, 32 or 50 or something like that. Because I could never really use them because I couldn't blend things together because you'd have one color and you'd look for a color like it or you know, to blend with it. And there was nothing to blend with it. Where at least these, you have darks and lights of the similar colors to blend. And I didn't understand the whole situation. You have a case for your markers and something similar to a notebook for the pencils. Oh, that's cool. Oh, this is apple green. I was going to say it looked like kind of like a sour apple. This one, pale green. This almost looks like a lime green. Yeah, it's kind of has a lime-ish, but I think that's more, yeah, that's, it's called, that one's called lime green. But this, yeah, I guess this is more of a pale green, but it would probably work nice with the lime green, maybe. And then this one's called Olive Green. That would be good for painting or drawing on my camo pants with. It would blend in. It's kind of like that colors in the army colors. Lime Green. This is the Lime Green. Oh yeah, I can see why that's the Lime Green. It's much. That's a little bit like more subtle. That has the lime has more of a pop of yellow to it to make it that limey color. Well, that makes sense. And then come the yellows, and this one's like really bright. Neon yellow, no wonder. It's neon yellow, it's kind of like a highlighter. Well, that's exactly what it's like. I've never seen a, a, a highlighter color in an alcohol ink before. That would be a cool alcohol ink to have, like a bottle of alcohol ink. 
is like some neon colors. Can you imagine how cool? Oh, I'll have to see if I can find some neon colored alcohol inks. Wait a minute, Barbara, are you the one that told me that, that somebody came out with neon colored alcohol inks? And then there is sapphire yellow. Oh, I've never heard of that before. Are sapphires yellow? They have, or do they have yellow sapphires? What I mean, I know sapphires are typically blue. I think, no, 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 I think I knew that already. I think my mom had a yellow sapphire ring, if I'm not mistaken. My mom had a lot of jewelry. She was very much a jewelry person. Um, bumblebee yellow, oh, that's cute, I like that. And this would be a good bumblebee yellow. And then we're on to the, oh, more yellow, another yellow, Tuscan Sun. And that one is not far off. That would be like the next color. These three here would go, see that's what I mean? Like they all go in such a good order that, obviously, which I'm sure, I, I don't, I'm not an alcohol ink expert by any means. Hi, Angela. So I wouldn't know if, you know, but they all really do go well together. I could see how in the threes and even like there and like there, like how they would just kind of, you could pick any three in here and they'd blend together, which is pretty cool. And then this is pear green. Go back to another green, but it's probably a yellow, it's obviously a yellowish green. Yeah, but this would, see, this would go with any of these yellows here pretty much. And it would probably be able to go with like these two greens to make it interesting blend. Yeah, it's like a, a weird mix of green and yellow. And this one is sunflower yellow. Yep, that, look, that would be a sunflower. And see, that looks similar to this here. See, all of these would blend so well together. So if you're making a sunflower, you can make like, get your highlights with this one. This one's a little slightly darker. This one's like in between. And you have that one. They all kind of would go together. That's what I need. I need a sunflower stamp, like a really big one so that I can color it with markers or something. What's this one? Yellow ochre. I like yellow ochre. It's like a marigoldy kind of gold yellow. And we got a few more to go. This one is apricot. And yep, that looks like a good apricot. Now this would blend with any one of these and that one too, and any of these. And then we got, we're getting into the orange, vermilion. That's a good one, I like that. And this one is pumpkin orange. Soon it's gonna be Halloween. I can't wait. And then we got neon pink. Neon pink. Pink? No. Yeah, pink. It says pink. Oh, it is like a pinky. It's like a pinky orange, though. Oh, that's a cool color, though. It's like a pinky kind of coral color. It's not going to pick up on camera very well. It looks more pink on camera than it is. It has a little bit more of a corally kind of color to it. Usually neon pinks are like darker and they don't look very neon, but that one actually looks pretty neon, but it also looks a little more in the orange family. This is what now? Watermelon pink. More like a artificial watermelon color. You know, like an artificial watermelon candy would be. 
I like that pink. That's a good pink. It almost would work for like a vintage pink too. It's almost got that color to it. This is coral. So let's see how this looks compared to that, which to me looks very cool, kind of corally. Well, they'd all blend together. So I guess this is just like, to me, a darker coral. I think that's like a lighter coral. It looks more to me. Fine by me. I, I, colors I have are not as nice as these, that's for sure. What's this? Tomato red. And this is the last one. No, oh, no, I have a whole a whole row. I didn't even realize. Ooh. So that is like tomato soup. That's what it reminds me of. It looks like tomato soup. <laughs> one more row. And then we got rose red. over so you could see hi Tammy hi Sarah anybody else that's come in hello oh I have a I remember I, I had that video that glue video that I did and I said it was like crazy because it had like has like over a hundred thousand views and like less than a month in like a matter of about a month it had a hundred thousand views and I thought that was so crazy that the algorithm, you know, did that because it's pure luck when that happens. It usually means that that YouTube is pushing your video, um, especially in the um, um, suggested videos. Like after you're done watching this video or live stream, um, you know, on the right. It'll have an, the next video that's kind of come up automatically. That's considered the suggested video or recommended, recommended video. Um, this is, by the way, ruby red, if I didn't say that before. Well, every now and again, YouTube will decide to push a video. Um, I don't know how... People have explained how they work with that. Like it could be something that's in the title. It depends on what it is and what's trending around that time or what's happening. Or like they can, maybe they just pick a random, I don't know. I really, it's very much a crapshoot. It's not like, oh, I must have made a really good video. Nope, it has nothing to do with that. It's that video will end up getting pushed more than other videos. So I, I, I try to be realistic with people to make people understand how YouTube algorithm works. So if you have one video that just spikes and all of a sudden gets a lot of views, 99.9% .9 of the time, the reason for it is because unless it's like some outrageous, crazy video that everybody's sharing, but you can look in your analytics and it'll show where it's being pushed and why it's, you can see why. And it'll, if it says recommended videos and you see that the recommended, like, the amount of times it was recommended was a lot. That means YouTube pushed that video for whatever reason, not because they liked it. It has nothing to do with that. It just means that they decided that that video was going to be the crapshoot of the month and they were going to pick it. So that happened again with me. That happened in like April, May, maybe it was May. And now another video that happened with, and I didn't even notice it until now. And it's the live, it was a live stream, which shocked the hell out of me because usually live streams don't get pushed like that. Um, so that was shocking. Most of the time, if you're going to get a push, it's going to be on a, like a regular video. It's not going to be on an out, you know, three hour long live stream, but it was, um, the one where I did the unicorn, the rainbow journal, but see, I didn't start off doing the rainbow journal. I started off doing some other things. I didn't do the rainbow journal till like 30 minutes into the damn video or the live stream. So I was like confused as to why it just got pushed. What did I just do? I just did crimson red, which is like a very cool kind of hot pink. And then this one is hot pink. <laughs> so this is hot pink and that one's more, yeah, that's true. This is hot pink. looks like the walls in my other room. That used to be my craft room. And also you will notice there are links underneath of this uh, live stream in the description. And those links will lead you to Arteza's website. And if you purchase something using my coupon code Pink Poodle Crafts 1, I think it is, or it's either Pink Poodle 1 or Pink Poodle Crafts 1. Now I can't remember. 
Uh, let me see real quick because I'm a dummy. Huh? What happened? What happened to my live stream thing? I don't know. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Oh, uh oh, oh. That's because I have too many screens open. Okay, and there it is. Um. Yeah, like if you look under the thing, it's uh, Pink Poodle Crafts 1, all one word. Um, you get 10% off between now and September 10th. So you have a month from actually tomorrow to get 10% off your order. Um, and then there's also a link underneath uh, to the Arteza website in the USA and in Europe. And then there's specific uh, links to each of the things I use today. So there's the markers and the acrylic paints, the metallic paints and the watercolors. So just in case you were interested in getting any of these, because, well, as far as I'm concerned, these are nice markers and they're a hell of a lot cheaper than buying Copic markers. That's for sure. Copic markers are like insane. I'm glad that some other companies have started coming out with alcohol marker oh I didn't do the other one on that alcohol markers because Copics are ridiculous I mean who can afford to spend that kind of money for some markers I mean I could see if you're like a cartoonist or somebody that professionally does stuff like that okay I get it but for people that are like just crafters that are coloring stamps with them and just playing with them hell no at five or six dollars a marker that's insane you can't find what it's under the video in the description you got to open up the rest of the description there's a thing it'll say show more and then you'll see it well since there's only like six left I'll do it along here like this so then that was which one was that that was the bubble no this was the blush pink wait this was the Wait, let me see where I was at here. Is that this one? Yeah, this is the blush pink that I just did. So then that's blush pink. So this is the bubble bath pink. Oh, cute. I like that name too. So bubble bath pink, of course, is going to be a little lighter than that pink. Is it lighter? I don't know. I'll know when I do that. Oh, I see. It's, it's not necessarily lighter. It's just brighter, like a different hue of it. And then this one is lavender. Which is a lavender color. Obviously. That's a nice lavender. And then, and I also, it'll, Nightbot will also put the links for the Arteza stuff as well. And this is Lilac. And this is Lilac. See, now I always would call that lavender. I don't know my colors very well, apparently. I'm a dingbat. This is Periwinkle. Periwinkle? I thought Periwinkle was in the blue family. I didn't know it was in the purple family. And then we have just two more and I have exactly enough room for those two. Ooh, that's a nice purple. I like that. Can you see? Can you see? I'll move these over a little. So you can see. Yeah, Periwinkle is definitely a mix of blue. It looks very similar to the lavender, but this is a little bit lighter than the lavender. These, I, in my opinion, these two should be switched. This one and this one should be switched because this is more close to this one. Um, yeah, I 
two more, one more after this one. So I want to make sure I have enough room. It's a good purple. And then the next one is, that was violet. This one is royal purple. I like that one too. So that's more of a grape purple and that's more of a like royal purple, I guess, obviously. Like that artificial grape, like grape bubblicious looks like that. <laughs> Cool. I like both of those. More like a red purple, and that's more of a blue purple. So there's all the colors. Very cool. Love those colors. I really like these markers. Oh, and what's cool is I just noticed they give you room to grow. So there's more spots for more markers. Which is good. So if you buy like another set of 12, you know. You can put them there. That's a cool idea. Room to grow. Nice. Hi, Carla. So these are the yummy markers. I really like the colors. That's good because the markers I have are not like, like I'll show you the ones. Oh man, I almost knocked that into the water. That just sucked. I can't get them out of here. I'm gonna knock stuff over. These are the Dick Blick ones. And the colors, they make, they're like no rhyme or reason behind them. They just like, some of them, it seems like a couple of them together will be okay. But like this one could go with this one, but not like all three. I don't know. It's kind of a weird combo. Is this one so bright? And then like the pinks, you get one. <laughs> so you have nothing to blend it with except for this, which is a more like a purpley pink. It's called berry, but it's like a that wine purpley color. And then you have peach. None of these go together. And then you have orange. And red so you can maybe blend those two together then you have a brick red which does not even go with this red like it just doesn't they don't make sense some of the blues do I think there was enough blues they sent me accidentally sent me two of the same blue in one package so I'm stuck with two of these colors now it was supposed to be another one I guess but they made a mistake and I even contacted them because these were gifted to me and you know I even contacted them to see if they would, if I can exchange it for the one that it was supposed to be, but they said no. It's like, okay, great. So like these colors could be mixed together. It was like weird how it was like a rhyme or reason. Cause usually a lot of people that use alcohol ink markers, you use them to blend the greens and the blues. There was enough to kind of blend together, but that was about it. And then maybe the browns. Otherwise they didn't really go together enough to blend them. So I never had a lot of experience blending them because there was not anything to blend. <laughs> every time I tried to color with them and, and oh, everybody would say, oh, use your blending thing and then use three colors that are similar and blend them. And I would try and it would come out weird because I didn't have anything, to, any colors that were good to blend. So I was like, whatever. So now I do. And I could probably use, mix and match them with those, which would make it even better. So that's those. Yeah, the pinks that are in there, there's one pink and it's terrible. It's literally just a highlighter pink. It's like around this color. Now, if that's the only pink you have, what are you going to do with that? You know, you need at least two pinks that are like not highlighter color because highlighter pink is not a color that, you know, most people want to use. All right, let's move on to some metallic paints. And I'll grab a piece of watercolor paper to swatch those. I think that would look best. Oh, do I have clean water? No, I may have to run and get some water because my water is dirty. So let me go do that real quick because look, it's gross. I'll be right back. Hold on one second.
Okay. Um, I forgot to show you something with the alcohol inks really quick, so I want to go back to that for one second. And just grab a couple of these out. And a piece of paper. A piece of regular paper. And... for something specific over here and that's not it where the hell is it actually be better okay so um firstly something on my paper so this is a piece of glossy you can see glossy photo paper um something you could do with alcohol inks as well so if you wanted to kill two birds with one stone and you wanted to get alcohol inks but you also wanted alcohol markers and you couldn't decide between the two you can just get the alcohol markers because if you wanted to do things like play with alcohol ink now you won't have the ability to drop it put like drops on things but you can um i'm sure a lot of you know this anyway you could put some color on your table and all you need is some blending solution or just alcohol i mean really alcohol is fine um and you can paint with like alcohol ink because that's what this is it's alcohol ink in a marker and you just wet it with some alcohol and then you know you have a and then you have alcohol ink so you could put you know colors down um and i would use alcohol in a little thing like a little container you know you can color with your alcohol inks and you could put several colors down and you know paint you could do it this way too where you put it on there and then you can like this is gonna make it dirty but you can like drop into it and make marks i think you'll see the marks start to happen and you can just drop into it i think this was the photo paper and not the not my not my um my regular cardstock so it doesn't work as good on photo paper but you can like make marks with it and do all the things that you would do with alcohol ink pretty much the only thing you can't do is like drip it onto things i mean i guess you could if you were to wet it enough so if there's alcohol here you can just take some and have you know and paint with it and then you can like sprays on it and let it get all spotty you can also put it on here and just wet it with a little bit of alcohol or blending solution and then take your colors and put it on here and let's say you wanted a couple of different colors dark color that's a lighter color never mind <laughs> and then just as long as it's wet you can you know print it on like you would anything else so you can use your alcohol markers for that type of stuff which a lot of you already know that i'm assuming now where did that come from that came from here And then, let me clean the 
this off with some alcohol. Yeah, you have to clean your brushes with alcohol. You have to put them in some water. But I'll do more with that um, in the future, playing with that. I just want to show you that real quick. That you can paint with your alcohol markers. Um, and then also, something I had done already um, uh, a long time ago, they like, came out, I'm sure some of you have heard about it, those chameleon markers, do you know what I mean? Um, the ones where the gimmick of it was you would stick your, you know, one marker and lock it into this thing and then you'd put your blending solution marker or whatever and you'd put them together and it would it would make it so that you can color and it would go from from like nothing to light and then get darker as it goes and those markers were expensive because you were buying the gimmick of being able to you know get that chameleon thing going well you don't need those markers and I showed this I did a video a long time ago I was the only person that figured that out I guess initially because nobody else did a video on it or nothing I had a lot of people yell at me and said I wish I knew this you know two weeks ago when I bought the damn markers but yeah all you have to do is um take your marker and let's say you know you could take your blending solution if you want it to be pink and you want the pink to be light um, what you would do is whatever color you want to go into the, like whatever color you want to use, you want to be able to blend with, you put the other color on tops because obviously gravity. So you would take like, if you want just this color to be blendable in like a, like make a blend, you would put your, onto the tip of it, touch the tip and just let it sit there for a minute. Um, so you put your blending solution pen on top of your alcohol marker, whichever color you want. And you just let it sit there for a few seconds, maybe, uh, you know, 30 seconds or so, which is what you have to do with the chameleon markers anyway, except they just give you a little thing. You don't have to balance it, which is really, I mean, it's not really balancing, but you know what I mean? It locks into a thing and then you undo it. So you would just, this way, you would just, touch the tips and then it'll go from really light back to normal so so now it'll go from really light nothing there and then as you color with it you know it gets darker and darker and it goes back to I probably held it on there way too long <laughs> because it is taking a longer time yeah, I held it on there too long. I didn't think it was gonna go as, take as long to go. There we go, now it's starting to do it. You don't have to hold it on as long as I did, apparently. But as you can see, it's blending out to a nice, from a really light color, back to its normal red, which I think it's at now. Yeah, so it blends from like nothing to back, and it gives you a good ombre, in other words. But you can also do this with, um, and then if you have anything on your tip, you can just go like that and it'll come off. Um, you can also do colors, like one color into another color, which I'll do that too. Um, we can do like this color into, let's see, a really light color. So you can do it either the light the dark into the, let's do the dark into the light for the heck of it. I'm going to do it. Chisel tip to this. You can, it's just easier to touch these two tips because this is so fine. It would be harder with the fine tip. So just hold it there for, well, we'll count to like 20. One, two, three, four, five. Whoops, don't need to. I could see it on there already. Okay, yeah, I could see it on there already. <laughs> that happens quick. So it starts out like that color and then... Yeah, you don't have to do it for very long at all. The chameleon markers take forever. And other markers I've had have always taken a while. Wow, you don't have to hold it on there long at all. 
So now it's going to the lighter color. So that's something you can do. Let's do another one. This time I won't hold it on for more than like two seconds because obviously you don't need to hold it on there very long. Because I guess it's just not necessary. Let's see what color. Um, let's do green. Let's do this color and have to come. Oh, you know what we should do? We should do a blue and a green. Let's do these two colors for the fun of it. I'm going to put the this color into this color. I'm not going to hold it on there for too long. I'm just going to count to five. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see what happens. Look at that. Oh, that worked really good. Oh my god, that looks so cool. It went from the teal like right into the green. Isn't that cool? I like that. Yeah, you don't have to hold these for very long at all. My goodness. Even with the Dick Flick ones, I always had to hold it on there a lot longer. That's a lot quicker. That's fast. But see, yeah, you can make like ombres and stuff when you're coloring. And you don't need special markers to do it. Is that right there, Mary? I wonder if you could do three colors. I never thought of that. <gasps> Ooh, let's try that. Let's try three colors. What I mean is I'm going to take like one color. Let's do... Um, this color into this color into this color. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one and I'm going to do this. I'm going to take the pink one first. No, wrong end. This end. I'm going to take the pink one first. I'm going to count to like this way and then I'm going to take this one and do it so one two three four five and then one two three four five I wonder what will happen now it's going to start out dark and then go light it should go lighter and lighter Whoa. Stop it. My alarm's going off. Stop it. Shut up. And then it goes into a totally, that other pink. Yeah, it goes, wow, that worked really good. You can do three colors. It goes from the purple to the dark pink to the light pink. Ooh, how cool. <gasps> oh, I didn't even expect that. And there's still like some color on there. I'm just going to wipe it off because that's the nice thing about alcohol inks is you can just wipe off the nib that is cool I just discovered something even newer you can do three colors I bet you could do four colors you could do as many colors as you want I don't know you probably couldn't get that carried away that's kind of cool anywho um oh, where the hell was this at that was here I'm never going to remember to put these in the right places. Nope, this one was here. Okay, good enough. Anywho, that's some fun things you can do with alcohol markers. Oh, hi, Lizzie. Have a good night, Miss Lizzie. I didn't see you come in. I've been too playing too much. Playing too much. I was playing too much. Hi, Lori. You can never play too much. All right. So now we're going to play with the metallic markers. And swatch them out. Because why not? I'm going to use a... Um, 
use this brush to do it. This one is, we'll start with, well, let's probably start with the gold. And, um, this is, that's the best way to do this, like this. Yeah, start with the gold down here and then go into the other colors. Oh, it's already, I don't have to poke anything. Well, that's good because I don't like to have to poke anything. All right, so I got some gold here. Ooh, pretty. This is metallic, this color. These are all metallic, that's right. Duh, these are the metallics. Duh. For a minute, I thought they weren't the, just the regular paints. Very pretty and very metallic. Ooh, shiny. Ooh, shiny. Move my water a little closer so I can get to it. And that was as that was gold. This one's Aztec gold. Glad you don't have to poke anything to get these out because that's the worst when you have to like. I'm just gonna put a little bead on each of, my, of each color on my paintbrush as I go. Like you know how you have to turn the cap over and poke like the seal. You don't have to do that. Ah, so this is like a darker gold. I'll do it right into each other. That's a nice, pretty gold, dark gold. The next one is metallic silver. Silver. Um, then we have this, which is pearl canary yellow. Whoops, almost grabbed too much of that. And these are metal tubes, by the way. They're not the plastic ones. Oh, that's pretty. That's a nice light, light color. Who's Tina? What Tina came in? You see me say hi, Tina. Oh, there you go. There you are. Hi, Miss Tina. Yeah, I like Arteza stuff because their prices are really good. And, you know, like, there's a lot of companies out there that sell, like, you know, cheaper products. And, but the products aren't as good. These are decent. These are pretty decent products for, you know, con considering that you're not you're not paying very much you know you can you can go out and buy you know craft paints and spend you know the same or more money and not get the same like selections and not get the same that's a nice metallic-y orange what color was that oh it is pearl papaya orange um, but I think that they have a good, like, student grade, you know, selection of art supplies, which is what most of us use anyway. And they even have, um, well, the ones in this box are, oh, what, which ones are these? Oh, those are supposed to be, like, their premium line of paints. And... Yeah, 
so these are like their regular metallics and the one that the regular paint that I have that's not metallic they're supposed to be like their premium paints and I'm not the best judge of what would be a premium paint or not I mean I guess I am I have some paints that are probably nice but I can usually tell but I mean, they have, you know, quality stuff, especially for us crafters, you know, and their prices are nice. You're not going to spend an arm and a leg, but you're going to get, you know, a better deal than you would in like a craft store. That's for sure. Um, this is pink. What now? Pearl pink tulip. That's a pretty pink. I like that pink. That's a good one. I don't have any pinks that look like that metallics none the only pink metallic I have is a lot darker and then I have one that's really really light and then we've got the royal purple is it yeah pearl royal purple yeah that's what I mean like their prices are good for us because you know most of us especially the people that watch my channel that come that are in my group you know we are limited on funds a lot of us have disabilities and problems and health issues that you know even if like for instance right now my health issues are you know kind of calmed down since they had you know since they started a few you know quite well quite a few years ago um, mine are definitely much better but at any time you know that doesn't mean that's gonna change that's not gonna change you know and but at the same time you know for those who are having trouble affording art supplies especially going to craft stores for them you know they should look into the Arteza stuff because they keep adding stuff like they're growing so much and i i was in shock because the last time i tested some Arteza stuff they barely had anything i mean they had a, they had some things but not like now like they've been coming out with stuff left and right and left and right which is nice and they're listening i guess to what people are wanting because they came out with alcohol inks because you know obviously there was a demand for it and their price points are great. I've not seen price points that good, you know, ever for craft products, you know, consistently. They have consistently had good prices on things. And they even have stuff like canvases and, you know, all kinds of stuff that they didn't have before. They started dabbling in canvases. I can't wait. I think, I don't know. Do they have watercolor paper? I don't remember. I, I haven't looked at, I haven't checked on that. I was looking on their site yesterday, but I didn't pay attention if they, that just dawned on me because if they don't, that would be, I'm going to have to give them that suggestion because if they would make some decent 140 pound, like almost like a Canson watercolor paper, if they can come a little bit below the color, the price of Canson even, and Canson's cheap, I would be, you know, because that's all I use. I use, I get it from Walmart. I use Canson watercolor paper. That's all I use. That's what this is. And I didn't even think to look to see if they had any kind of watercolor paper because if they did, I'd, it would probably end up being cheaper than the Canson and I would end up getting it from there. That's a pretty blue. That was the electric blue, metallic or pearl. If it's a metal type of color, like gold, silver, platinum, rose gold, bronze, they call it a metallic. But if it's any other color, it's the same stuff that they use in it but they call it a pearl because they use like a mica like a pearl mica um for it now there are metallics out there that are made with actual i don't know are they st do they still do that but they have like actual like they're actually med made with metal flakes i guess or metal you know like true metallics or maybe they used to be made like that i don't know if they still make it like that i remember listening to some artists talk about that but i don't remember what everything she was saying about it because I was probably not paying attention completely. This is the lime green, the pearl lime green. Oh, that's pretty. I like that color. That came out nice. It's not lime lime. It's more of like almost a cross between sage and lime or what was that other color that I tested? I can't remember. On the markers, was it this one? Yeah, because this was oh, no, it went like this, right? No, like this. So I did the I went down, up, and then down. I tested that was the lime green, and that was the, the other green. And it's kind of like a cross between that color 
and that sage color kind of or what I thought was more of a sage color it's pretty though I like that color which what's not working which link which link you got to be specific I don't know there's a lot of links under my channel which one specifically the link for a zibit store which one the Arteza, okay, Tammy said the Arteza link. Which one? Because there's two links under there. Let me go check real quick and make sure. Because I checked all the links and they were working, so I don't know. Arteza USA. The Arteza USA link is working. The Arteza U, uh, Europe link is working for me. Um, be specific. Is it one of the one of the products links that's not working? The USA Arteza link. It's working for me. Try right clicking on the link and hitting open in a new tab. Because I don't. It's working fine for me. Is anybody else having a problem? Yeah. No, it's working for me even if I don't right click on it. Yeah, I'm not having any problems. Like, watch. I'll show you. Here are the link that are under my channel. Here, if I click on the or the first one here, it's working. Are you, or are you talking about Nightbot? Is the Nightbot one not working? If it's the Nightbot one, I can I can fix that. Oh, let me see. It might be. Let me see. Oh, okay. Yeah. You're talking about the night bot. Yeah. You got to be real specific when you're telling me something. Otherwise I don't know what you're, uh, um, all right. Hold on one second. Let me, I can fix it. I'll fix it to make it better. I don't know why it did that. Let's see. Let's see the, maybe it's too close to those dots, the colon that I put in there. Night bot's a pain in my butt done that a couple of times to me but if, it, if it's not working right now just go under my video just scroll down scroll down on the screen and look in the look in the description of my video all the links are there just scroll underneath of the video I keep having to jump too many hoops to get into Nightbot why is it such a pain in my butt to get into the Nightbot it always takes forever. They want you to sign in 8,000 times, you know, do this, do that. It's like, if I already have like an account or whatever, why do I have to keep signing in and agreeing to this and do this and do that every time? I think that's stupid. All right, let's see. Let me fix the link on here. Oh, I think that's why. It's probably too close to that colon and it's showing up as a... Let's see, maybe that'll work. All right, so that one's not going to come back around for a while, so use the link underneath of my video. If you just hit show more, it'll open up everything, and you'll be able to get to all the links underneath of there. Let's see. Yeah, so the next time Nightbot has the links, it'll be, it'll work. All right, it's all good. The bottom, yeah, the bottom links work. Just like Nightbot was the only one that wasn't working because sometimes if I go too close to the um, the little colons on there, it won't work. I think it should be working now, but what do I do with my paintbrush? That's bizarre. I'm very confused. It wasn't that brush I was using. No, oh, it fell on the floor. <laughs> At least it's clean and it fell on the floor. Would have sucked if it was dirty. Oh, okay, I didn't know they had a... See, I didn't even pay attention. I didn't look last night. That just dawned on me. Oh, good. I'm going to have to get myself some watercolor paper then. So you get a pack of two for $22.98? Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I'll definitely be getting them from there then. Because... 
that's cheaper. I just bought some, so I don't need it. I got some from Walmart because I do my mixed media mashup, obviously, on watercolor paper. So, and I like how thick it is. This is a pearl deep brown. So I will be getting some from, oh, this is a nice one. I like this color. That one's good. It's like a, oh, my help from, I know, I know you're all going to yell at me. I'm on, there we go. Look how pretty that is. That one comes out real nice. It's chocolate. It's like a chocolate brown color. Pretty. Cool. That's that's a good deal. That's cheaper than Walmart, I think. Because Walmart you only get 30 sheets for your 9 by 12 for your 9 by 12, I think. And I think it's like 9.95 or something. And then we've got this one, which is Pearl Space Gray. Space Gray, which is, ooh, that's nice. I like that one too. This would be like their kind of black. You can't get like um, like like black black in a, in a metallic because you have to use a mica. And there, I don't think there is like an actual black mica. They always make it look gray, but this is the darkest of the, it's, <laughs> it's as dark as I've ever seen a, meta a a black metallic because I have another black metallic. I'll show you the difference and it's much lighter than that one. And it drives me nuts. That would be a good metallic black. Um, if I can get to it because I have stuff on top of here and I knocked it over. Let's see. I'm going to compare it to my other black. There it is. See, here's this one, which is black pearl. Um, I want to compare it and see, because I know that this one's lighter. Yeah, I can already tell it's lighter. Yep. Yeah, see, this one's more gray. That one's definitely more black. You can see the difference that this one's definitely darker and that one's more like a gray, much lighter. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Because I want a darker metallic black because it's always annoying when you're wanting to do something with metallic and then you go to get a black and it's like, okay, well that was useless because it's gray and this one's pearl white. Which, again, like, you could take this and mix it with certain colors. This would be, like, a good one to mix if you wanted a lighter color or something. Because, obviously, on here, it's not really going to show up other than just being, like, iridescent, like, pearly on the paper. You're just going to see the shine from it. The mica. But you can also mix it, so. So you could take, like... Let's say some of the purple. Okay, let me get my bottle all dirty. So if I take like a little bit of the purple, whoops, that was a lot of purple. <laughs> Didn't mean to squirt that much out. That's okay. And then a little bit of the white and mix them together, I'll get like a lighter purple. Um, and I can make it as light as I want. So it's a little bit lighter than that. And then if I, the more, the more white that I add to it, the lighter it'll get. So if you want like a lighter color, you can, it's hard to mix color. I don't know why I decided to mix it on the, on the paper itself, but then you can have a lighter color of the purple. Now I have a ton of it on my brush. And get a nice range of colors. And the same with like, there's certain colors you can mix to get them to be like, a, you know, like not just make them lighter, but you can kind of make things a little darker. So if you take like a drop of brown and add it to like another color, you can make like, you know, a totally different color. But you'd have to just do, let me do it on here. So if I took that and added it 
with the let me see what, would, what it would do if I added it with the no, you know what? I'm gonna add it with the pink. And so I'm gonna add this. I might have put too much brown, but that's okay. But you'll get like a, a more well, that's an interesting color. Hmm. I kinda like that. Ooh, I kinda like that. That actually came out really good. Oh, that's pretty. I thought I put too much brown, but no, I did not. That is a really pretty, like, kind of a vintagey rose pink. That came out so nice. I don't have any um, metallic colors that are like that. On the camera, it's going to look different. But, yeah, it doesn't look as light. It looks darker. But it's actually really pretty. It's like a very good metallic rose kind of color. Like vintage rose metallic it came out real good though I like that. but yeah you can if you mix brown into certain colors it you know changes the color of brown you can mix black in mix white obviously you can mix whatever colors you want into something but yeah i like that color yeah these are good colors i like the metallics on these i've never used their paints before they dry fast too Yeah, I like the pink, and I like how that turned into that. Very cool. I ain't hating it, that's for sure. Very cool. All right, let's try the acrylic colors. And I just dumped them all out. Nice. They're all over the floor. So <laughs> all but two of them stayed in the box. Because I knocked it into something and it fell over. So now they're not, well, they're not really in any order anyway. <laughs> At least they don't make a noise when I throw them on my desk. So let's see if we can get them into some sort of order and I'm not good at that so all right okay red orange that's black and that's white I need what would be the orangey color which is that's yellow ochre So that would be the next best thing is the, oh, and there is a metallic in here. There's silver and gold right here. Gold and silver. Interesting. Okay, so that, and this is burnt sienna. I need a green. We got this green, which is phthalo green and pale green well I should probably do the pale the pale green and then the phthalo green and then we do the blues I'm a little surprised there isn't like an orange in here that's kind of weird yellow ochre is the closest I'm going to get to that that's kind of weird but that don't matter obviously I have yellow and I have red which means I have orange um and these are blues this one is Thalo blue and this is ultramarine blue and then we'll go to the browns which is burnt sienna and the burnt umber and the, Mar um, the mars black and the white and then we'll just do the silver and the gold that sounds good I'm going to move these over here because otherwise I'm going to screw up and pick the wrong colors. Do it like that. And that. Okay. There. Good night, Angela. She probably left already. I didn't see that in time. All right. Now these are their artist 
uh, what were they called? I'm gonna use a little bigger brush on these. Which ones were these? Green foot. These are the premium. They're premium brand. I don't know, where's my brush that I like? Is this one it? This'll work. And I dropped my rag and the box is in my way. And I can't move my chair. I keep forgetting to buy myself a thing for underneath my damn chair. So that I can stop hurting my back trying to pull my chair up. All right, let's start with this. Now I've never used these kind, so I have no idea how to do it. Oh, I see, I have to, I need something to pull that off or to get it started. There we go, you need to do that and then pull it, which I suck at. I'll just keep doing this. I don't have strong enough hands and fingers for this. Pliers. I'm gonna need some pliers. I can't. My nails are not strong enough to get under things. They break. I already broke this one's broke now. Look. Hello. Because my nails break over nothing. That's why I can't use my nails for things. There we go. Let me see. Oh, look at that. Be careful not to squeeze out too much because yeah. Red. This is the what now? The who now what now? Scarlet red. Okay. Scarlet red. Ooh, that is a nice paint, ain't it? Dang. Hmm. Better than the craft paints, because it went on like because craft paints, you start, you brush it, and it's like you see the paper underneath. I didn't, that didn't happen here. So I can assume that that means that's a decent paint <laughs> when it pretty much goes on in one coat. I don't know. I don't know much about premium artist paints and all that. But that's pretty good, though. I like that. Covered well. I didn't put that much on my brush. You know, I have to suffer through me opening every one of these. Ow, and I just poked my damn self. Oh, that one was much easier. This is a yellow ochre. Yellow ochre. Oh! <laughs> That scared me more than anything. I wasn't expecting that. I shouldn't have. See, I have a problem. I just will. My dumb ass will squeeze everything harder than it needs to be. I'm not very light handed. So I guess we're doing a, a lot of yellow ochre. <laughs> or at least here, I'll put it on here because you know, I'll cut this up and use it for something. Because, yep. Yeah. I have too heavy, I'm too heavy handed. Oh, now I just got the black in there. That's okay. It'll make a new color. Oh, there's this too. I don't know my own strength. That's a nice color too. Never used these kind of containers before, so they're new to me. And then, oh wait, I forgot a red. Oh, for crying out loud! I was supposed to do this red after that red because this is a different red. Well, oh well, oh well. All right, this time I'm going to do this so that it brings it towards the top so that I don't have to worry about an air bubble, hopefully. 
There we go. Ooh, I like that red. I'm going to get yellow in it. I know it. Oh, a little bit. That is a nice red right there. That's a good dark red. That's a purdy red. It's purdy. It's purdy. All right. Oh, and I missed some here. That's okay. All right. Now we got this color, which is lemon yellow. easier to come off of the thing. Shake it down to the down to the base a little bit and squeeze carefully. Just get a oh, that's nice too. Get it down there. Let's get off. These are nice paints. They weren't lying when they said they were premium, I guess. I mean, obviously, I've not painted a picture with them, and I probably never will because I'm not much of a... I'll probably just use them. They would be nice to use for mixed media. That's what I plan on doing with them. Mixed media. Ooh, or paint pouring. Paint pouring would be fun with these, I bet. Because you get a good amount, you get four ounces, you don't need that much for paint pouring, and they're nice and thick, so that would mean you would, only, you know, would need even less than that, because if they're thick, when you dilute them down with your medium that you're going to use, if I poke myself one more time, I swear to God, I've poked myself like four times, you wouldn't have to dilute them as much. Hi, Carla. Hi, Mom. Green. Whoops. Going over the yellow a little much there. These paints are so thick that it doesn't even affect the yellow because <laughs> they're just thick paints. You could probably dilute these down a little bit, too. You know? That's a nice green right there. This is the what? The pale green? That's pale. Okay. Oh yeah, jelly plate. That would, these would be great for a jelly plate. Heck yeah. down to the top. This one looks like it's going to be really pretty, like a teal. Like almost like a, a, a forest green. I mean, it's basically what it is, right? Well, phthalo green. It's kind of very foresty. Ooh, that's pretty. That's not as teal as I thought it would be. I've seen other phthalo greens that was like more teal. This one's pretty. That is a pretty green right there. I bet that would make a pretty teal. I'm going to have to try to add some of that blue to it later. That is a pretty, pretty green. It's hard to see because on camera it looks just black because my camera makes everything so dark. Um, but it's a very pretty green. That's real pretty. It's a nice dark green. Rich, a very rich green. Alrighty. And then we've got phthalo blue. Yeah, I don't have to use that thing. Blue. 
this dark oceany blue. That's a really good ocean blue. Mm, pretty, 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 pretty. That is a good, like, deep ocean blue. And wait till I mix it with that or one of the other blues, I bet you. Nice. Real nice. I like that one. Yeah, it's very much like a pine color. And then we've got ultramarine blue. Pretty blue too. Pretty, pretty blue. I want to put these next to each other, so I'm going to start down here. Well, I could do it up here, but yeah, why not? We'll do it up here. Yeah, that would be. They would be pretty. They would be pretty blended. Those are real pretty colors. I don't know if that's. Could blend. Let me see. Will that blend in the middle? It might be too dry already. Yeah, I'm like rubbing the paint off of it because it's dry a little bit. Hi, sweetheart. How are you? All right, and then we go to our blacks and browns. So we're just going to do that. Oh, I'm an idiot. Ugh, all you have to do is twist the cap and these things just come flying off. Stupid. They pretty much loosen right off and then you can just grab them and they just... Somebody with thing, stronger hands than me, I have really weak hands because of my arthritis, could just pop them off. Here I am thinking that you have to do all this hoo-ha to get them off. This is black. So I'm sure it'll perform as expected and be black. Which it does. Very pretty. Well, as pretty as black can be. Very nice. Very nice. Good black. And then we've got, see, because all you do is this, and then they loosen, and you can really just leave it, or you can then just take something to pry them off your cap after you've gotten it off. I didn't try to do that like a dummy. And I didn't. Whoa, that's my fault. Yeah, you need to shake them down to the bottom because look, it squirted over there. <laughs> so definitely before you open them, go like this and shake them to the, shake it to towards the tip or else you might get an air bubble. <laughs> that was funny. I'll just do a small patch since that's what came out. That's a good brown. So you definitely want to shake it down towards the bottom like that to get the air bubbles to be up here instead of down by your thing. Because my poor burnt sienna took a hit, <laughs> squirted across the room. And we don't want that. So I'll open it and then I'll put it back on once I get these things off. Because that's what I did. I opened it and forgot to put it back on and shake it down to the bottom. Put it back on and wiggle it down to the bottom. Otherwise, you're going to want to have a squirter. Did I retouch the hunter green or the pine green? No, it's, I didn't, it's not as covered as the other one because I didn't have as much paint and I was trying to make it as big as that swatch, but I didn't have as much paint on my brush. That's probably a lot. Why? But you got to understand too, any color is going to lighten as it dries. It is always going to be at its darkest when it's wet. When it dries, it will be much lighter. 
nine times out of ten. You know, all colors pretty much get lighter as they dry. And they always look darker when they're wet. But I spread that one out quite thin as well because I was trying to make it as big as that one. Oh, my nail is like annoying me. Problem solved. It's going now. All right, then we've got the metallics. Well, we'll do the white first and then we'll do the metallics. Well, these aren't gonna stay shiny. Once they start to dry, they're gonna dull out a bit. Like it, like this is dry right here and it's not as shiny. See how it's dull right here? You can see the rest of it glowing, but that's dull. Mo acrylic paints are typically matte. They're not shiny unless they say gloss. So if you want them to be shiny, then yes, you have to varnish it. Otherwise, they'll just be as any other regular acrylic paint that's not labeled as gloss. All right, okay, clean off my brush. Test the white, even though putting the white on white. <laughs> mixed with anything. I'm just doing a little spot of white. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I'm not going to be able to see it anyway. And then we've got the metallic gold and the metallic silver. It's talk however we're talking. Hey, if you're if you're if you're saying that it's if you have a if you're thinking that it, there's something wrong with it, then you're the one with the dirty brain, not us. You're the one with your mind in the gutter. <laughs> Ooh, that's a pretty gold. It's not just metallic. It's like got specks of sparkle to that one. Yeah, there's definitely, it's an in-between color, which is good because you wouldn't want the same exact metallic color if you have a metallic. But this one's a nicer metallic, I think, because it's a little more something. I mean, that one's fine and dandy, but this one's got a little bit more of a of um, like a sparkle to it. I like that. That's pretty. I don't know if you'll see it really until it's dry. Yeah, it's hard to pick up sparkle, but it looks, has like a sparkle to it. I like it. I bet you this one does too. Yeah, that's true. Anything can be naughty. all how you say it. <laughs> all right. This is the last color. Yeah, see this one's nicer too than that one. It's definitely a more sparklier. Has a little more reflection to it. And it's darker than that one. Oh, here it is. Darker than that one. So that's nice. If you were to buy both of these, you wouldn't get the same gold and the same silver. You know what I mean? Those are real nice. Awesome. I want to make a teal now because that color would make a nice... Where'd it go? 
that green color. I really like that green color. It's pretty. Here it is. That and um, maybe this blue. Let's try both of them. If not, I'll try the other blue. But I'm thinking maybe this blue. I'm just going to do a little of that. It only need, doesn't probably need very much blue because there's a little bit of blue in there. Let's try with just a little. See what happens. I'm going to use my smaller brush. Where's that other smaller brush at? I'll just use this one. Oh, yeah. Come to mama. That's pretty. Might need a little bit more blue, but that's so pretty. I love really dark teals. It used to be any teal, but now I've lately been into like... So this is before I put a little... I'm going to put a little more blue in it, but before I do, this is before I do this. So this is like, this is more like a dark turquoisey teal. That's really pretty, but I'm going to put a little more blue. I'm going to take that and stick it in there. Yeah, this stuff is so thick. Like, I can use this as a texture paste. It's so thick. Oh, yeah, look at that. We're getting more. And so that it shows up on camera, I'm going to thin it out so that you can just see the... Because otherwise it's going to look dark. I'm going to thin it out enough so that you can see the color, hopefully. I'm trying to thin it out anyway. It's hard. This stuff's thick. So you can see the, mm, no, see it still looks so dark. Maybe when it lightens a little bit on camera, they, everything looks dark, but it's not as dark as it looks on camera. I mean, it's dark, but it's not that dark. That's going to be real pretty. Now, what if I were to just throw a little bit of this other blue in there? Would that mess it up? Let's find out what that would do. I love playing with colors, mixing them together. That's what everybody should do. That's the best way to figure out what colors go with what and, you know, what colors, you know, you like when they're mixed. That one, ooh, that's even lighter. <gasps> Pretty. Oh, I like that. Oh, these mix nice. That one mixed up real. See, teal doesn't show up on camera, so it's just going to basically look blue. But in real life, it's nice. It's got that. It's just a really pretty dark teal. And that came out perfect, adding that color in like that. I think that's just what it needed. But I don't know why teal doesn't show up very well. I wonder if I added some of that light, that pale green, what would happen? mixing colors it's fun let's add some of this in let's add things in until we make mud mm. oh wow that came out like a uh, like a hunter green almost Interesting. That came out. Ooh, that's nice. That came out like a hunter green, like a forest green. That's cool. Hmm, pretty. Oh, on camera it's not going to look the same. See, it looks more blue on camera than it actually is. It's very foresty green. And then let's add some more blue and see what happens again. It might not 
opacity too much. Oh, it's turning it back to like this color. Isn't that funny? I pretty much got it back to like the one of the original colors. Maybe a little bit tealier than the original color, but close. Yeah, it's a little tealier. That's interesting. Hmm. Oh, I just put a lot of green in there by accident. I picked up too much of that green. Cool. Let me just color in places because I'm going to cut this up and use it for something. We don't waste. I need a better brush. This one's not big enough to handle the job. What was that brush I was using? This one. thin it out a little bit. There's a little water on my brush too, so it'll help move it a little more. Just paint it on there. I'll probably cut this up for tags or something. Why not? And you hold still because I don't want to touch the wet paint. I'm going to make mud if I go over the red. Anyway, fun times. Fun times. Cool. Very cool. I love these colors. I, like, I really like these paints. I'm pleasantly surprised by these paints. I wasn't expecting them to be quite as nice as that, but that's awesome all right now that needs to dry and i need to clean up my mess oh and i need to take my medicine which i have not done and i was supposed to a while ago and now i'm going to test the watercolors as stuff falls off the shelf randomly all these little plastic bits. All right, I'm gonna stick these back in their box. Just make sure their caps are on good because I have to turn some of them upside down, which should be fine. They're not gonna just flow out very easily. These are thick ass paints. So I'm not worried about them going, oh, well, we're just gonna spew out all over. I don't think that's going to happen too easily. Maybe I'll put these like this and then fill in with the other ones. It'll be easier. I got to make place for them on my carts. So for now, they're going to stay in the box. But I'm either going to use a... Use a... Um, I start flipping them over. Use a basket for them or find a place for them on my cart somewhere because as of right now I don't have room for them but we gonna make room for them at some point mug is a bug in a rug all right I have to run to the potty I'll be right back oh those are acrylic yes they are acrylic I'll be right back
Okay, I also grabbed some water for the watercolors because I don't want to use my nasty paint water. Okay. We got some watercolors. Happened in my little container thing. I don't know. I thought it was down here, but really I'm not seeing it over here. Oh well. <laughs> what happened to that? I was going to split this up into two so that I wasn't using that, but clearly I don't have. It was literally right here, though. That's the weird thing. I didn't move it anywhere. Obviously I did, but I don't freaking remember why I would move it. That is really weird. What the hell did I do with it? Hmm. Strange. I guess I can't do that then. Oh well. We're going to take this out somehow. I don't know how yet. I'm going to use that brush anyway. I'm going to try that brush. I might not use it the whole time. All right. I'm going to get you out of there. Thank you very much. I'm going to keep it, but I don't want this whole flippity floppity thing. Not right now. But I will reference it for the colors. Because from, yeah, they go like that. Okay, good. So I, oh, that's good. You can kind of just stand it up and see. Nice. Um, somebody said they liked the Arteza's brush, their water brush. I've never used one of their water brushes. I got me a pipette and I will fill it with that. Two squirts. Don't get any ideas, sweetheart. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do, do, do. Oh, well. Get the sizing off of the brush. There we go. Now I'm picking up paint, paint off my hands because I'm going to end up contaminating something. Start with the spring green. I'm gonna squeeze some water onto it. Oh, that lifted pretty easily. See, what I'm hoping is, and what I can tell already is, I think these are going to be similar to my Kiritakis, and I like my Kiritakis. So, ooh, these are nice. This brush is nice too. Oh, I like these. Oh, I definitely like these. And I'm so glad because I don't have paints that I really like in one of these tins. I have paints that I like, that I like to use sometimes, but these are nice. I'm going to have to rinse out the brush, which is why I'm probably not going to use it the whole time because I don't want to have to keep rinsing it because I'm just going to have to fill it with water. But it is a nice brush. And these paints do not need a lot of water you don't even need to spray these like you know a lot of times you spray your acrylics no your watercolors to get um to get a yep you know what i mean get them started that's it brain's not working you don't have to do that with these all you have to do is touch your wet brush to them and they just instantly 
start working. So I'll do one more with this water brush. The water brush works great though. It really does. Very little touch to it and you get you get your water, but I, I don't need much water on these. They just start right up. And so that last one was the jade green and this one is the fern green. Fern green. Nice. All right, we're gonna clean that out and I'm just gonna use a regular brush just cause it's easier for me to dip it in there. This is good for travel though. I'll definitely be using that cause I have other water brushes that kind of suck. Um, let's see, let's use my good water brushes if I can find them and get my thing to cooperate here. And find my decent water brushes, I should say. Oh wait, I don't have, those are acrylic brushes, aren't they? I don't know. I guess it doesn't matter what they are. As long as they work, right? Yeah, we'll use this one. It's not a good one, but... Oh, this one is. This is the one that I didn't fix yet. I need to fix that one because it's bent. That's that one I got from the Creative Reuse. That's a Grumbacher whatever brush. It's a nice brush, but it needs to be fixed. And then there's this one. It's just a... Yeah, that's like a cheap one. I'm going to use this one. This is my Painting with Jane brush, you know, brushes. But she... she probably mostly for acrylic but or at least what she does with them anyway this is a cobalt green cobalt green see but instead of squeezing i'll have to do that to get the see there we go i'll get a little more because i'm afraid to squeeze that brush because i'll end up with a, too much water i'm a little easier i have i have an easier time controlling the water just by dipping it and stuff for me anyway I still like to use, you know, those water brushes, but mostly when I'm traveling or, you know, somewhere else. And this one is olive green. Not enough water. Very pretty. Pretty colors. The next one is, what is that? I've never heard this word in my life. Amaranth, amaranth, amaranth? Never heard that word in my whole life, amaranth. The hell? Is that another way to say like a pinky red? Ooh, that is a pretty pinky red though. A little more water. I have this fear of making my little pans messy. So I'm, ooh. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was like a, a moment right there. That was a definite moment. I do not have any color that is as pretty of a pink as that, which it, it looks darker on camera, but it is a dark pink. And I have nothing like that. Not in my Kuratakis, not in the million and a half of those little pan things from Jane Davenport Prima. Nothing is as pretty as that pink right there. That one's going to be like my favorite. Amaranth. That's the whole reason why I never heard that damn word. That is now my favorite pink. I have nothing that compares to that. That is so pretty. And then we've got magenta. Yeah, that's definitely going to be like my favorite. I'll be grabbing that one a lot. This is magenta. Pretty. Doesn't look very magenta to me. But then again, I don't. I'm, I'm. I'm not good at my colors. Isn't magenta like more? Is that the one that's more purpley, blue, pink, or is that? Am I thinking of? I think I'm thinking of burgundy. Oops, never mind. <laughs> thinking of, never mind. Just forget what I said. Yeah, this pink here is like killer. Oh my god, it's so pretty. And the camera just, you can't even see how pretty it is on camera. It's crazy. As soon as I touched that to the paper, I was like, oh, I had, I just had a, a, a very, very orgasmic moment with my paint. Ooh, that's pretty. That purple is nice too. Damn. I don't think I have a purple as nice as that one either. And that purple was... Violet. 
And this is lavender here that I'm about to put down. This is lavender. Whoops, I touched it in the wrong color. Rain lavender. Water deer. There we go. We need some flowage. I'm not good at swatching watercolor because I just want to make it dark all the way out. So I'm not good at letting it fade. I did with the purple a little bit. I did with that one a little bit, but it's too pretty. And then there is periwinkle. I mean, those are pretty. That's a pretty blue. So that's periwinkle, and then we're on to Oxford blue. That's a pretty blue. I'm gonna go this way so that we can see some of the blues next to each other. That's pretty. I like that blue. It's a bit of a purpley blue, but it's very pretty. The next one is Indigo. Oh, I like indigo. Indigo I usually like. It's like a, almost like a black blue. And it's so this one's the prettiest one too, again. Because I have like an indigo color in my other, um, is it, I don't think it's the Kiritake. It's the, um, what is that other brand ones I have? Crap. I'll have to get them at some point. The shoot, what is it? What are the ones that has that other kind of thing? I don't know. I don't know where the hell they are. I don't know. Never mind. That other brand I have. It's not, that one's a real pretty one. I like that one too. Now we're on to Sunburst Yellow. Too much water on there, but that's okay. Pretty. Very pretty. Next one is Naples Yellow. Yeah, there's links to all of these under the video. And if you use the code Pink Poodle Crafts 1, you'll get 10% off your order. Ooh, that's a pretty one too. It's like a yellow ochre, but I think there is a yellow ochre in there. Oh no, it's not. So maybe the Naples yellow is, is kind of like the yellow ochre of the group. If there was to be one, it would be that one probably. It might help if I move over a little bit. Am I completely off camera? No, but I'm getting there. I'm bad at being on camera when I'm zoomed in. All right, so that's that one. Then the next one is lemon yellow. Did I just touch a green with that? I hope I didn't. Oh, I might have. <laughs> I might have. Um, I think I have a little green on my brush. That's why it's coming out a little greeny. I think it looks okay on camera, but in person, I think I accidentally got had a little green or something on my brush. Oh well, you get the hint. Lemon yellow, with a little green mixed in. And then the next one is cadmium yellow light. Try not to mix any green in. Ooh, that's a pretty yellow. It's a bright yellow. That's like sunshine right there. And the next one is Uriola, Uriola, what? Urolin, Urolin yellow. A Urolin yellow. I've never heard of that color either. A Urolin, whatever the hell that means. 
don't know. That's kind of more like a yellow ochre, maybe. It's like a cross between that one and that one, maybe. Pretty, pretty color. Don't know what it is, but pretty color. Well, it's a yellow of some sort, but never heard that name before. Foreign names. And then this one is golden yellow, which looks very orange to me, which is probably why it's called golden yellow, because I guess it's, oh, it's a pretty orange too. It's a golden yellow, because I don't know why they call it that, to be honest, but I could see in the camera it looks more golden. I could see the yellow to it more than on here. On here, all I see is orange. Okay, and then we have some yellow. Oh, then we have, we do have a yellow ochre. Never mind. We have yellow ochre. We do? Is that really yellow ochre? Because it doesn't look anything like what's on here. Did these get mixed up somewhere? A555. Because that does not, I don't know how to get these out. Oh, wait, here we go. A, oh, they're not labeled on the bottom. Great. I'm going to have to do that because I know I'll mess these up. Okay, maybe it is a yellow ochre and I'm just not getting it. Oh, yeah, I guess it is. I, I don't know. It's dark. for Yeah, it's never mind. It's yellow ochre. It just looks so brown in the pan, but now I see it. It's just very concentrated. So if I spread it out, you could see where the yellow ochre is. It looks darker on camera. But yeah, I can see why it's yellow ochre now. I get it. There's Yellow ochre is always different. In every color and every type of paint, it's always different. Sometimes a little darker. I'm used to it being more kind of like this color or like this color. Um, but it, it's so different. I've seen it so much darker than I thought. I've seen it more orange than I thought. I don't know. It's one of those colors that's like weird. Chrome orange. I've never heard of that being a name either. Chrome orange. Weird name for a paint. Because chrome orange makes me think that it's like metallic, but it's not. I wonder why it's called chrome orange. Like, what's the beef with that? What's the T? It's a pretty orange. But I don't understand why it's called chrome orange. But. I'm not an artist, so I don't understand color. Saffron orange. There are there are names of colors in here that I ain't never heard of. Not well, I've heard of saffron orange, but what I mean is I've never had anything called saffron orange. Not one of my paints says saffron orange. I think I'm gonna start going back from this way over so that the oranges can stay near each other. I'm probably gonna need a second piece of paper, maybe. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to try to make it small. Saffron orange and then cadmium red light. Ooh, this is kind of a pinky red. Ooh, that's pretty too. Oh, see, that's pretty. But that one is, is I, I have one that's kind of similar to that. So I have seen this one before. That one just stumped me. That one threw me for a loop right there. I definitely still like that one better, but I have one like that. That's the best, you know, as in one of my Kiritakis is like that, where it's that kind of color. But this one, man, that's like my ultimate favorite right there. And I know they look similar on camera. You can almost see that this one's a little red, redder than this one, this one here. Um, but they do look similar on camera, but they do not look anything like, they don't look similar in person. And this one is a red and it's, Scarlet red. So it's going to be a more orangey red, I think. But it'll be closest to more like a red red, which it is. But it'll be more orange than that one anyway. Pretty. Pretty. And then there's deep red. Mama likes a deep red. And it looks brownie. Oh, that's a pretty color. That's like a a dusty pink, red, brownish color. Oh, that's a cool color. I like that. That's a cool color. I don't have anything like that either in my watercolors. There's a lot of colors in here that I do not have in my watercolors. 
Not at all. All right, we're on the last row, and we're going to start with cerulean blue, which I like this color. Cerulean blue is really pretty. It's like a, it's a tealy color, kind of. It's like a bluey tealy color, and it's so, oh, it's so pretty. That's a pretty one, too. That's probably the best cerulean, I can't say that word either, um, that I've ever seen. That one there. That's a real pretty. And again, it doesn't show up well on camera. And the next one is steel blue I've never seen that before either oh that's a pretty one too so it's like a step darker than that one Ooh, pretty I like that Ooh. yeah that's a nice one I like that and then we have Prussian blue which is like that dark teal that I like a lot getting into those darker teals and the next one will be turquoise which I can't wait. Yeah, this is like that dark teal. Oh, I like that one. I love how they step. This one's darker, and that one's a little bit lighter, and that one's like nice and bright. Purdy. And then the next one is turquoise. And let's see, is it actually turquoise? No, this one is more of a teal color. It does not come out as turquoise as I think it should. Sometimes I, ha I don't know why that happens sometimes where it doesn't really, it, that's more like a standard teal. That is not turquoise at all. Turquoise has, has green in it. So that is definitely not a turquoise. But I don't know what it is with some companies. Like, But see, then again, their turquoise paint came out turquoise. Like the regular paint came out turquoise. I don't understand it. Why do some, maybe watercolor turquoise is different. I don't know. It's still pretty. I don't care. And this is Prussian green. Ooh, that's another one of those turquoises that's real pretty. Let me like you that. I like all the blues. They're my favorites. Dang, the blues are pretty as hell. Yeah, that's real pretty. These colors are really pretty. Now I need... Um, now I need another piece of watercolor paper. Oh wait, I have a small piece here. Because I don't have that many left, so we might as well use this paper. The next one is, what does that say? Persian red. It's like a brownie kind of red color. Persian red. We'll just do it here. It's like a, like a reddish brown color. I've never seen a turquoise stone that was more teal than turquoise. All the turquoise stones I've ever seen always had that kind of greenish look to it. more A little bit more green. But then again, I'm sure there are turquoise stones that are more on the blue side. I'm just ignorant. I don't know. I've just only, ooh, that's pretty. What color is that? That's rust red. Ooh, I really like that one. That's a good, that's a good uh, brownie red color. That's good for like, well, I was going to say rust. And then we got burnt sienna. I like the browns. Browns are good. And then raw burnt umber. Burnt umber. I was going to say raw umber, but that's a different color. I think raw umber is darker than burnt umber. That's a good... Oops. Nope. Yep. I was right. I almost went into the wrong color. Burnt umber. That's a good tree. Tree color. And then we have... Mahogany. That I don't, I've not heard that one before in a paint color. I mean, I've heard of mahogany. I just mean in a paint color. That's a nice color. I have a little bit of red to it. Reddish brown. Pretty. And we got two more. 
What's that? Sepia brown. Oh, that's another one. I, I, I've I never seen a sepia brown paint. I've seen a sepia brown ink, but not a paint. That's, that's good. I like the idea of it being a sepia brown because that's good for when you want to like make things vintage. It's a good, a good one. I like that. I bet if I mixed a couple of these together, that would be really good. I would like some of those. And then I think this is black, right? Yeah. Or noir. They're fancy. They have to be their fancy black. I'm going to do it this way. Oh, that's a nice black for a watercolor. A lot of watercolors aren't, aren't very dark. But they're blacks. But that's a nice one. Hmm. We like those. Some of nice, pretty colors. These two look very similar, but actually that's more red. And that one's like a step darker. Like step, like, imagine just ha taking this color and adding just a tiny drop of red and you get like that color. Pretty. And then here's the other ones we did. You can see them at a closer. <laughs> it's my favorite. I like that green too, that lime green. It's really bright. See now that that's dry, it looks more like a yellow ochre, but it's still to me a darker yellow, 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 yellow ochre. Whereas that one is more. These two look more to me like traditional yellow, yellow, yellow ochre. Like especially that one now that it's dry. And that indigo blue is so pretty. That would look so good mixed in like a storm cloud, like th this color with a little of that and like in like a cloud with like some of this color in like one of those like storm clouds. I can't paint it, so, but somebody can. In the last row, we got these colors here. There's a lot of good blues. I know on camera they all look pretty much the same. It's, I don't know why it does that. Cameras are bad with purples and blues. They're just terrible at picking up the proper color that they are. I don't know why. Anyway, very cool. I love these colors. And I love that they're in a travel thing. Because these are real pretty colors. Oh, yeah. let me. T I wanted to see if I could find my Kiritake. There's the Kiritake ones. But where are the other ones? That's the ones I want to see. I think it's in there that I have that set. the Mozart ones. I put these over here for a second. And then my Kiritake set. Yes. Mozart. Which one of them had that indigo color? Curious to see. Let's swatch it out. Where'd it go? Where'd my brush go? Did I stick it in here? Yeah, stuck it in this dirty ass water. One of these had the indigo, but it was still not as pretty as the one in there, which is this one here. But one of them, and it's hard to tell. Um, yeah, I don't think it was this one. I think it was the Mozart ones. Is that it right there? 
here. No, that's that green, I think. I'm not going to know until I actually swatch it. Oh, that's that green. Nope. Is it? Yeah, maybe that's it. I think that's it. But still, the one that the that Arteza has is much prettier. Yeah. See, the one that Mar Arteza has is this one's a little more gray, but it has that touch of blue in it. Whereas Arteza's has a little more of a pop of blue, and I really like Arteza's better, much better. There's a lot of colors in, in this set that I like better than even my Kiritakis, which, you know, I have, my Kiritakis have been my go-to, like, and this one for certain colors that I don't have in that one. But now all three of these makes a great set, but man, there's some colors in here that I just can't replicate with any of the other sets I have. Like that indigo, I love that indigo, and I love these teals here, which they call turquoise and whatever, but to me they're teal. Um, see, because this is a greeny turquoise right here. That one's more greeny. That one's turquoise. See, like, which oh, I keep it in the wrong paint bucket. Which one was the turquoise? It's under this one here. This is their turquoise. Which, of course, why am I doing this? It's just going to show up blue on screen. Yeah, it shows up more blue. And then their turquoise, it's much more green than it looks. And their turquoise is, which one? Oh, it might help if I had them out. So I can see. Which one was their turquoise? The turquoise was bottom row fourth one over this one which is oh crap I don't know which one was which now I just have to do it I just have to swatch it this is what they were calling turquoise is this one which completely different colors on camera of course you can't even tell how how different they really are but this is much greener and this one's much bluer but that's fine. I don't care. They're still pretty. I'm just going to call it a teal color in my head because that's what I do. So that's to turquoise on that one. Which is the turquoise and the Kiritakis? I'm curious about the Kiritaki turquoise. I mean teal. I think it's this one. I don't know if that's what they call it teal though. I don't think they call them anything because they're all in Chinese names. But I'll say which one I think is more the teal one in this, this one here is this one here which is... Oh, look at that. It's very similar to that one. So they, so Arteza's teal and Kiritaki's teal are similar, but I think Kiritaki, I think the Arteza's have it just by an edge because it's slightly more green and it gives that more, and this one's slightly more blue, but they're very similar, very similar. So that's interesting. And then this one, if I had to say anything was indigo, I don't know if they have an indigo. Yeah, see, that's very blue. Yeah, that's not. Do they even have? I don't think they have an indigo. That's green. Yeah, it's too green. Yeah, I think they just have black, brown. I don't think they have an indigo. It just doesn't have an indigo. And then their teal is, I think, this one, which is why it's, like, the one that's used up the most because I love teal. So this is their Kiritaki's teal. Yeah, see, I like, no, I definitely like the Arteza better. Heck yeah, the Arteza's teal is much better. Yeah. This one has more more of that deep teal. The, both of these I like better. But see, this one has a good teal too, though. This one has that one, which I like. But I don't think it has one exactly like that. See, I'm comparison. Now I'm sitting here comparing them because I want to know which one has my favorite colors. The pinks and the teals are always going to be my favorite. And then purples are a close second. So, yeah, these two are my favorite so far. And I can't see if any of the ones in here. No, that's their indigo, which I've already tested that one. That's their teal, which I put down here. Or, yeah, teal, which still, those are better. 
And that's it. I don't see another teal. What's this one? Oh, wait, maybe this one. Is that the one? I... No, that's that dark blue. That's real pretty. I always like that dark blue. I wonder what that one's like. Oh, that would compare to this one, probably. So, yeah, I think, like, Arteza's has got, like, all my favorite colors from the Kiritaki and this one. Except I do like their iridescence down. Um, I can't show you. There we go. These iridescents are like some of my favorites right here in this pan. But as far as straight watercolor goes, just regular watercolor, these, some of my favorites. And these do have some neon colors, which I do like about this one as well. But how often do you use neon colors when you're painting? Not that often. Um, or even the iridescence. But yeah, these do have some rich colors, I'll tell you that. And that pink. I don't have a replica for that pink. I have a couple of pinks, but nothing that replicas that one. I need more paper. I need more paper. I need some paper. I'm going to take her sheet off that. I'm trying to reach it, I can't. I need paper. One of my favorite things to do is to sit and swap watercolors. Watercolors are my favorite like paints to just look at because they're always so pretty. I just like watercolor paints. I like acrylic paints for mixed media, but as far as like just to look at, I think I think watercolors are my favorite. All right, so let's see. So if that is these no pink, 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 pink. This one, that pink. I want to see if there's anything even remotely close to that pink in these. Um, I know there's not, but because I've got this here, which is like, yeah, this is like a um, more wine colored than that, but it's pretty. It, it was my favorite pink at the time, but it has more purple in it. You know what I mean? It has a little more like a blue in it. It's a more bluer pink. I should say blue, not purple, because that's more what's in it, and there's a gnat in here. But if I, if I put it next to this one and actually compare it, go away, gnat. You can't have my paint. Yeah, this has a lot less of that purple color. That purple base is not as prevalent as in there. I can see it. You guys, I don't know if you can see. You can't. It looks the same on camera. It's hard to tell. But this one definitely has more blue in it than this one. And I just really love that pink because it, because of that. Because it's pink. You know, there's no blue in it. There's no trace of purple. You can't, you can't say, oh, that almost looks like it has purple in it. Nope. That is like pink. Hot pink. Just hot pink. Whereas this one you can see. And as it's even drying, I could see more of the purple coming out. So that's the one there. And then this one is the other pink from the... Um, the Mozart ones, but again, that's a more purple, like a more, uh, what do you call it? Burgund, not burgundy. I don't know. It's definitely more purple. You can even see that one on camera that it's more purple. So those are the only pinks I have besides the neon pink, which I love the neon pink, but that's not what I'm looking for. You can see on my paper better if I do that. And then as far as the, the Kiritaki, the pink that I have here is the closest one that would even be remotely like it, and it's not like this one, is this one, which again has a lot of purple in it. It's like this, but darker, and just has, I could see, I could see the purple. It's more of a wine color than it is a pink. More blue in it, I should say. And then this one, I can't remember if this is more red. I think this one's be a redder, like a redder color. This one would be, yeah, that one's a much lighter version of that. It doesn't have the purple in it, but it's way, way lighter. So, yeah, somehow they were able to make that hot pink right there without having a lot of blue in it. And that I like. My favorite. Mm -mm, that's my favorite. <laughs> and then this one over here in the Kiritaki is the closest I have to that one, but it's still very purple. It's not even that close. I don't know. They all have different things in them that I like about them, but I think the I think the the Artezas are my favorite. 
I'm going to be running to those a lot more, I think, than I will anything else because these colors are just badass. I didn't think I was going to like these that much. I really didn't because when I opened it and looked at it, I thought these are going to end up being like the Primas. They're going to end up being like the Jane Davenports, which in those, there are colors in there that I like. There's a colors in the Jane Davenport that I don't have anywhere else as well but i just don't like the way they apply the way i like my kiritakis or my mozarts so i was hoping they weren't going to be like that because you have to really work those to get any damn pigment out of them and i don't like doing that it's annoying to me i don't want to have to work that hard i'll show you like the the which one's my that has the pink that i like this one See, like, I have to work really hard to get the color out of these. It's not just touch them and they go. You know what I mean? Like, I have to sit here and work it for a minute to, like, really loosen it up. And then it's still a lot lighter. It ends up being a lot lighter and not giving me as much of the pigment. But this is the this is the prettiest pink in the whole one. And on camera, it doesn't look as bad. But it's pretty. But it's only one step away from that because it's really actually quite light. And it's still very purpley. And you can see that on camera. So that's the nicest pink I have out of all those. And then there's, well, this one's pretty nice too, but this is like a purpley pink again. Yeah, it's very purpley pink. But it's not, to me, these aren't as nice as the other ones. So I don't use these that often. I use them because there's a couple of colors that are nice in here. Like this one. Oh, wait, this one's like that red. This one's a really pretty pink too. It's still, that one's nicer, but this one's a, this one's also a pretty pink. Yeah, this is the one I liked better, not that one. This one. This is the this is the only the only reason I ever used this pan was for this color right there. This one here. I thought it was that one at first, but then when I put it out, I'm like, no, that can't be it. No, it was this one. But still, that one is better. That has more I could still see more purple in this than that. Not as much. These are close, but yeah, no, that one's definitely better, in my opinion. Much better, much more pure pink kind of and this is the purple that's in here that I do like I do like that purple but now see I had to work too hard like I'm still having not getting enough pigment out of that I have to really work it but the purple in this one is better which one was it that I liked was that first one after this one yeah it was this one this is a rival to that like that is just so much richer of a purple than that one I like that one better. That one's still too red for me. But one of my favorite colors in here that I can't really find anywhere else is this little blue one. It's like a, a really pale kind of teal, this one here. That one I like a lot. That I like. That's the only one that I don't have on any other color, like on any other of my pans. That, that one blue, it's like a very, very like... I don't know, I can't explain it, but I like that one. That one there, it's pretty. But other than that, my Artezas are the best, which I was very shocked. I didn't think I was gonna say that at all. And then this purple's nice too. That purple's nice. That purple's nice, but I do like that one better. Yeah, there's some decent colors in these. I just don't, I just always run to, to my these two because to me, they are they were always just nicer, I guess. But now I'm going to have three damn palettes out on my thing. Probably mostly that Arteza one. Yeah, see, I like that one. It's very similar to that one. They're very similar. That's almost, almost the same. Those two. The Artezas and, and that one. Yeah, it's... If I put it on the same way I put that one on, much darker than that time. Oh, yeah, they're like exact. Oh, wow. They're like exact. That's crazy. That's cool, though, because I really like that one in my, in my, um, I always like the purple in this set. I think I like the purple in this one, too, but I don't remember if it's the same. Oh, no, it's different. It's a different type of purple. So I do like that one, too. That has a little bit more red to it, and this one's a little bit more of a blue, blue purple. So, yeah, I did like that purple. But out of the regular purples, I liked 
I always like my Kirataki one. What else? Any other ones that I like? See, I don't have... See, this is the yellow ochre in this one, but it's lighter. It, it, it's lighter in the... Um, it ends up lighter, and that's why I thought the other one was going to be the yellow ochre, because this one's lighter. And so, it's see, it's more resemblant of that one. But in this one, theirs is, well, no, actually, that, it's not too far off of that one now that it's dry. But, yeah, it's still closer to that one. But, yeah, every, every, every one has different. The Mozart, which one is the yellow ochre for that one? Probably this one here, then. I don't know if I like this one. No, it's, it's okay. Yeah, it's similar. A little bit lighter than the other two. That one's a lighter yellow ochre, then there's that one, and then there's that one. So that's good. Three different three different hues of yellow ochre. Do you think the 36 colors gives you a good... Oh, hell yeah. This? Yeah. Of the, of the Artezas? Yeah, the 36 colors is great. I don't think they make a different pan for this. They have other watercolors and they have gouache, but I think the only pan one like this they have is the 36, I believe. But yeah, you get a really good, I mean, look, you get a really good selection of color, which I am very happy with. Which when I opened it and looked at it, I was like, huh, you do get a really good selection of color between all of these. Well, a couple of these are from the other one, but actually, yeah, from here. Yeah, there we go. That's all 36. All of these and those. So, yeah, you do get a really good selection. Yep. Yep, yep. I really like those. This one, so far, that's my favorite out of everything is the watercolor. That and the and the and the pens, the markers. Of course, I like acrylic paint, but it's just maybe because watercolors I love looking at. I think they're just pleasing to the eye to me more than anything. And the markers are just something I don't really have because even though I have some alcohol markers, now at least I have some that I can blend. And I didn't have that before. Very cool. I like it the color. Very pretty. Pretty pretty. Alright, I'm gonna move those out of the way. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do something fun with the Arteza colors at some point. Maybe do some flowers or make a cool card or something because I think that's not I think that would be fun. Yeah, I'm going to do a project um, with all of the things over the next, like, month. I'm going to do, like, you know, some sort of project. I haven't done a watercolor thing in a while. I haven't done a lot of things in a while, but. This color in big shocker. <gasps> oh, did you see that? Oh my goodness, it bursted. That was so cool. Let's do some purple in there. Oh. They're going around. That came out really cool. That bursted. They did they they done bursted. Yeah, the pigment in this color, that pink that I like, is very heavy. Whatever it is, is a very heavy pigment, which is why it's so strong and dark. Because it's, when I tapped it into there, it sunk right to the bottom, which is why it gave that burst off the top of it, which I like because it looks pretty when it does that. See, I wish Brusho had a color like that for their 
for their color bursts, you know. I wish they had a, a pink like that, but their pinks are just lacking. I I love brusho to death. I love my brushes. Everybody knows that. Over all every other company out there with the powdered watercolor, the brushes are by far the best. But I just I do wish they had like a better pink. It just needs a better pink. Because I feel like their pinks just suck. <laughs> Maybe it's because of the pigment, you know? Maybe they can't get a powdered pigment that will give that same burst with, that's probably exactly it, without, you know, probably just can't I want to do that where's that indigo color dang it is that it yeah that one burst too it made like little jellyfish it didn't burst as much as the pink but it still did I did make a heart but I sat here and just pushed all the paint out of it like a dumbass A blue heart. There we go. Now I can put some of the. We'll do this color in the middle. Oh, they're all kind of burst. Some of them on the others don't do that. And I want to put that one here. When I say burst, some of them burst more than others. Like the pink, that one bursted like crazy. But the other ones, they burst. Not as not as harsh like not as much but they do and but see they like just go psh. other paints that even the kirataki some of them don't even do that that much these ones give a little like psh. and i wanted to just dot on and make colors with let's put green in there where's that one green that i like Which one was it? This, see this one? This one looked more teal. Or turquoise. Yeah, this one. See, this green looked more a little more turquoise than that one that they called turquoise. Still needed some blue with it, but... Oh, you can't see. <laughs> Let's put some lime green on there and see what happens. Here as we mix them together. I'm going to take out any excess water. I'll probably have to put some more color back in. Maybe I'll put some more of that indigo back in. The indigo is like my favorite. I like it. that wider. That side is crooked.
that one dot of green in there. It just kind of sat in there. That's cool. I like it. I don't know what the difference between expert watercolor pads are. What does it say the weight is on them? Does it does it say what the weight is on the pads? Like 110 or is it cold press, hot press? Is it a hot press? I don't like the hot press as much as I like the cold. The cold press to me is better. Cold press has more texture to it than the hot press. The hot press is... A little more smoother and I don't like the smoother stuff for some reason I like the I like the little bit of texture that one bursted a lot too let's see this orange let's do this orange downward I was doing so good till I messed it up. Leave it alone, it'll look good when it's dry. Maybe. Hmm. Oopsie. Maybe we'll put it on something level. I don't have nothing level. 
my brain doesn't level, <laughs> let alone my tables. There we go. That's good enough. Anyway, the larger one's about nine miles more. Well, the nine by twelve is what I was just working on. This is nine by twelve. Um, this is nine by twelve. Whoa. Yeah, nine by twelve here. And what I usually use for mixed media mashup is eleven by fourteen. That's the one I like for mixed media mashup because it's the bigger one. This is the eleven. This is the eleven by fourteen, or yeah, eleven by fifteen. This is eleven by fifteen. But usually it's eleven by fourteen. For some reason they do eleven by fifteen. Um, so I usually use that. So I would get the 11 by 14 if you like the bigger, um, I, I've never heard of a, a company doing 11 by 15. So it's very odd that they do that to me. I don't care, but it's fine by me, but it's just weird. Usually it's 11 by 14 is typical. I mean, it's up to you what size you like. Yeah, 140 pound cold uh, cold press is what I like the best. That's usually what I would get. Um, so if that's what it is, I'll have to go look really quick. Let me see. Let me go look and see and I'll tell you which one I like. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't pay attention that they had watercolor pads. I was such a dumbass. But then again, we knew that. We knew that going into this, people. Let's see. Expert watercolor pack. 9 by 12, 32 sheets. See, I don't like the ones on the rings. The ones on the rings are good if you want to make use that as like an art journal kind of thing. I like just the, the sheets that you just peel out. Um, 9 by 12, you get 14 sheets. So you don't get as much and it's $24.99. But what is it? Is it cold press, hot press? Uh, cold press paper. Um, it's cold press. The 9 by 12 is uh, cold press. 140 pound. Okay. And then the expert watercolor pad is premium texture. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so I guess that's a better deal. I mean, the 9 by 12, 32 sheets, or I haven't looked at the, four, the 11 by 14 yet. Haven't gotten there. Um, where is the 11 by 14? All I see is 9 by 12. Oh, there it is. No, is that it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you get thir for $31.99, you get two packs of that. And that has 32 sheets. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't know. It just depends on what you want. Um, yeah, I get, I mean, would I get the larger one for $9 more? I mean, probably, but I mean, well, I mean, it's, that's because it's bigger. I mean, obviously the bigger the sheets, the, the, the more expensive it's going to be. Yeah. That doesn't matter to me whether they lay flat in the book or not because I, I usually take them out anyway, so. But, yeah, I'm curious to how they are um, as far as compared to the, the Canson. Because um, I've really not used, I have another watercolor pad, but I don't like it. 
and it's not Canson. It's some, I guess it's a cheaper brand or something. I don't know. Do I have it here? Um, I don't remember. What is this? This is it, isn't it? No, that's that weird book. That's not it. Where is it? That's the tracing paper. That's, what is it? Here it is. This one. Whatever. The, this is Canson, but this is like an older Canson. And this is... Oh, that's why. Because it's 120 pounds. I was going to say... I didn't like this as much. But it's because it's 120 pounds. And this one's... I mean, it's okay. But I, I don't like it. It has like more the lines kind of like texture. Whereas this doesn't. It has just... has texture to it. But it's not like in the lines. I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't like this as much. So I use this to like just play on like mess around with I, I don't there's only a few sheets in here I got it from the creative reuse a lot, like a while ago but but yeah I do like the heavier weight 140 pounds that's probably why I didn't like that one as much because it wasn't as uh wasn't as thick I like the thick because I use it for mixed media and watercolor and you know most of us do so yeah but yeah I'm, I'm, I'm pleasantly su su surprised by all the products I got I mean, I knew they had good stuff, so I'm not like, I mean, it's not like, obviously, it's not expert stuff. It's not, you know, Arteza stuff is supposed to be for, you know, the budget. Uh, it's a good, you know, art set for the budget-friendly or budget-minded budget, budget -minded people, you know, people who don't want to, who want decent things but don't want to spend an arm and a leg buying stuff from Michaels and everything. And, you know, sometimes when you go on Amazon, you can find cheapy things on there that are, you know, you can find cheaper supplies, you know, like Arteza's prices, but you don't know how they are really because, you know, you don't know anybody who's using them. Whereas Arteza's, you know, done a good job at marketing themselves. I give them kudos for that because they really have, I've watched them grow over the past few years and I've seen how they've marketed themselves and they've done a really good job of marketing themselves. I will give them kudos for that. Not many companies do that, which ends up why. And they're doing a good job at expanding, which is another thing that some of these companies don't do, is they'll have a couple products and then that's it. And they don't really expand. And if they do expand, it might be years later. Whereas Arteza has like literally been just banging the products out. Because when I first reviewed um, those watercolor markers, um to now and that was only like a year and a half ago uh the amount of products that they have out now is like probably three times the amount of stuff so yeah they've done a pretty good job of it but i'm definitely surprised about the watercolors i did not think i was going to like them better than my kiritaki and you know what i i don't I don't give a crap what anybody gives me. I'm going to, if, if I don't like it, I'm going to say I don't like it because I don't have a reason to lie because I don't care. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? Like, I don't, that I'm not, I don't, I don't care whether I impress them. I don't care either way. I'm not out to impress them. And I even told them that, you know, I mean, I've, I've given crappy reviews before. <laughs> so, you know, there was a whole, that company that sent me stuff that I came right out and said, yeah, I wouldn't spend the money on it. It's not worth it. You know? Because I don't have any reason to lie. I can care less whether a company sends me something for free. I want to make sure... I'm more concerned with, is it going to be any good? Oh, well, this whole thing comes... Oh, look at that. I didn't know that. The whole thing comes out. So you have, like, all this room for palette. Like, when you travel. You know how, like... I don't know if any of you have, but I have... Like when I was getting my iron infusions and stuff, I had my little thing. I had like some of these with me because these are the only ones I was able to travel with. I can't travel with the Kiritaki. They're too, it's too like big, but these I traveled with, I could travel with, but I didn't know. And I wonder if you could do that with this one. I bet you can. I'm an idiot. I bet you can. Not really. No. Okay. Never mind. Yeah. You can't take that out because there's little tabs in there. It won't let it come out. I don't, I guess you could. Oh, I just dumped them out. These things annoy the crap out of me. I dump them out constantly. And I keep pushing the little tabs further and further, but you're supposed to, what you're supposed to do is when you have these, the little tab here that holds it in, you're supposed to push it like that so that when you put it in, it has resistance and then it'll hold it in and it will not come out. 
but I push it, but I never push it enough. And that's my problem. These are in pretty good, but I bet you some of them would fall out if I tipped it over maybe. Cause you're supposed, well, no, these are actually in. It looks like all the tabs on these are pushed. Let's see. I don't want to mess up the order they're in, but shockingly they're already, okay, never mind. But that's right. These came wrapped, each individual one. That's why they don't do that. You have to do it yourself. And I, I never did until, you know, like, I wait for one to fall out and then I will push the tab further and further. Cause that's what those tabs are for. You push it and then, sorry, you push it. And then when you put it back in, um, whoops, wrong way. It'll give, you push it and it gives resistance and it has like a resistance now. So now it's not going to fall out. So and I didn't know that for a while. And I kept wondering why do they keep falling out? But see, this pan also has room to grow again, just like the marker thing. You, it has a whole row that I can get, which I plan on it. Maybe they, oh, they might not have them out yet. I see. So they're probably going to come out with another one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12, just like the, everything was in a row of 12, I think. <laughs> oh yeah. The markers were in a row of 12 and these are, so when they get their next set, I bet you it's going to be a set of 12 and it might be different colors to go here. That's, they obviously made room, room to grow for a reason. But it's nice because then you have a palette. So when you travel somewhere, you pop these out and you have a place to travel, you know, a place to, you know, do all your colors. Um, if you get it through that little hole where the thing is, it, you might, you might get a little leakage. So just use these trays here. I think the little one is supposed to do that too, but I think this one they have the little tabs pulled but i get i bet you if i pull them back and like do that it'll yeah if i do that ah uh, now i should be no yeah there we go see now i have extra room i didn't know that until i saw that one do it but that one will do it too but that's nice that they made it where you have it's in a nice thing and i know some other companies do that but i don't have any like that that are big like this i like that because then you can just take it. You're supposed to be able to use this on your finger to like hold it while you paint. I don't know who the hell does that, but, or I think you could do that. No, it doesn't stay up. Never mind. I was going to say, I thought you could tilt it up if you wanted to. No, but I like this because it's compact and it fits the water brush, which will fit in here too, which is nice because none of my other ones do that either. So I don't even have to worry about my water brush because my water brush can go there until I fill it up anyway. Nice. I like that. I like a good travel set. Hopefully I will never have to use it to travel to a hospital again, but that's where I've used them in the past. Hospital or doctor or something. Yeah. And this is for my Jane Davenport one. Swatchy poo. All right, fun, fun, fun. Yeah, it's true. You got to, or else, you know, you're only hurting people that that are watching your videos. Because people, you know, they trust what you say. Oh, these came out cool. You know, people trust what you say when you do that. And that's why, like... It's important that you say the truth because you're saving other people money. I mean, they came out cool. I'm gonna do something with those later. Well, I don't care. I ain't got nothing to lose. I can care less. I don't care if they paid me a thousand dollars. I'm still gonna tell the truth. I'm gonna move that so I can put this back. I don't remember how I had this situated. And yeah, these are the ones I got. Did I even test any of these out yet while I got this here? The ones I got from the Creative Reuse that that person already had colors in those things. I might have tested out this one when I first got it, but I don't think I tested this one out. 
somebody had nice watercolors and yeah this one i tested out i remember but i never tested out the other one i'm gonna test it real quick these have got to be like fancy colors because usually people would put you know nice colors into their palette and let them dry like that so you can re-wet them and use them here let's see how this pink is compared to the Arteza pink well and these are like I said these are fancy watercolors I still like the Arteza one better as far as pinks go these are nice though definitely let's see I mean, as far as quality goes, obviously, these are like Daniel Smith or something. So these are pretty amazing quality. These are going to be more pure pigments because they're the expensive. But each one, each color is probably cost $15 a tube, $20 a tube. These are ridiculously priced. I would never buy them. Unless I got like a ma an amazing deal or something, I might someday buy a very small set of Daniel Smith's just because I always wanted to try them. I don't even know if these are because these were liquid or uh, what do you call it? Tube. Tube watercolors. So I don't know if Daniel Smith has tube watercolors. Well, yeah, they do actually because that lady that sells them on e no, Etsy, she's, she gets them in the tube and then she squirts them and makes pans with them to sell. That's a nice turquoise though right there. It's a very turquoisey kind of color. Let's see about this one here. But actually, I think I almost want to say that the the other I don't know if these are super expensive to be honest, actually, because I, that other little set that I have was better. I think. Oh, I knocked everything on the floor. I think this set had more expensive ones in it, actually. Let me see. I was able to tell that these ones were really like pricey watercolors. They had this very, very cool hot pink in here or like neon-y kind of pink in here, which I liked. Yeah, I love this pink, this neon pink. I have a neon pink in that, in that Mozart set, but this one's, this one's nice. I like this one. I wish I knew what brand these were because I would just want that pink because I, I like my Arteza pink and then I would like this pink. This is just a cool, it's a really, really, like, it's like a really bright pink. And I don't know who makes this set. I have no idea. I got them from the Creative Reuse. There's no markings or anything on it to determine it. I bet you somebody who's, like, really good with watercolors could tell me who each one of these paints come from. But I think this set was probably better than that one. I'm not sure. Who knows? They might be the same. I don't know. What do I know? I don't know nothing. And that's a nice dark pinky red kind of different than I wonder if that one's similar to the Arteza. It almost looks it when it's dry. Where's the Arteza? Now I gotta sit here and compare these. Jesus. Keep in mind, these are likely a more expensive set. Much more, I would assume. And I bet you that pink is very similar to the Arteza pink. Oh, the Arteza pink's better. <laughs> I could tell already. I barely touched the thing and it's much darker. But I do like this one. This one I like too. This one, I, I really do like this one, which is the, which is this one, I think. I do like both of these. They're different, but they're both equally I like. Because this one's like a little bit more redder. And then that one's just more pink. It's a very, very vibrant pink. Like, it's like a true kind of, like, hot pink. Which, all the other ones that I had always had so much purple in them. Like, there was always so much purple in them. And that one doesn't have it. But, yeah. No, that's not that one. That's that one. Is it? No, which one's that one? Is that the red one? Yeah, that was that red. Yeah, it's like a reddish pink. Yeah, that's why it looks more red in there. Yeah, I like that. Oops. 
you know, I like this color, whatever that is I really like. And then of course my Arteza and that. Those are the only three pinks. Those are like my favorite three pinks probably. I don't know where these two come from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What about the, which one was, is there another one that has indigo? What about this? This probably, this, ooh, this is the indigo, I think. Oh, yeah, it is. Ooh, nah, maybe not. Maybe it is, but it's maybe their indigo, but I think it's a little too bluey. And the Arteza's is a little bit darker, which I like. I love it. It's still very pretty. It's one of my favorite colors, but the Arteza, I think, might be a little bit less bluey. Yeah. See, this one's, or the blue is like different. Like it's a more denim blue, like a darker gray blue. They both are very pretty. I bet they would look pretty together. They kind of repelled each other. It was kind of cool. Yeah, they do look nice together. Hmm. Interesting. What about the purple? Let's see. Yeah, these are definitely pricier paints, I could tell. Let's see what the Arteza purple was like. Which one did I like? This one. Oh, wait a minute. Was it that one? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they're different purples. That one's a little more red. Didn't I have one that wasn't quite as red? This one? No, that's that bluey one. Yeah, it's more blue. That's blue. Hmm. And then there's this is like a teal color. And that one's like the one Arteza one, I think. This one? Kind of. That one's cleaner looking than the Arteza. So it's got to be a different blue then. It's got to be one of the darker ones. Yeah, more like this one probably. Oh, wait. Is it like that one? Nope. Mm, that's just a little different. It's like a cross between those two. Mm. They all look the same on camera. Hmm, they're all pretty. Is there a yellow ochre in these? I think that would be the yellow ochre right there, maybe. I think these are just yellows, but this one, oh no, there it is. This is, no, yeah, I was going to say that's yellow. That's it. I saw it there and I'm like, that's it. That's their yellow. Yep, there it is. It's a little lighter than some of the other ones. And then there's a few missing in here that didn't make it. <laughs> that. And what happened was they fell out in the creative reuse. These two did because I opened it and they were, they came loose cause they, you know, they're dry. They came loose and fell and I didn't think anything of it. I heard them drop, but I didn't think anything of it. If I would have known, I would have picked them up and put them back. And then there's this one here, which is like another pinky red that I like. That's there's not much in there though. There's very little bit in there. That one's a pretty one too. Anyway, fun to play with. I know, I'm comparing. And every time I go to the Creator Reviews and I see one of these things, I never did open these up before. Um, and I should have because they probably always had like some decent paint in them, but I didn't think to open them. And now every time I go there and see them, I'm always like, oh, is that one got paint in it? Because I don't want a plain one. I want the one with the paint in it. Because I'm hoping to find, like, some super expensive, fun paints inside to play with. Anyway. Anywho. Good times. Oh, so dry. Okay. 
stick this somewhere. Where can I stick it? Stick it there. I'm gonna get this stuff out of my way. Out my way. Maya Haima, Maya Haima gouache. I've not heard of it. Why? What is it? I mean, I know what gouache is, but is it like a special brand or something? Yeah, if you look below the video, there's a link to, well, you could just click on the links below or the Nightbot just put a link in, but I have a coupon code, Pink Poodle Crafts one So just write my channel name, all one word, and a number one all, all together and that'll give you 10% off your purchase of any of your Arteza supplies mm -mm. so fun fun all right I need to get my journal out. I lost my rag though. Where'd it go? My white one disappeared. How did that disappear? Well, I don't know how it did, but we'll use this one. Yeah, I just did my, were you here, Tammy? You weren't here. Um, maybe you weren't here for the whole thing. I just uh, did a, I just was swatching out all the new Arteza stuff that I got. And their, uh, their watercolors are awesome. And their metallic colors are awesome. And I like, their paints are nice. And I like their markers. So I, I, I was surprised, actually. I thought there was going to be something. I was like, oh, I'm going to have to say I don't like something. I know it. Cause it's just the way it goes when I get things sometimes I, you know, like if I get something from whether it's the same company or like a bunch of stuff from one company, not given to me necessarily, even if I buy it, whatever, like there's always something I'm like, me, I don't really like, but I was, you know, surprisingly, I really liked everything. I didn't have any complaints about it, which, you know, I'm a harsh critic of things a lot of times. I'll bitch about anything if I find a reason. <laughs> um, so I decided that in this journal, I was going to, um, every time I did like embellish a page in some way, I was going to do it in a different kind of theme. Like this one's like a sewing theme. Um, but maybe the next one will be like steampunk. <clears throat> All in like a vintage, obviously. I'm going to do like a vintage mermaid page, a vintage, um, Maybe like a vintage fairy page because I have some vintage kind of fairy looking pictures and stuff. And then I have like, I could do like a shabby chic page and I could do like, like a, like a travel one or, you know, stuff like that. Thanks, Tammy. Yeah, I just started embellishing it and I want, oh yeah, I was working on that thing. That um, little thing I'm going to put in here. Where the hell did it go? I think it's behind me. Oh yeah, here it is. It's behind me. Oh, I everywhere. I sure did make a mess, that's for sure. Okay, got my box. Got my box of rocks. And the little thing that I was working on. Like I'm gonna do a vintage like bingo page because I have some bingo things and I have some old bingo things that I can do. Like, so I'm gonna do like just different things. I'll probably do like maybe 10, 10 or 12 pages. And I might do a pocket for each one just so I can put something in it and not just the page, you know? So that's what I think is gonna happen. All right, so that's what I was working on there. 
extra things that I don't need right now. little cutter and this was the doohickey I was working on which I need to zoom out a little bit because I need to shut the damn autofocus off as soon as I do because that driving me nuts good night Sarah have a good night that's right I had this planned I might kind of do it on an angle and do like something like that. Inside somewhere or something. Now I want to punch these corners out. Good night. of this. Where's the damn thing? Mm -hmm. Don't know. What do I do with it? Oh, maybe that's it. No, that's not it. It's an old lucky one. I'm being stalked. Somebody, or I should say two someones, are being very nosy. I don't care. Like, who, us? Not us. We're not being nosy. Two young ladies who shouldn't be so nosy are at the end of the hall by my door. I can hear them. They tiptoe down. The, they walk real slow down the hallway so that they, they, they think I can't hear them. They don't come racing down because they know that I would hear I would hear their nails on the floor, but they tiptoe and they think that I can't hear them, but I can. They literally do it like stalkers. That's why I call them my stalkers because they're not doing it. You know, they're not just walking down with like intent. 
because they know that I'd hear them. It's odd how they think that way, but they really are trying to be sneaky. Because as soon as, if I were to go around the corner and look at them, they would run. They would run the other direction. Like, oh, I've been caught. We gotta go. Abort. It's so funny. I just find it funny that they do that. They're weird. I can't find my ink. I lost my ink and I don't know where it is. And I don't like that, that I lost it. Maybe it's in the box. Did I put it in here? I bet you I did. Where are you? You son of a boot. Give it back to me. Not in there. Thought it would be. Dang it. Oh, it's right here. I'm losing my mind. Yeah, the girls run they slide on the on the wood floor too. I love when they're trying to get going when they run. And as they're trying to get going, their legs like do that thing like cartoons where they run in place for a minute and then they go ching. <laughs> so funny. Cuz they're trying to get a grip. I sometimes wish I had carpet just so that they can, you know, get a better grip when they run, but then they'd be driving me even more nuts. But they run back and forth on the couch because my couch is really long. It's not like a normal couch. It's like an extra cushion long. So they run back and forth and they tear back and forth on the couch. Oh, I forgot to show you guys what I got. I'll have to show you what I got from um, Dollar Tree today. Let me do that now before I get anything dirty and have to then clean everything. I'll just do this. Let me go grab my bag. Oh, I gotta put this clothes back anyway because it's gonna get dirty in here. We don't let clothes be in this room. I'll end up making a mess of it. stalkers run when I go around this corner. Oh, they already left. What are you stalking? Are you stalking? I saw you stalking. Have to be a little spy. Are you spy? You're my little spy. You're wagging that butt. You're wagging your little butt. I see you. I know your ways, your sneaky little ways. Yes, I do. I know all the tricks. I know all the tricks. You think I don't know, but I know all your tricks. I do. I do. Maybe you can see that. Okay, before I get started on that, at the creative reuse I had gotten, hi Esther, um, I got a whole bunch of, uh, 
these things. They're like, I guess like scrapbook album covers and they're brand new and they have like a little bit of a texture. Um, but look, they're empty and they're like brand new. And these would make an awesome, like, well, they'd make a great scrapbook, but I mean, can you imagine like a cool art journal and see inside, I have a bunch of these, I have like 30 of them. So in here, there's that metal track where they would have the, whatever you put in here. I don't know what the hell and how you do it, but it's that little metal track. But if you wanted to make the cover bigger, which is what I plan on doing with mine. So that you have more of a space to, and you can like actually sew into the journal itself. You can remove this pretty easily actually. It's just held in with some glue, which is not super strong once you start opening it. Once you get it open, you can pry it out. And it doesn't matter what the middle looks like because you can fix, you can, you know, if it rips it or whatever, who cares? Because you can always, it's going to get covered anyway. If you use your heat gun, I bet this would come out in a heartbeat, but I was stupid and I sat here and just did this when I could have probably gotten it out in about a half a minute. If I can just get a grip on this, I would love to pull it out. There we go. There we go. Not really care. So now it's much bigger. And so you could probably heat it and get all the rest of this glue out. But what I mean is like now look at how much wider that thing is like the, the spine is now much wider so it can be much thicker. And if you were to straighten this out by like repeatedly like grabbing this and forcing it to go straight, it'll be loose. But then you stick another piece of chipboard, you paint it pink, whatever, put a piece of paper over it. Who cares? Black paper. Once, and if, once you get that glue out of there, you don't even need to get the glue out. But if you did, it would be even more flexible. And if you just flex it out so that it lays a little more flat... Yeah, if you just peel this, I would just peel this whole thing. I don't care if it rips, it's not hurting anything. Just peel all this out because you could just, you got to put something to stiffen it anyway. Yeah, there we go. But you're not going to see it because you're going to put something over it, like a piece of chipboard. So you're going to take a piece of, of uh, like stiff chipboard and make a, however big is this? Let's see. It goes from here. To there so yeah it's like a three-quarter inch spine now yeah so you take like a three-quarter inch piece of chipboard and put it in there and cover it with black paper or paint it and then you'll have like a thick spine on this book like that thick let me see like this oh you can't see like that see what i mean and it doesn't affect the outside because the outside still looks perfect it's still got the same pattern and it doesn't look any different on the outside. And then you have this three quarter inch, nice, actually well, bigger than that, I think, spine. And there you have like a nice uh, book, a thick art journal or any kind of journal. You got 12 by 12 papers, you know, you can do all kinds of things with this. So I'm gonna be doing a whole project with these you can make yourself a nice art journal with this, but that's my plan. And I got a bunch of them, so. You found a set of, where'd you go? Oh, Tuesday mornings, oh nice. And you could paint this whatever you want, cause it's kind of like, um, what is this on here? It's like a, I don't know, some sort of covering. It's not, I mean, it's not really paper. It's kind of like a, maybe like a fabric. I don't know. But you could paint over this and make it any way you want, which is cool. I got blue ones and pink ones, and I got a bunch of them. 
So they'll be in the auction too. And you can make all kinds of stuff out of them. All right, anyway, from uh, the dollar store, I got stuff. Some of the stuff I got is for giveaways. You know, for the next couple of months, I'll do some giveaways. Um, but I got, now everything was a dollar, so, I mean, you get a bunch. There's five, and you get little wooden witches hats, and you get string for it to make, like, little ornaments and stuff. I thought it would be cute to make some and give them away, or just give away the wood ones. I got owls. I got leaves. I think I got a couple of leaves, because I'm going to give away whole packages, um, of these mixing a mashup or whatever some of those some of these I got a few of these as well um, because I think I'd like these for when I'm working on Halloween stuff I can make it whatever color I want you know and they're wood which they didn't have these last time so I got a few of those because I know that they'll probably run out of things and then there's these leaves and they have a thing on them, but you can cut it off and use it. They're like burlap leaves. And they're nice and big. These would make nice prints on like a jelly plate because of the burlap. It would be like a cool leaf print too. There's these, which are little pumpkins in a bling. You can cut them. I just thought they were cool. You can use it as a sheet. It's, it's, it's an adhesive diamond wrap, so I can imagine they probably meant for, like, somebody to sit and stick it on one of these cups or some crap. I don't know what somebody would use it for or around something. I don't know. But I'm not going to use it for that. Oh, and then I got more of those leaf things, but they have different sizes. I got another one in that size, then I got that size. And then they had these leaves, which I have a ton of these. I have a ton of these, but I don't have any that have the smaller ones with like the burlapy kind of texture to it. I don't, yeah, they're burlap. Never mind. They're actual burlap. And there's like a few mixed in that are burlap. I don't have any of those. Um, and I got some of these because I'm gonna I'm gonna do one, but then I'm gonna give some away. So I got four of these. I'm not gonna use their markers, obviously. Oh, I got more leaves too because they have different colors. And I wanted all the colors. Um, so I got some of those to give away. I mean, fun little projects to do. And then I got more wooden ones. Pumpkins and cats. I got this stencil, which is, uh, it's not Halloween, but it's a self-adhesive stencil. But, um, I just like the leaves. So... I don't want this. I don't care about the stick. I don't care about the adhesive part. I just like the the shapes of those those stencils on there, the leaves. I got some of these last year. They had these last year, and I I probably tore through all of them last year. So I got myself two of them because last year I got one and I used them pretty much used them all up. Um, let's see. Um, let me get my other bag. And then I got some of these to give away, which are, this is a little pumpkin head guy. It comes with paint and everything. And then this one is a Frankenstein dude. And it's like a little ornament thing. He's holding a pumpkin. And this one, which is a witch Hold, with a broom. And then I got a couple of these little canvases. Mostly these are for giveaways. Oh, I got this just because, hello, it's a poodle and it's just cute. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm going to put that on my dresser. A little poodle because it's so cute. This is a cute poodle. Oh, these I got for Winnie and Willow. Because these might fit in the thing that I have for them. So I have this thing that shoots little balls out and I think the balls are about this size and these balls would be better because they're harder and the other ones are so soft that I'm afraid they're going to tear them up. And then I got these which are like, like a firm rubber because Winnie loves balls but she always tears them up. So I'm hoping she won't tear these up. 
She, I don't know, she's weird, but I got those for them. And I got some of this, which is sparkle mesh, and it's like got uh, spider webs on it. Oh, ow. Get over here. And I got this one in. This one's black with orange sparkle. This one's black with like a uh, gold sparkle. So like those. And then I got some ribbon things. I got this one. And then I got these two black. And these are I've gotten these before. You've seen me use the sequins ones. And that's what these are. They're like the sequins. Strips of sequins or whatever. They had them in black, which I've not seen the black before. So I'm excited. These will be fun for Halloween. You know, these things. I have them in blue and pink and white. I've never seen black. So that's it. That's everything. Halloween goodies. Most of the stuff I got for giveaways and such. But I haven't got, I'm not going to be getting my Halloween stuff out until the end of August. Because it's just not enough room in here to have it all out yeah that's I can't give them tennis balls the little ones or the big ones anything with fuzz on them she tears the fuzz off of it and then it's just the rubber thing underneath so I figure if she leaves the rubber alone then those balls will be perfect if she doesn't well then you know oh well so and they were a dollar, so who cares? If she tears it up, whatever. You know, what am I going to do? I, I don't buy expensive toys for them because, I mean, there's no point in buying expensive toys if they're going to tear them up. And Willow's very gentle with her toys. Tigger's gentle with his toys. But Winnie, she's, she, she's being more gentle than she ever was. She's tearing up less and less, which is good. Tigger doesn't play anymore really either. He'll carry a toy around once in a while. Ever since the girls came, he doesn't want nothing to do with it because he's like pissed off all the time. He's got an attitude because the girls are here. But yeah, I just was like on a whim. I was like, oh, let me, I went down to a different grocery store because I had to go to the grocery store to pick up a few things. And I went down to the grocery store where the Dollar Tree is and I said oh I haven't been to Dollar Tree in like a year so I decided to go in and see what their Halloween situation was I didn't even think they'd have as much out as they did for Halloween but they did and of course like $40 later I was like well crap but at least I have stuff for giveaways for the next like two months shut it off again or did it not go off yet no it didn't go off because I probably didn't set it after the last time it went off so that's why I was like I feel like I should have taken my other medicine by now but I didn't reset it because I'm stupid <laughs> I like my cup. It has sugar skulls on it. The problem is when I open the mouthpiece, right, and I go to drink out of it, it shuts. It's annoying as hell. It doesn't stay open. So 
sometimes it will, but most of the time it does not. Very annoying. Not nice. Oh, good night, Mary Jane. I didn't even see you come in. I didn't even see you come in, Miss Lady. I hope you're doing okay. Get some sleeps. We, um, I was able to use my wagon. Oh, I never told anybody about the wagon debacle. Should I tell people about the wagon debacle, Janie? <laughs> this is hilarious. I think you, me, and Barbara about died over that wagon situation. <laughs> so funny. I forgot all about this, to say anything. Because it was so bizarre. Awesome, but bizarre. Oh no. Did I just put that on uneven? Oh, I'm sure I did. That's alright. But I did use it for the first time. And man, was that helpful. I mean, we used it at the creative. When we got back from the creative reuse. And oh my god. I know, right? Need a fourth, don't I? And what a difference that has made. And then today. Well, actually, Chris used it. Um, probably more than, well, yeah, more than me initially, because he brought the stuff in from the creative reuse and he said it was much easier to have to, to not have to carry individually all the loads because my, my driveway is like far up from my door. So it's not easy to load, lug things. And it goes up on a little bit of an incline. It's a pain in the ass. So anyway, the, the wagon debacle is, I, or anyway, I, well, first I used it today to bring groceries in for the first time. And I, I put all the groceries in. I had plenty of room. I didn't buy that much anyway, but I had like a couple bottles of tea and milk and like heavy stuff. And I put it in the wagon and it was like, I was like, oh my God, why didn't I think of this before? It was so easy. I threw everything in the wagon. I, you know, I had to be careful when I pulled it down the hill because from the driveway, it's a slight incline, incline to my, down the sidewalk. It's a really steep incline down my driveway, but just going to my door, it's a very slight incline, but I had to walk backwards and hold the cart because it wanted to like just fly down the hill and, and it would have run me over and knocked me over. So I just walked backwards until it kind of leveled out. And then I was able to just turn around. It was perfect though. It took me so much less time to have to drag things in. I didn't have to walk back and forth in the heat and like kill myself. It was so nice. But anyway, um, so yeah, I really put that on crooked. Oh, well. Um, so I wanted, I was thinking about getting a wagon and I was talking to Barbara, um, about it and I and she said something about I I was like you know I don't know do they make things you know I was talking to her about something about you know like you know I don't know I was happened to be on the phone with her I think and I think actually no because didn't I didn't I come up on come up with the idea while I was talking to you Janie wasn't it you that I was talking to and I and all of a sudden I it dawned on me maybe I should get a wagon 
Yeah, because we were talking on the phone. And I think that's when the idea hit me. I think I was on the phone with you, not Barbara. And I said, I, I don't know what, what I was talking about and what we were talking about. Oh, because, oh, that's right. Because Chris was being a jackass last week, remember? And he wouldn't, he wouldn't help me at the creative reuse. And I thought, well, how the hell am I going to be able to do this by myself if I have to? And then I thought, well, if I got, maybe if I got some sort of a wagon. And so you and I were talking and that's when I was brainstorming. And then... I was looking at them online while we were on the phone and you were telling me about one that you had. And so that's what got the ball rolling. But then I had picked, I had found one and I thought, what are you doing? No, sir. You stay out of the bags and go lay down. Yeah, I know you're cute, but you're not getting in any of my stuff. Okay. Go lay in your nighty. And, um, so yeah, because you were telling me that you had one or you something, something, I don't remember. You got one or, and the wheels rotted off of it after a while because you left it outside or something that was, yeah, that's right. So th we started looking at links, um, for wagons. Um, and then, you know, I said, well, eventually I'll get it, you know, maybe next week or whatever. And then we got off the phone and then the next day, Barbara had called me. And I was talking to her and I said, oh, I said, I was talking to Janie and I came up with a really good idea about getting a wagon. And she's like, oh yeah, that's a good idea. I said, I'm still picking one out, you know, and she, I think she said, well, send me a link and show me which one you're going to get or something. I don't know. But we ended up off the phone and I sent her a link to one. I said, ask Mark, her husband, because I figured her husband is an engineer. So he, if he looks at something Cause like they were big ste they're like big metal carts. You can get them at like Home Depot, but they were cheaper on Amazon, I think. And they're like garden carts or whatever. And they have big tires and, you know, they have like a weight, like mine can hold up to 800 pounds, you know, stuff like that. So I'd send her a link and I said, have Mark look at this for me and let me know if, if he thinks it's sturdy enough and if it'll work, if there's, you know, cause he's a guy and he's an engineer so I thought he's smart enough to look at it and know whether it's going to be halfway decent and I think you know I don't remember but I think she's I ended up talking to her later and whatever and I said yeah I said so I, I so I, I think I said to her I think I'm going to get it after my auction meaning after last auction well I don't know what what compelled her but she ended up buying it and sending it to me well I ended up buying it and I you know, I don't remember when. Was it right after the auction? When did I get it? I don't remember. I don't know. I bought it literally the day after that she did. She bought it for me and then I bought it for myself. So then all of a sudden, the day after I ordered on Amazon, it came to me. It was, it was on my porch and I thought, huh, I've never had anything get to me that fast. Usually it's two days. I've never had like just overnight because I ordered it late at night and I thought that was odd. Um, yeah, it was just very odd. And so then all of a sudden I get, I, it was on my porch because I couldn't carry the box in. It was heavy. And I, I was like, well, I'll get it later or I'll see if Chris can help me bring it in the house, whatever. Um, cause I knew he was coming over that night. That was the night he was coming over for burgers. So she, Barbara calls me that day and she goes, did you get a, did you have a package on your porch? She says, and I said, I know I do. And I said, uh, I said, what are you, what are you, what, what are you referring to? Because I thought to myself, what, what package is she talking about? Because the only package I have is the one that I bought my wagon. And so I'm like, wait a minute. And all of a sudden it dawned on me. I'm like, oh my God, I'm going to kill her. And I said, what package are you talking about? And she's like a package. And I'm like, she goes, do you have a package? I said, yes, I have a package. I said, but I want to know what you think the package is before I tell you what it is. And she goes, well, it's a wagon. I said, I'm going to kill you. And she's like, why? I'm like, because I bought it too. I said, that's why this one came so fast. It's the one from you. I said, then I said, that means I'm going to have one here tomorrow. And she was like, oh my God. I'm like, oh, I'm going to have two wagons. And she goes, well, you better return yours. I said, what if I return yours? She said, you better not. If you return it, she's like, she was getting, threatening me. Don't you return mine, return yours. So, okay. I return hers. And literally she, the next night, the next day, um, she was in a live stream 
And I had gotten up late that day. So I went, by the time I got into her live stream, she had already been in there for a while. And I don't remember, did I? I didn't know. No, yours didn't come yet, Janie. Janie got one for me too. Sneaky little asses, both of them. And Janie sends me one too. So now keep in mind, I still have the one on the porch that hasn't been picked up yet. I have the one that I put together, which was out in my yard. And then Janie, I guess in, in Barbara's live stream, I had said something to, um, I said something in the chat like to Barbara, like, oh, I put together the wagon. And then Janie, I guess, I guess you, was it you that freaked? Yeah, you freaked out and you were, yeah, that's right. You were messaging Barbara and it was her first like, lengthy live stream. So I was, I didn't know why you were messaging her saying you were going to message her. You're going to message her. So I said, I had messaged Janie and I said, what do you need to tell her? I'll call her because, and that's when Janie told me about what was going. And she said, cause she told, she wanted to tell Barbara that she had bought me a wagon too. <laughs> and so, yeah, it was, it was so funny. The same exact wagon. I got three of them delivered. I was like, oh my God, I could have, I could have like, made a, a wagon business or something going up and down the road, delivering stuff for people. <laughs> um, yeah, I got it and it's, I still have it because I think you need to start the return on your end for it. <coughs> I'm choking on my teeth. Oh my God, my eyes are watering. Oh, that made me choke. Um, yes, I was going to tell you I got the tarp, but that was the day that I was, the day after, or something was going on that day. And um, the tarp came like two days later. Was it two days later? I don't remember. And I was going to tell you about that yesterday, but... I didn't end up getting home until after I was so exhausted yesterday. Um, but it was so funny. The rope that came with it, Janie cr made me laugh so hard because literally <laughs> Tigger, you need to go. Come on, buddy. Go play. Let me get what the thing was. Um, not here. Where did it go? I was going to show you. I don't have it in here, but I have something in here to reference. But I don't know where it is. Where'd it go? Oh, here it is. Literally, the, sh the rope is like not much bigger than this. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> it made me laugh so hard. So, <coughs> but I have, um, I think I have something that's, that'll work for it. So don't worry about it. But it was so funny. <laughs> I, or wait, I think that maybe the tarp had a rope with it inside the package. No, maybe not. I don't remember, but the rope was, I was like, what is this? I'm like, why is it so skinny? And they probably sold it together too. Didn't they had it like together? But that's all right. <coughs> I was going to call you <coughs> today if I got home in time, but by the time I got home, it was so late. Um, because I had to, Chris borrowed the car or took the car home last night and then he had to bring it back here. He got back here late. He was supposed to be back here at three. He didn't get back here till six. So, cause he fell asleep. So I had to go to the store and <coughs> I went to Dollar Tree. I went to Kroger. I keep choking. And so I thought, well, I'll talk to her later tonight or tomorrow I would call you, but because the day just got away from me after all that um, to let you know about the rope and then talk to you about the returning of the other cart. But you guys are hilarious. It was so sweet of both of them to do that. <coughs> I hate when you choke on a drink because it's the worst feeling in your throat. No, I know you didn't know about this, the, the size of the rope and it made me laugh. 
because I showed it to Chris and I was like, I was dying laughing. And he's like, what's that for? I'm like, oh, that's to tie the tarp. And he's like, that's not going to work to tie the tarp because he didn't know where I got the rope from. He had no idea. And I start laughing. I said, that's why I'm laughing. I said, it's so funny. <laughs> It probably looked so much bigger in the picture. I've had that happen to me several times. When you buy something and it looks bigger in the picture. I don't know. Maybe I'm trying to move this around. But I don't know if I like it that way. I don't know if I should put something else under here. No. I'm not going to. And I can't pop it up because it's got to go in that pocket. I think I just might put some gauze behind that. But I'll. T but I'll. Uh. I'll talk to you about it either later or tomorrow because I have to talk to you about the return process because I can't do it from my end. There's no way for me to do it. You have to kind of start that. Um, what do I do with my gauze? I have a piece that was already... Oh, there it is. I found it. Well, it's got some color to it that I don't want. Do I any more? I think I, oh wait, what's that? No, that's not it. I think I put the rest of the ones that I had in that kit. Is that it? Nope, here's some. Um, I didn't open it yet because like I said, I haven't had a chance to do that because with taking Chris to the doctor yesterday, it was an all day ordeal. I was gone from 8.30 in the morning until 8.30 last night. And then Chris was here and I made some food. And then by the time he left, I tried to get some work done. I did not feel good at all. I was exhausted. I got so overheated in the creative reuse. It was insane. I was so hot. And it was like, cause we went, we ended up killing time after we went to his doctor's appointment. That's why we ended up at Rue 21 in the first place because his doctor's appointment was early. I thought the creative reuse opened at 12. It didn't open till two. I wasn't going all the way back home. I was already all the way down in Nashville. So we went to, he was like, well, I need to go get shoes from Rue 21. So we went there. And so it was just a really long day and I was walking around a lot. My back was killing me. And then by the time I went to the creative reuse, I was miserable. When I left there, I was absolutely miserable. I came home and no, there was nothing else I was going to think about other than sleep <sighs> or just kind of whatever. I tried to get some things done, but I just, I just couldn't get a lot done because I didn't feel well. And then today I had to get up. Um, what did I have to do today? Oh, today I had... No. Oh, I had some phone calls to make and then I got a few things done, like finally got my dishes done and then I was waiting on Chris and then I got pissed off because he was taking forever, taking his sweet time. And by the time he got here, it was so late and I told him, I said, I wanted to do a live stream tonight and I did not want it to be super late. That's why the live stream was at 10 o'clock because of him. Because I knew that I wasn't going to get back until, you know, close to 8, 30, 9 o'clock and I couldn't possibly just jump into a live stream as soon as I got in the house because I take care of the dogs and feed them and coddle them and all that stuff before I do a live stream or else they're just a pain in the butt. So I didn't get a chance to call you yesterday. I didn't get a chance to, or message you, call you, anything. I didn't get to talk to anybody or do anything. The last two days have been pretty much just a wash as far as getting anything done here which sucked because I did have a lot of things to get done here too but you know <coughs> yeah I think it does I think it does when I looked at it it's a nice tarp though it's not like a real stiff tarp which is good it's like it's a nice tarp so I don't think it'll be a problem. Regardless, even if it didn't have holes all the way around it, you know damn well I could put holes in it. I ain't worried about that. But I think it does actually though. Because I remember looking at the picture on the front of it and seeing, you know, what it looked like. I'm pretty sure it does have the holes. Let 
you and Barbara are too sweet to do things like that. That was very nice of you. That cart is very freaking handy for me, especially. Because now I don't have to worry about it if Chris can't help me or he acts like an ass, which is pretty often. You know, going to the Creative Reuse is hard enough just because it's so hot in there. And um, just bringing stuff to the car is really, really hard. I had a hard time when I went by myself. It was rough. So luckily he came with me yesterday, but I can't count on that because he, on a whim, just decides to act like an ass and then, you know, I'm the one that's going to suffer for it. Although he did go to a psychiatrist and she's putting him on a different med. The only problem I'm nervous about that is that if this med don't work, he's going to turn into super ass again. Ow. Oh, that hurt. Oh, I just scraped myself. Why am I always hurting myself with everything? I'm trying to get this clump of dried glue out of here. And I ended up scraping my skin instead. Nice. Oh, that's right the power went out that day that's why I ended up behind because I had no power for like almost 20 hours and lost an entire day to that and then that's why I didn't end up telling you that that's the day that I think the no was that the day it came yeah that's the day that the rope and the tarp came I think was that day the day that the power went out The day that I walked around Walmart for hours trying to waste time to not sit in the dark. Man, it's been a crazy week. I, 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 I've left the house more this week than I have in months. <laughs> I don't usually leave the house three times, four times in a week. Not usually. Well, they have them on Amazon. They have them on Amazon, Miss Tammy. Just look for a utility cart on Amazon. Yeah, I got a metal one. It, it, well, most of the utility carts are metal, I think, on there. That I've seen anyway. I, well, I did see a couple plastic ones. But I think I... I, I like... The only reason... I would have gotten a pla like a heavy-duty plastic one. The only reason I didn't was... And I was talking to Janie about this. Is because it rains a lot here. And the metal ones have, like, on the bottom... It's all, like, holes. They're, like, great graded you know what I mean the bottom of it so no water can sit in it and I didn't have to want to have to worry about every time I went out to use it it'd be filled with water and I have to dump it over and try to get the water out so that's why I like wanted one that was metal mesh kind of bottom like you know that you know what I mean it has holes in the bottom then nothing can get stuck in it in any way because it's already rained once and nothing got in it it was fine And they're not that expensive. You can get them anywhere from, if you don't, you know, like I got a, a fairly heavy duty one just because of all the stuff I get from the creative reuse. I wanted to make sure it was going to be able to hold it and I was going to be able to pull it with ease. You know what I mean? I didn't want like one that, you know, you can get one that you won't, you know, holds 200 pounds and then that's fine if you have groceries and stuff like that or whatever, a smaller one or whatever, if you're just doing groceries or garden stuff. But for me, I needed something to make sure that it was going to be able to hold enough, even though the stuff I get from the creative use is not 800 pounds, but I thought 
if I over, if I got one for 200 pounds or even 400 pounds, and if I overloaded it and made it like, oh, I put 300 pounds of stuff in it, would it pull as easily? You know what I mean? Would the tires be as big? Was it, would it pull as easily as, um, as the one that, um, that I had gotten? And that's what I was concerned with. I wanted to make sure it wasn't going to hurt my arthritis to pull it. Um, and it doesn't, it works great. And Chris put, I'm talking, he loaded that thing. He's like, I tried to abuse it because I wanted to see if it would really hold a lot of stuff. He's like, I'm shocked it held a lot of stuff because I had like books and things and he had it piled up and he's like, it was, it was great. He says, I didn't have to go back and forth and I was able to just do two cartloads and I was done. He had to then take it all out of the cart and put it up on the deck and into the house, of course, but. I think he gave himself an extra step stupidly because he did, he shouldn't have done that. He wouldn't have had to have done that if he would have just taken it from the cart directly into the house instead of putting it from the cart onto the deck, then from the deck into the house, which made no sense. But Chris doesn't usually do things that make a lot of sense anyway. So <laughs> there's not a whole lot of sense going on in his head. All right, so I'm just going to glue this on, I guess, or tape it maybe. So let's tape it. You have a Chris there that holds your stuff in? Well, that's good. Yeah, the Chris I have, well, he's not here. And to get him here to haul stuff is a pain in the ass. So, like, especially with groceries, if I don't have to worry about it with groceries, that would be great. Because just going back and forth with the groceries, by the time I get out of the grocery store, my back is killing me. Just from walking on flat ground, my back will start to hurt. And it just is killing me. And then I get home and I'm like, oh God, I got to bring the groceries in. I go back and forth. And then by then I'm like hurting so bad. So the cart, all I have to do is one trip. One trip. Load the cart, pull it to the house, and then just bring it in. It was so easy today. I was like, oh my goodness. I was like, that was awesome. That made such a difference. I got the stuff inside quickly. I didn't have to, you know, keep worrying about the dogs who are a pain in the ass when I bring groceries in because they want to just, like, I have to block them away from the door because they just want to hop on the door. And so they weren't as much of a pain in the ass because I didn't have to keep leaving for like a few minutes to go get the next stuff and bring them back, you know, or whatever. I was able to just leave the door kind of open with the screen open and they weren't like barking and carrying on as much because they could see me kind of through the door whereas normally I would have it shut because I was going to be walking back and forth far and I didn't want to have it open where I can't see them and I wasn't going to be close enough to be able to keep an eye on them but even though it's a screen door I still don't like to leave it open and have them just willy-nilly be standing there because one of them will end up ripping a hole in the damn screen or something and I'll end up having them loose because Winnie likes to jump and jump and jump and jump. I thought there was something with something sewing related in one of these. I don't remember now. I'll put that one down. Oh, he, your Chris has has issues too. All Chris's have issues. I've just come to that determination. And Chris, and to, or I mean, somebody is trying to get my attention right now. books out. Can I help you? What do you need, buddy? What? Mm. Let me go let him O-U-T. I'll be right back.
All right, I got a muffin and I put my sweater back on because my arms are cold, but this sweater's huge, huge. I didn't realize it was that big, but it's comfy and it's soft. I need paper. Um, let's use one of these. Yeah, let's use this one. I think that's a good idea. Did I already have one of these papers out though? Okay. Well, let me show you. You found two Adirondack chairs with stools on side of road in our neighborhood for free. Just need painting. Oh, that's a good deal. And two months to sand and paint them. <laughs> good Lord. Oh, are you? My Chris is, when we were together, he would never do anything like that. He didn't do anything. The only thing Chris ever did was, you know, if I gave him something to do in the house, he might do it. He wouldn't do, like, he doesn't paint things. He doesn't do anything. He's not handy at all. There's nothing handy about him whatsoever. Which, you know, I had come to terms with a long time ago. So it was, like, you know, fine. But it was annoying. <laughs> you know, but I had to do all that. So I did all the stuff that typically, you know, a husband or something would have done. Or should have done, really. Um, yeah, that was my job. And, you know, I didn't mind it for the most part, but as I got older, it kind of sucked. And as I had arthritis and there was nothing wrong with him, you know what I mean? I, I was suffering with arthritis. He's walking around with not a single care in the world because he ain't got nothing wrong with him. And I was like, ugh, you know, because I had to do it all. And I wasn't thrilled about it. So, you know, that was an issue. Because I thought to myself, this really sucks. You know, I, I have to still do everything as if... Right, I better move this out of the way for now. Because this I don't need right now anyway. And I need my Carl. So it was not fun to have to keep doing things even after you know I had arthritis and I had to, I already worked you know doing 
you know, a, a, a pretty labor intensive job every day and I had to come home and anything that needed to be fixed or repaired, I had to do it. It was fine when I didn't have other problems. You know, I was fine with that when I didn't have arthritis and, and other issues. But after a while, it was like it really started to hit, you know, that I was like, crap, this is a lot of work that I have to do. French. Didn't mean to put a hole in there, did I? Hmm, kind of. Not enough to worry about, but I only wanted to go from there. Because he just was not somebody that was going to do very much of anything in our yard or house. or He didn't even know how to swing a hammer. So, good times. <laughs> That stuff was all on my butt to do. Oh, wait a minute. Do I want to put one on the inside cover too? Yeah. No. No, maybe I'll just do the two outside covers instead of the inside covers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I did that side. So maybe I'll just put this one here. I just want to, really, I'm putting this there just to stiffen this up because it is, it's a coffee dyed piece of stationary paper because it has like, you can see it has the American flag on it. And I just wanted it to be a little stiffened up a little, which this one probably needs to be cut a little more. Yeah, don't marry a Chris, that's right. Chris's are useless. Sad, but it's true. No, I know not all Chris's are like that. We're just joking, but yeah. It's a pain in the butt. But, you know, there are there are a few good qualities about him. <laughs> the only reason I keep him around as a friend. bought me socks I bet you they're in his bag I only got the rocket socks the other ones are in his damn bag if I swear to god if he wears the socks I'm gonna kill him because he has stinky feet and I do not have sticky stinky feet I'm gonna tell him to leave them alone not that he would wear them but well he would wear them <laughs> if he was out of clean socks he'd put a pair of mine on and that would aggravate the hell out of me about caulking Hal had done in the kitchen of the I came home and had to rest in peace. What? You decided to sell when you decided to sell your house, you left Florida to get your FILs condo. 
on the market too. I, oh, what's that? And then your realtor called to tell me about caulking Hal had done in the kitchen and bathroom. Was it bad? Oh. Was the caulking done badly? And who's Hal? Oh, rip it all out. I was like, RIP. I'm like, rest in peace. What was she talking about? Rip it all out. Find out he put on with a Q-tip. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've recocked a lot of things in my life, but I've never used a damn Q-tip. You use, you put you squeeze it into the area and use your hate you use your damn finger smooth it out you don't use a Q tip oh my god they even sell a little tool you can use that you go along the edge that doesn't work as well your finger always works better because you can feel better where it's gonna work but oh my god yeah I used to get paid by my clients when I cleaned houses to recalk their tubs and showers when they would get n nasty because like if I went to somebody's house to clean and their shower or their tub was all moldy caulk and it was nasty. That doesn't come out. If it's in your caulking, it's not going to come out. It's just going to, because it's embedded in the caulk. There's nothing like, because I had one lady who said, well, I think it just needs to be bleached and it, it, you know, it should come clean. And I said to her, look, I said, I can clean all the other parts of the shower. I said, but I guarantee you, no matter how much bleach I put on this, it's not going to come out. It's embedded in the caulk. And that's what happens a lot of times with mold. It would literally embed itself. And what it does, it ends up embedding itself in the caulk and eating away at the around the back of it. And that's how the caulk will come loose in places and all that. So I had to explain this to her 100,000 times because she thought, oh, it'll just need to be cleaned. And I told her, I said, if you have expectations that you think I'm going to be able to clean every ounce of this mold out of your caulking, I said, I'm just telling you right now, it's not going to happen. And she was like, oh, should, I'm supposed to have it replaced? I said, yeah. I said, I'll do it for 20 bucks. I mean, it doesn't take long at all. She's like, you know how to do that? I'm like, yeah. I, my father was a plumber. I used to work for him doing that. I was taught how to caulk uh, a tub before I knew how to do anything, really. So whenever I had a client that had a, a nasty caulk, I wouldn't I wouldn't have to clean the tub. I mean, I wouldn't have to clean the caulking and try to scrub it out. I would just say to him, I'll replace it for you. And I'd just replace it. Because ugh, it's too much damn trouble to try to clean it when it's that nasty. And why people let it get that nasty in the first place is beyond me. When it's that, it was just bad. I could see a little bit, but not when it's that bad. I said nasty? Why wouldn't I say nasty? It was nasty. It's nasty. I call Winnie my nasty girl. Everything I said was by who? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Everything that you said was by her. By who? I ain't even gonna said what? I don't know what the hell you're talking about. What are you talking about? Okay. Now we need to find pages for this. And I need some paper from back here. I put 
words in horrible places when talking about talking. Okay, you say so. I don't know. Oh, this is a good size for this. Perfect, almost. Hmm. Good deal. Kennedy's complaining again. Is, it too? is there anything I do right, Kennedy? Anything at all? Oh, I don't want this one. I'm going to pull the flag on it again. Need a different one. I wasn't going to clean her nasty cock. Why would I do that? You can be shook if all you want. Somewhere over here. There we go. I had a piece that I wanted to use, and now I can't find the damn thing. Oh, wait. I can just hear it. Mm -hmm. There it is. Look at this one. I can do this with. That'll be good for that. I'll just have to cut it. Probably. Yeah, I'll have to cut it there. Somewhere. I just want to fit in the thing. You gotta put your cock in the hole. Kennedy, you know, you gotta, you gotta fill your holes with the cock. That's what you do. Oh yeah, that'll fit. Let's see. I don't know if those will fit in there right now, but yeah, it should fit. I don't want it to be too thick. That's another thing, you don't want to have thick cock in the hole. Not too thick. Goodness is grape juice. What? This one I can't have to do that separately. I forgot. Let's do that with that on there. Gotta be done separately. This one doesn't have to be done separately. So that 
it's going to go that way. And then <laughs> there you go make a song and then Kennedy will sing it right Kennedy Kennedy will sing it all day long it'll be our fun little cock song Too much. I tried a little too hard. I need Carl to help me. This was too thick and I tried too hard to get it to work. It was too thick. You can't have thick caulking. You can't have a thick caulk. And then expect everything to work out okay. It just doesn't work that way in life. Oh, someday you'll enjoy, some, you know, doing some cock yourself, Kennedy. Someday. Doing a little cock in the bathroom ain't so bad. Well, I just ripped that, didn't I? Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, sometimes the kitchen counter needs some caulk too. Needs to see the see some caulk action. Especially if it is old and hasn't been tended to in a while. to fix this a little bit and well now I made 
my bone folder would help the situation a little bit. That was stupid. Stupid. Okay, the auction is tomorrow. She's having an auction tomorrow? Oh, I hope. I hope it, is it early? Because I don't, I'm going to be able to make it if I'm, if it's early. Does anybody know what time her auction is? Do you know, Kennedy? So much to do tomorrow it's sickening i shouldn't even be doing this today the only reason i i almost didn't do a live stream the only reason i did a live stream is because i my whole body was hurting after going to creative reuse and then today i had to go grocery shopping which made it worse and i knew that i wasn't going to get as much done as i wanted to today so i was like i'll do a live stream today um and i needed to do the arteza stuff anyway um um and I figured if I can't do one tomorrow night, you know, I'm not going to worry about it because I need to do, I have a lot to do tomorrow. I still got to sort through all that stuff. It's sitting in my living room as usual. Sort through all the uh, giveaway hoo-ha. Giveaway? No. Auction hoo-ha. I need to punch holes. I need to punch a hoe. I know how it is when I'm not, I got to punch a hoe. I don't want to punch a hoe, but, you know, sometimes hoes just need to be punched. Because they just hoes. Bad hoes. I just want you to 
do what you're supposed to do, please. Thank you very much. I'm only doing two holes, one there and one about there. I don't need my big hole punch. I just need the other one. This one here will do just fine. And one like like that, and then I just need some stringies. Um, let's see, a little piece of lace work in there, probably just blue lace. That might be pretty. Let's do a piece of blue. <clears throat> Once the cover has some blue on it, I just need a a thing. Oh. Come on, jackass! I ain't got time for this. All right, just screw you. Let's see if I can get one of the needles myself. We got stuck by the train yesterday. The one that was the same one that goes by my house goes all the way down to Nashville. And that's the same train we got stuck. It got stuck on the tracks. I guess something was going on and it got stuck on the tracks. And it it was <clears throat> it was blocking several intersections. It was insane. So and it was blocking the intersection, like, okay, so it's, it's very bizarre, but the creative reuse is on, a, is on a road that's, like, really weird. So here's, like, the main road, and it's two lanes on either side. Um, so it's, like, like this, and then people go down it like that. So they, these people are going this way, and, I'm, you know, other people are going this way. So, obviously, we know how, to ro how a road works. So the train tracks go like this, and they cut like this and this keeps going all across well there's also a road um right here that goes like oddly how does that go wait do we cut before no we it was after okay so the road goes like this well the creative reuse sits right here so the creative reuse sits here and the only way to go is this way. There is another road here. Okay. And so we're sitting in traffic like 15 minutes. This train is just sitting across the tracks, sitting across the whole road. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? So finally, yeah, it's a Sharpie. So finally I said, screw it. <clears throat> and we made it into the left lane and I turned this way because there was no other way to get around this train. And I had to go all the way and loop all the way in like all these weird streets and everything to find a place where, because the, the train is really long, to find a place where I was in front of the train so I can cross in front of it somewhere and then go around and come this way so that I can go to the creative reuse. I had to come this way and go in. And it took me like almost 20 minutes to do it because I had to go through so many roads and I had my ways open, you know, my uh, navigation thing. And I wasn't following the navigation because obviously the navigation didn't know the train stalled. So it was trying to keep taking me and taking me and taking me on this road where it kept trying to take me back to here. So I just ignored it and I had it on and I was looking like moving the map, trying to see the roads that would kind of go around where, because it had the train tracks were on the map. So I thought the first time I cut over, I thought I would, be okay but I cut over and the train was still stuck across there I hadn't gone quite far enough so then I had to go back and I had to go back out and I had to keep going and it took me a little while but finally I did and I got around it and I got to the creative reuse Chris is like bitching well by the time you get over there the train's gonna move the train will be moved by the time you get over there it was not by the time I got over there 20 minutes later the train was still sitting there I went in the creative reuse and for an hour and a half that train still was there that train was there from two o'clock to about almost five o'clock. It was stuck there in total because they told us in the creative reuse, the lady said, um, yeah, 
Sharpie comes off with alcohol. You can use just take alcohol and put it on a rag or anything. It's like alcohol ink. It's like alcohol marker. See? If I, if I could spray it, it would be better, but I don't want to get it on my paper. Yeah, alcohol just becomes a dry erase marker when you put alcohol on it. I mean, Sharpie becomes a dry erase marker because that's what the ink is made with. It's made with alcohol. So you can use alcohol to remove it from anything, pretty much. So yeah, so I got around the train, but what was nice about it in a way was there was people that couldn't get to the creative reuse because of the train, because that was pretty much like anybody that's coming pretty much from anywhere, they have to go on that same road to get to the creative reuse. Not a lot of people would have thought to do what I did and not a lot of people did because the whole time I was in there, it was like quiet. And when the train finally moved, all of a sudden more people came into the creative reuse and I was almost already done. I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad that we had, didn't have to deal with these people in here and that I was able to get what I needed to do done because, uh, yeah, I don't like people. They annoy me, especially in the creative reuse because they're so like, they, they're just so slow in there sometimes and it's kind of annoying. <clears throat> yes, alcohol works good to get any kind of other alcohol ink off of anything, obviously, because it's alcohol. Alcohol. I hope this fits in the thing. Because if it does, did I put it on upside down? Please tell me I didn't. Oh, thank goodness. I was like going to freak out if this page ended up being upside down. I was going to be like, dang it. I do it every time I don't look. So this book is going to go into the first page along with this little thingy, which this actually could go in one of these pockets that I made in here now. That would make sense because I have a pocket which is going to go here. I've just got to glue it. So maybe that's a good idea. There we go. The only problem with this is I may have to stick that down. Because it's gonna, I knew that was going to happen too. As I was doing it, I'm like, hmm, that's probably too loose. And if I don't stick it down some, it's going to keep coming up. Too loosey-goosey. It needs to be permanently affixed. Ow, I keep hurting myself on these scissors. People, I, I, I don't like, um, I don't like being around a lot of people when I go shopping and stuff. It's very annoying, like very annoying. All right, so that'll go in here, hopefully. Yeah, that should be fine now. And if the bow comes out, it's tied in a knot, so it's not going to hurt it. Yay, we got a page done. And I'd like to put like a thing up here, like something sewing related sentiment of some sort, but I don't think I have anything sewing related as far as sentiments go, exactly. Um, I'm pretty sure I don't. I have to make something and then print it and I don't feel like it. I don't feel like it. Let's see. See, and these are too small. Anyway, I wanted something bigger. Oh, wait a minute. What about those things? I have those vellum things. Where are they at? Maybe. Vellum quotes. 
I doubt it, but... I don't either. Tammy, I don't like being bumped into. I don't like people that hover. There's and every time it seems like every time I go to the creative reuse, there's always somebody that like gets all up in my space. And I nothing will drive me nuts. If I go down an aisle and I see that there is somebody there and they're looking through stuff, I don't go anywhere near them because I figure, okay, I'm not going to go down there right now. I will go down there in a little bit. But it never fails. I'll be at the creative reuse and somebody I'll be digging through stuff. And, you know, I have my I have a basket on the floor or whatever, a bag. And and they'll just like get right in my space. And I'm like, what in the hell is wrong with you? Get away. I don't say that, but I'm like wanting to. Hi, Barbara. Um... When are you, did you leave already? It's Friday, right? Did you were, you were leaving Friday, right? That's why you're up this early, I'm assuming? This is all about love. I don't think I need this. I want to see if there's any reference to anything sewing. Hi, Marion. Clearly not. Okay. I thought I'd look. I think I have more. Of, I know I have more of those little books. And they have different themes or something. I don't know. I haven't looked at them in forever. I hope they were in here. No? Hmm. Where the hell are they? Wait a minute. How are you doing, Miss Marion? See now, when I do the travel page, this one will be good. We travel the world out. We travel the world over to find the beauty. See, that'll be a good one. See if I could find something that says something like the fabric of our lives, that would be perfect. Something of that. I doubt it, but I just have to try. Why's that one upside down? Feeling is not going to be one. Oh, you're on vacation? Oh, wow. You had four weeks and you have two to go? Good for you. 
What have you been doing? Relaxing? The only other ones I have is this little thing here. I got this from the Creative Breeze too, a while back. I thought your fat wiener did come with you. Mark? <laughs> he might not be, well, he might not be fat, but his fat wiener came with you. It's your anniversary. His fat wiener should be with you. These are not going to be anything to do with fabric, I have a feeling. Um, yeah, no. These are all like... to that page then because I don't see anything that will work for that these hmm this one says be a designer of your own dream of your dreams designer sewing seamstress designing clothes maybe that's that's the closest one I found It's a stretch, but I think it'll work. Yeah, I don't think any of my normal ones have anything. I forgot about these. These might have something. No, 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 no. Okay, I'll use this one. What I'm thinking is, will it fit on that thing? I have a feeling it will not. I mean, the sticker, it, the, the strip is that big, right? But the sticker itself is only this big. So it like, how come not all that is used, please? Because then I could have centered it in that and it would have looked nice on that page. But no, that's not how it works. The paper with the hand and the pen. Oh, I don't know. This is a scrap that I had gotten from somebody. Or I had, well, it was a whole page, but I think it's graphic 45. Oh, wait. Yeah, it is. I bet it's graphic 45, I think. It's graphic 45, whatever it is. It's got to be. As I seem to remember this in something, but I only had like a piece or two of this. I didn't have the whole book. 
but I think it's graphic 45. Pretty sure. All right, let's get a little piece of paper and stick it up here. Here, let's do it on this blue. That would look good up there. Not that big, but. Well, I could actually. Where's those little. I could make a little banner. That would be cute because it's a long way from there to there. do pink and blue together but not necessarily this blue I want to do maybe this blue and then a pink like this hold up here I think would look nice like this or whatever that striped one is where the hell is that at did I use it all do I have the stripes? Stripey stripies. Where are the stripies? <clears throat> it's cool and your style. If I have another piece of it, I'll save it for you. I'm not sure I do. Oh, that. Oh. Now, let's see. Where was that piece of paper at? I know for a fact that I had that whole piece, so it's got to be here somewhere. I can only use a piece of it. But I know I had more of that paper. I think I got it out of that book that I was just looking at, and I, didn't, I haven't used it for anything else. Where are you? Where did you go? Where did I put it? That's weird. So I know I only used that little piece. That's annoying. <clears throat> Cause isn't it in here? That's it right there. Did I leave it? Maybe I left it in here. If I was smart, I did, but I probably didn't. I probably wasn't that smart. Cause isn't that? Oh no, it's different. That's a different striped. Well, oh, dang it. What striped piece is that? Hmm. Okay, maybe I don't have another piece. I give up. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Hi, Linda.
Let me run to the potty real quick. I got to pee. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. I found some paper as I was walking out of the bathroom. Oh, crap. Linda. Marion, don't talk about me. Don't talk about me in your, in your language. Don't you talk about me in your language. If you have something to share, you share it with the class. <laughs> mm. That'll work. Maybe. I do not have a stripey one. stripey one. Is it in here at all? I don't think so. I think that was a rogue piece of, piece of paper. Apparently. Apparently it was. Hmm. That means I need a different piece of paper of some sort. I don't know what. I don't know what. You like me a lot? Oh, that's good. 
I'm glad that you like me a lot. Glad somebody likes me. I need to suck it up and just cut a new piece of paper. I was trying not to have to waste my paper, but you know, whatever. I just need to find something or other. Oh, what's this? I swear, if I find that dress form, I'm gonna scream. <gasps> uh! I've been looking for this. I was looking for this and looking for this, and then I find it in another drawer, and I'm, <laughs> I was looking for that to put on the cover. I would have put that on the cover. It would have looked really cute, because I would have backed it with something, and then I would have colored this, and, oh, I could put it inside. Never mind. I'm not upset anymore. I'll put it inside, because it is a sewing book. Not in the back. But I'm going to have to color it, though, because it's not the color of not what I want. I, I can't believe those were in that drawer. I don't know how I threw them in there, but I did. Oh, well. Oh, well. What's it going to be? Oh. What if I made a banner with this? I have too many crap. I don't have too many crap. I just have a lot of unorganized crap. Don't act like you ain't got too many craps either. You got lots of craps. We all have lots of craps. That's what we do. As a crafter, we collect crap. We are crap collectors. Okay. All right, well, that's gonna have to be behind something because, and it's not, that piece must not have been even when I cut it. That's great. Piece looks even. Let's see. I don't know if I can get this. I'm gonna take this out again. Go this part because I gotta get it in such a way. This way, dum dum. <laughs> Kids call it the crap store. Behind it though. That's what I want to bring out is the pink. Mm. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot about this pad sitting here. Let's see if there's something in here that is a good. Not this one, it's too bright. One's kind of, mm, maybe. No. Hmm, this one will work. This one works well because it's got the blue too. I don't mind having the blue. I just want to make sure I have. See, up here it'll go nice. Is that the 
that's where it's going to be. Up and up and up and away. It's going to be like a little banner thing somewhere. It's going to be a thing. And we have to color that. And now I need to move this out of the way again. Because I need Carl help. I need Carl's help. Call 1-800-I-NEED-CARL. And he just appears. Myself a little banner that sits up there. Um, I need my other cutter now. What is that at? This one. I need to cut off some of that blue. That's just too much. Because this is going to sit on here. And is that going to be too big? Let's see. No, that's actually going to be perfect. Perfect. Excuse you, but get your arms up. I almost cut my fingers off. There we go. That's a good look there. Very nice. Nicey, nicey. Nice and nice. You're leaving. Oh, have fun. I'm very jealous. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Have a good time. Go play with Mark and his wiener dog. Have a good anniversary cruise. Get drunk for me. <laughs> I wonder if I could put two. Um, what? Because I'm going to do that. I was wrapped in saran. What? I know I wasn't reading the chat. Sorry. Um. <coughs> Where do you buy your craft supplies, Linda? Oh. You weren't talking to me. Came through security with a tray of cupcakes. You better knock her down and get a cupcake. And thank you, Linda. 
for saying I do great art. I appreciate it. I'm going to put um, two because they're small and this is big. Well, it's not big, but it's whatever it is, it is. Uh, excuse you, I did not say that you could come. You are not invited, sticker. Now you're just going to be a jackass because you're going to just continually try to ruin everything. It won't stay back down. Okay, so instead of that, I'm going to cut it. I did translate it with my super magic powers in my brain and Google Translate. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do? Ignore it? I saw my name. I had to find out what was being said. Okay. Chop this up. Okay, so I'm gonna obviously it's not really gonna stick down until I glue it, so it's just gonna stick in place, but it's not very sticky on the back, so You could say something bad, but I could use Google Translate and they'll tell me what you said. I don't care if you say something bad. I don't think anybody's going to know what you're saying. Yeah, see, now I'm going to have to move these a little bit and make them... a little more... No, I have enough. One out of the way. Mm. So I'm not putting as many spaces between them as I was before. I'm trying to fit them, everything plus the other word there I want to use. Yeah, I should be able to do it now. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, let's try it. Dutch has many English words. Oh no, not not any of those words that I had translated look like besides my name <laughs> looked English to me. I might have to move it over just a tad, but I think it'll work out just fine. Yeah. Could do it in like a thing like that. Maybe. Maybe.
be a designer of your dreams and I'm going to add a little comma and then put cherish every day this way it's long enough so that looks better excuse you get back here Good night, Tammy. Okay, get back here. Oh, I forgot all about that stupid yard sale. I wanted, well, I was too exhausted today. It wasn't going to happen. I wanted to go to that lady's yard sale that had the crafts, but honestly, when I looked at her pictures, it didn't look like she had all that much. Besides some paint and Mod Podge. And believe me, I, I don't really need paint and Mod Podge. I was just going to see if she had anything else besides what was in the picture. But I don't really need anything else necessarily. I get enough crap from the creative reuse. I'm good. What was I doing? What was I going to use? Up oh, there it is. I was going to say, where'd that paper go? <laughs> Doy. stupid now I don't know it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it'll be fine I'm not gonna notice it where'd the ink, inky 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 go I just had it there it is I found it I found it oh I wish you would have told me Tammy because I have boxes and boxes of file folders if you ever need anything like that please ask me first before you buy it several different sizes and kinds and that's so much stuff paper that ain't gonna work now poop oh. and then I'm, just gonna, I'm getting annoyed with this already I have regular and legal if you still need more let me know I can send you some. Um, hmm. Where'd that paper go? There it is. I'm like, where'd that paper go? I need to do that again because I cut that. I should have just rounded the edges and not tried to be fancy. I tried to be fancy. And 
fanciness was not having it today. I'm going to cut this odd here. I'm going to cut it up on an angle. It worked the last time I did it. Uh, I need to cut it this way, don't I? Yeah, I need to cut it this way. All right, show's over. Carl can get put away now. He doesn't want, doesn't want all the attention. He's embarrassed. Ooh, I can make it really cool if I did a little thing at either end. Oh, that could be nice. Let's see how long can I get away with. Let's see there. I'll probably have it to there. Because then I can put it there. And I can make little ends on it. little ends. I'm actually going to have to put a little crease so I know where to cut on the ends. So I can make a little flag banner scroll tag thing. And then all of the above. Where's that thing going to go? It'll go here. And I'll cut it to the point where it's going to affect it. So you want to make sure it's in the middle. There it goes. About three quarters of an inch. Okay. Okay, I want to make it even. It's going to be hard to cut. Well, it's still not even. Look at that man, look at that. That's okay. I did the best that I could. Corner, top corner.
it nice and even. Just having a hell of a time to do it, that's all. Stop moving. Stop moving. You have no rights to be moving. There. Well, it kind of. There. Okay. All better. All better. Bye, Linda. going to put some little dot things underneath of this. Excuse me, what was that? It fell on the floor. Oh, that fell on the floor. Oh, Janie, I, I want, I have something I want you to read. I'm going to send it to you in a minute. Let me just get this stuck down where it belongs. You know what? I probably should use the bigger ones. They would probably fit completely on here, wouldn't they? Yep. Does that come off? Um, yeah, it comes off good enough. I can just glue it back on if I need it. Don't worry about it. I'd rather use the bigger ones than have to fight with the smaller ones. This paper is not very, it's very flimsy, so I'm going to have to put one every step of the way here otherwise it will be flimsy flimsy you can read I didn't know that Janie she <laughs> said I can read Red dots, get off of me, red dots. Mm. 
Okay. Figure this out. There we go. There we go. You did a twenty four hour class online? What? For what? Wow, what happened? What in the hell? I could never do that. Alright, so we're gonna arrange these first and then I'll glue them. I know. Okay. I need an and. Is an and in here somewhere? Not likely, but. And. No ands. Oh, crap. I can perform marriage ceremonies. Visiting Master Stacy. What? 
How do you get your doctorate and can perform brain surgery? <laughs> Jenny can perform brain surgeries. She already can do that. Reading Master Stacy, what is that? It's so, what, what? Is that the class? It's called Reading Master? Oh no, don't, don't you dare operate on my fingers. You can come be in a craft room, come on, come visit. Where the hell did these come from? I don't even remember these. These couple of sheets here, I don't even remember having. They were underneath all those sentiments I had piled up in there on different papers. None of them have an and on it, so... They suck. Whatever. I can find an and in here, I bet you. Nope. <laughs> no, I'm not going to worry about it. It's not worth it to worry about. I'll just do this. I don't know why I fussed with it so much, it doesn't make any sense. That's fine, and I'm going to put a little psh, 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 right there. That's what it's called, a psh, psh, psh. Do you have a psh, psh, psh? I don't think so. I don't think you do. Oh, yeah, I had these little rhinestones that looked very vintage -y that I got at the CR. That's all I'm going to say from now on. Too big. And they look very like, they're like, they're not clear. They're like champagne colored, like vintagey looking. Ooh, those are pretty. Those are pretty. I want to grab the same one. I wanted the other sheet. Keep grabbing the same one. We're going to put that one has adhesive on it already, but we're going to stick it anyway. Actually, I want to take this little thing off of here. I don't want it to be popped up at all. No popping! I thought you were going to bed. Tammy, did you get a second wind? The worst thing is when I go to the creative reuse is the people that bring their kids Especially kids that are like, you know, four, five, six years old. They are way too young to be in that store. There are some dangerous things in that damn store. There ain't no way that a child that young should be in that store. Especially when the mother's not paying any attention to what the hell they're doing. not the place for little kids I've seen so many little kids that the mother's looking around at stuff and the kid goes over and just grabs something and it's like a sharp piece of glass because they have like you know um uh like 
broken glass for mosaic do you know for doing mosaics well they have that there and it's like you know they should have i mean they have a policy that you know kids aren't allowed unless they're accompanied by a parent but it really should be that they they have to be like 10 or older you know what i mean not such a young kid that you know because these parents don't watch their damn kids they just i had to tell the, the little girl to not to touch that the glass because she was reaching up to grab it because she saw something shiny and i was like don't touch that and then i was like hoping the mother heard me and she didn't the first time so i said you don't want to touch that sharp and then she finally heard me i'm like good lord dumbass Real smooth. Let your four year old or five year old or six year old, whatever the hell it was, over here touching everything. Some people are just dumb. Yep. Yeah, all the Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Took off running. Well, yeah, definitely, because if somebody gets hurt, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, because it's, you know, because it's it's a non-profit, so they don't follow the same, you know, like when you're in a store, there's certain policies that have to be followed that the stores have to have, you know, to keep pe people from getting hurt. And I dropped that on the floor, and it's so tiny, I'm never going to find it. Oh, dang it. Where did it go? Hmm. Oh well, it'll get vacuumed up tomorrow because I ain't gonna try to search for it on the damn floor. I'm not even gonna bother trying to uh, take the things off of the back of the small ones because it's too small. But anyway, my point is I don't think they have any kind of proper policy in place that they should. Because, you know, they should make, like, people with kids sign a waiver. Make the parents, you know, sign a waiver in case your kid gets hurt. You know, it's not on, it's not on us. Because all, all it needs to happen is... A kid needs to grab a piece of glass, cut her hand all up, and then, oh, I'm going to sue you for having that glass out there, you know, and it's probably a good idea if they, if they see somebody come in with a, with somebody under like the age of 10 or 12, or any kid really, just have them, you know, sign a waiver because, I mean, it's just, it really isn't the place for kids. There's so much, there's things, literally there's toys because they have things like kids' toys, because people use them in crafting, and then there's kids' crafts and stuff. But they have that sitting right next to, like, the mosaic glass. You know, and that's the thing. Like, things are all over the place. It's a creative reuse. They can't, like, block off, you know, it, they have to do what they can with the space. You know, and I think that it's just an accident waiting to happen. And it's going to be really bad when it does. Because parents are dumb. Plain and simple. They think, oh, it's not going to be my kid that's going to get hurt. I probably should have put the tape on the back before I did that. Because now it's going to be harder to get it on there. We were at a hockey game. The kid behind Mom kept kicking the seat. Mom asked him to stop. She asked him a second time. Third time she turned around and observantly said, I told you. Stop. The parents got... Oh my god. No, see, in that case... See, I, I, I would have just told the parents in the first place, can you tell your kid stop kicking the seat, please? 
Not the police because you... That's the problem, though. If somebody's not going to parent their child, they can't be pissed off when somebody else does it. You know what I mean? Like, if you're not going to teach your children when they go out in public to act properly and, you know, know right from wrong and behave, then they cannot be upset when somebody decides to do it for them because, you know... Because just because they're not paying attention to what their kid is doing and they don't care because, you know, they want to have fun so they don't give a crap what their kid is doing. And that's the problem. That happens so much. These kids are like running willy-nilly on over around the stores. I yell at them all the time when they're running around the stores. If I'm in a grocery store and there's kids running around, I usually tell them, go back to your parents and don't move. Stop running around. <laughs> I've taken kids by the hand and brought them to their parents. And said, control your child. Because it just drives me nuts. That's why I don't like leaving the house. Other people's children piss me off. Oh, really? Well, yeah, 10-year-old. Yeah, 10-year-old should have been able to understand what that meant but at the same time it wasn't you know it shouldn't have been up to your mom to have to keep saying something to him there the, did the parents hear her say it in the first you know hear her say it the first time to the to the kid because at that point if, if somebody turned around and asked my kid not to kick my chair i'd be diligently on that kid or i'd switch seats with him and be like, stop kicking the chair every time I saw him even attempting to. You know what I mean? But clearly it sounds like they just didn't care and they were more concerned about whatever they wanted to do. And they probably weren't paying attention. As a lot of parents don't pay attention. All right. So that page is done. The thing is done. Oh wait, except for the, I gotta glue the little pockets before I call it completely done. And I'll probably put something in the pockets. I'm just not gonna do it right now. And that's gonna have a problem sticking, I think, because there's like shiny stuff. Hmm. Are you gonna have to be a problem? Oh wait, I have to put that dress form in there. Forgot. Or I could put it on the other side. Yeah, maybe I could put it on the other side as a little die cut. Or like, like right in here or something. Maybe I'll do that. Okay, now it's stuck. Took a little holding it down to get it to stick. Your reading skills are growing thin. Wait. I missed what was going on. There's not even that many people talking in the chat. And my dumbass still don't know what's going on. Oh, so that's the class you're taking. It is a reading class. It is. It's like a reading class. I keep forgetting to go back to that. ADD. I get sidetracked from everything. So you're taking like a, a, a like a, a reading class? I need one of those. Oh man, I should have inked around the edge of this one. I could do it later. All right, so that goes in there. So this is like the sewing page, and then like here, like this page. I don't like is kind of like an extension of it. So I'm gonna put this right here. But I'm gonna ink it up first. I don't want it to look the way it does. I might actually spray it with my coffee spray. You wanted to, you wanted me to read something. So I took a class for that 24 hour class. What? I know I wanted you to read something, but how could you have taken a 24 hour class for that? When I haven't even, it hasn't even been a half hour since I told you that I wanted you to read it. Gonna 
do any good. It's not very dark, so probably not. I'm probably better off just using ink and not trying to use that. Oh, I got it. You were joking. Sorry, I missed part of the <laughs> I missed part of what you were saying. Is that is my heat gun loud when I use it? Cuz I want to try adjusting the thing on my microphone to see if I can get it to cut out the this a little bit. I have a knob on my microphone that I can turn and uh, a bit. All right, let me try. Which one is the gain? Let me see. Let me see really quick. Okay, it's this one. Let's try this. Now, it might actually, let me see something. Is it louder when I talk, when I have it up? Yeah, it seems like it. And then when I talk here, it's, is it still loud? Well, I'm right next to the mic, so that's not helping. Is, do I still sound okay? Do I sound lower? Do I sound loud? Do I sound softer? You might have to turn up the volume a little bit. Um, you might have to turn up the volume a little bit if I'm end up like sometimes when I'm talking I'm trying to talk low to see if it I'm, I'm gonna sound lower because I turned off the background noise but now tell me because you could turn your volume up a little bit if you need to but tell me if this is still loud oh well, let's see if I talk over it if you can hear me can you hear me if I talk over it does it does it kind of mute the dryer at all oh yours is up all the way already what do you want a laptop if you're on a laptop or a phone you need to get a speaker those speakers suck on phones and laptops let's see I could turn it up a little bit yeah, I don't, I, I, the phone that I have luckily um, has a decent, uh, it has a decent speaker on it, but the phone I had before, my, um, it, it, the speaker wasn't very loud, but the speaker I have on the newer phone, that one's pretty badass. It works good. They make little speakers you can get that are like Bluetooth and they're not very big and you can just sit them, you know, on the table if you're watching something. Yeah, I don't know why because the I don't know if that's a YouTube thing or not because I haven't touched anything prior to just now so I don't know I don't know maybe YouTube was being weird or maybe it was that was probably the night that was the night that I was having issues wasn't it issues with my live stream and issues getting I just was having issues so maybe that had something to do with it I don't know Don't know. Hi, Karen, by the way. Well, I also have a, a an, another knob that turns, um, it gives it different, 
has different um, settings. Bio, bio, um, it has like omnidirectional and then it has just, it has different settings and I'm sure there's one on there that would work better, but I don't want to fuss with it right now. Because the gain, when you turn that up and down, which is what I was just doing a minute ago, that makes the, um, if I turned it all the way down, I would be lower in volume, but any background noise would be much quieter. Um, if I turn the gain up, you hear a lot more background noise. Like you, if, if I turn it down and I walked across the room, you wouldn't be able to hear what I'd say, but with it up, if I walk across the room, you can hear me, which is one of the reasons I turned it up was in case I say, oh, just let me just grab this paper and I keep talking for whatever reason because I have a tendency to do that and I don't realize that I'm not talking to myself. <laughs> um, you'll still be able to hear what I say. No, I understand that you have to work. I just forget whether you said you were here and working or not before because I wasn't paying attention. If I'm looking down a lot of times, I don't see what's going on. All right, yeah, I like that. That's a good way to do that. I don't know what I'm doing here yet. I was going to put like a pocket type of thing. I may still do that, but I'm not sure yet. All right, so that's a page. Um, this pocket. Hmm. I have to fix this because there is like some white left over on here. I think it needs to be trimmed. From the label on the stupid top of the paper or whatever that is that top part of the scrapbook paper I hate when they do that I understand why they do that but I still don't like it all right so this one just needs some glue Gooey wee gooey wee gooey wee. All right, which one should I do next? Um, maybe if I find a 
good page. We could do like a steampunk theme one. This would be a good page, maybe. Like the planes, maybe. That could be the bingo page. Let me look and see if there's something else that would be a good page for steampunk one. I can add a page in and make it a nicer kind of page for a steampunk section. Let's see. Where do I want to put that? Hmm. good no maybe not this one Hold on, let me see. I think I put it over here by my closet. Do I need to get it? No. Thank you. 
find what I was looking for, but I found it. I found some pages. That's for something else. Um, so we're going to do a steampunk section. Ooh, and this will be perfect for the steampunk section. Because this can be the little book or thing that I use on the inside because that would be cute. Okay. There's that. Now, I've got pages. I don't want to use that one, but I'm thinking maybe use this page and this this is too thin and so if I glue it down that would work I can glue it to this one it's already in here I don't have to go through the trouble <laughs> there we, go. we don't need you anymore you're dismissed so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one out do that do that. Do that. Now move this out the way. And I'm going to take this and glue it to here. Just tape whatever I gotta do. What happened? Somebody was just putting a period in, bubble tea animation. Oh, okay. Well, that's effective. <laughs> Why do people do stupid stuff? You fell asleep, Carla? How dare you? Huh. Well, you got it, Jamie. You came to the rescue. You kicked its butt. You're the fastest mouse in the West. <laughs> fastest click in the West. East. West all of the land.
exactly what I was expecting. No, that's the right side because that's what I wanted. Never mind. Forget that I'm so stupid. Stupid, stupid, stupid. Alright, this ought to be interesting. We'll deal with this when I get this situated first because what I'm going to do is put tape on here. If you're falling asleep, Miss Carla, why don't you go to sleep? No sleep. Maybe that's a cue that you're tired. I don't know. I know that sounds strange. It could just be true. Okay, so I've got it around the, all the edges. Oh, and I want to put some in the middle, but I'm going to use hot, hot glue? No. I'm going to use a glue stick to like fill in some of the area as well. Because I just want to. You can't tell me what to do. Alright, this is... Okay, that's the right way. Start with the edge here. And we're just gonna put that down. So now it's like that. You got a power. You got yourself a power nap. up some more of these extreme sticks. I looked for them. I couldn't find them at damn Walmart. That's where I usually get them too. I just couldn't find any dumbass things. there but at least it's on there good nothing can be perfect but we sure do try don't we good night Marion have a good night it 
was nice having you here. Okay, I can cut this with scissors because I can just follow the paper that needs to be cut and it should be fine. Easier than getting poor Carl back out again. I don't think I have anything handmade for my um, for my auction for this week. Nothing. I, mean, I didn't get anything done because I was working on this journal, and this is far from being done. It ain't gonna be done for a while, and I don't even know if I want to sell it yet. So I'm not sure about that. If I did, I probably wouldn't put it in the auction. Sticky on this side. Oh, I got sticky on my scissors too. sucky part about the little serrated edge on the scissors is they get dirty and it's like impossible to clean. But this side you can like actually scrape it off. But the other side you can't. Or at least I can't. the thing. Okay. All right. So we got one page. We just need to do the holes. The holes. Hi, Tony. You mean auction this I'm not gonna auction it I, this this I would put in the in, in I don't know I don't know what I do with it but I'm not I'm not gonna auction it I think I'm just gonna set a price on it when I'm done with it it's gonna be a while before I'm done with this thing months probably because I have plans for it so and I don't want to feel pressured so I'm not gonna sell it before I finish it because I don't want to feel like I have to get it out I have to get it out and I don't even know if I'm gonna sell it I may not because Depends on how much work I put into it and whether I, you know, really don't want to give it up because I love the cover of this journal so much and I don't, although I have like other scrapbooks that I don't have any other, that was the cut. this is the cover, or I gotta get it to show it because this is a, um, this cover is a vintage, a very old ledger book. That's why it says journal, you know, not that. And it has like, it even has somebody did like math way back in the day on it in pencil and it won't come off. But you know, at first I was like, I tried to erase it thinking I should get it off, but now I kind of like it and I don't want it to come off. I just have to do something about the fact that my things keep getting stuck in the holes. My little things, I'm gonna do something to fix that. But for now, I'm not worried about it. But, um, and it has like some, you know, it's distressed basically. I like how it's worn on the edges of the thing here. I don't know. I just really like this journal cover. 
and it had something on it that somebody stuck on it but i'm like i wanted it to just be left alone because i thought this was just cool on its own it didn't need nothing on the outside of it i didn't think you know so all right so we're gonna do oh i need the duh what am i doing i don't need this yet i was just showing you i don't need it this i need to cut this first Cut this so that it's right side up. Half of it's going to be gone. So we might do it this way so the numbers are going up. Because otherwise, we ain't going to have it big enough. Yeah, it sounds good to me. We do need Carl for this, though. Excuse me, Carl. Gotta wake you up, dude. You gotta come out. Need your assistance, Mr. Carl. Oh, first I gotta cut this thing off because otherwise it won't fit in the damn thing. Yeah, I, I yeah I don't know if I can let it go myself. It depends. I'll have to s sit on that thought. Because I don't really keep anything I, I'd make. That's the problem. I never, hardly ever keep anything. I used to just give everything away. Um. So I've never kept one of, I, I've ne I don't think I've ever kept one of my own journals that I've made. I want to cut this a sliver off of this so it's more. Because I don't, I don't know what I do with it. That's the problem. It's like, okay, I have it. So now what? <laughs> it's like, what do I do with it? Kind of thing. Okay. So this is going to be that page. So actually I either need to do it like this. Yeah, that's fine. So I need to do it this way. I almost did it backwards. I just don't, I don't keep it because I don't, I don't, you know, I'd rather see somebody else get use out of it. You know, especially back when I would like make something, give it away and make something else, give it away. I just was like, you know, and now, I mean, I keep thinking, do I want to keep something? I don't know. But then I'm like, well, what am I going to do with it? You know, somebody else would probably find more use out of it. Because it's not like I'm, I'm going to really do anything with it. So, I don't know. That doesn't have to be perfect. Maybe. Yeah, okay. okay, so this page will go. Oh, sorry. This page will go on this side. So that's the page that needs the the holes punched. Where's my hole punch? There it is. I found it. I'm not talking myself into selling anything. I'm just 
speaking the truth, that's all. I'll probably work on it for a while. Put it aside for months and then go back to it and work on it for a while. So that's why I mean like it's probably going to be a while before it's ever done. Because I don't like to work on things. Um, the way I have sometimes where it's like. Where I like rush to get it done or whatever. I'm not really rushing. But <laughs> Because everything always takes me forever to do, but I just don't want to feel like I have to do it for somebody, you know, specifically. Okay, let's go back to page. Oh yeah, I gotta put some of those things on it. I still have any of the colored ones in here? Or did I use them all up? I didn't use them all up. Eh, where'd they go? What happened to those? Uh oh. Hmm? The hell? <laughs> They're around because I know I didn't use them all up, so somebody's gonna pay. Touching my circles. Oh, what the hell? I really don't understand where they went. sticking anything in my thing. I should know that by now, not to stick things in my thing. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to ink some damn more of them. Because they're always walking away. Hi, sticky art. Oh, no, that's a gold one. That's not one of the ones I did. That's a different one. Why is your art sticky? You need a lot of glue? stuff out in the living room I wanted to sh show you I got from the creative reuse place I put some of that on there's not much ink left in there so it's a struggle to get out what about this one that one's juicier but that's okay it'll look just dis really distressed oh I like that actually it's nice and dark Oh, I like it. I like it. It's not black either. It's ex espresso. Cool. I dig it. I guess just my style, but it is not a really cool name. It is a cool name. I like it. Because I thought, <laughs> I thought maybe you did something like, because it's sticky art, like I thought maybe you did like sticker art or something, or like something to do with glue or something sticky, or like maybe sticky art, maybe like candy, handmade sticky candy. I don't know, but it is a cute name because I'm always sticky, so I can relate to some sticky art. <laughs> My ass is always sticky. Well, my ass isn't always sticky exactly. But I'm 
I'm all sticky. Let me get the heat gun real quick. Here. I think it's wet. make like little plastic enforce reinforcers for the holes I could have sworn I seen that somewhere like little they're like like colored plastic or something or am I thinking am I completely off they do make them right Carl the alien you have a Carl the alien what's that you know it's not a cutter Carl what kind of alien Like a little green man alien. I don't know what I could do. Okay. We need to run inside the cell. Light color doesn't show on the side there. Good thinking. Okay, I'm going to put it on one side of the thick paper. Any of the thinner papers, I'll put it. It's okay, I forgot it's going to get this thing on it. It's not going to show. I can be as messy as I want. No, it's okay on that side. That one has it, but we're going to put these on anyway. Carl was a challenge from another art channel to make the body for Carl a hand puppet. The body for Carl. Your chat was stuck for five minutes. Oh, no. Heineken. Yeah, it's probably because of my because of the widescreen. That's probably why. Widescreen. Excuse you, glue. Widescreen camera. It'll do that sometimes. It'll distort the thing when you turn it one way or the other. That's just how it works, I guess. It's not very nice. It's like my hand, it gets like weird and fat over here. It gets wider and then when it comes in, it's not as wide <laughs> or it's like, it does weird things. It used to be worse before I adjusted it properly. Now it's much better than it was. Technology, so much fun, isn't it? Yeah, my arms look, will look short. Yeah. Don't make fun of my short arms. <laughs> what if my arms were really just short? They're not. I mean, well, they're not long either. They're just right, like Goldilocks and the three bears. Okay, so we got our two pages. Now I can, well, I'm going to ink the edges of them while they're here, since they're off of their doohickey. I just put my, uh, oh my goodness, how did fingers are bleeding. The ink was not dry and it had been sitting there for probably a week. 
No, we need the brown one back, which is not that one. Let's see. This one? That worked. Ugh, those are covered in ink. You've seen all kinds of those protector thingies. I know I've seen plastic ones. I know it. But. I, uh. Not dark enough. I was not making me very happy. I need to be darker. Where's that dark one I was using? This one, ground espresso. And I have a thing for it. <laughs> That's better. At least I can see it a little better. going to be my steampunk page so this is going to have some messierness to it and I need to get the hell out of my way or else or else there will be capital punishments for all items in my way that means you Oh. Oh, if I do the other page, I don't know what the hell I'm putting everything away for as if I'm all done. Dumbass. I'm a dumbass. Well, why would you take it down? If you take it down, you're losing, you're losing viewers, you're losing money. That's not smart. You need to leave up your streams and let them be a recording so that People can watch it later. This way, you get more views, you get more subscribers, and ultimately, you'll get more money on the channel. Never take down your streams. Not unless there's, you know, like if you had something go on in the stream or something that was drama, somebody came in and caused problems, then maybe, or, you know, something like that. But otherwise, no, don't take your streams down. You should leave them up. It's not good for your channel to, 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 to take them down. This side you can see nothing here, so I'm just going to go along the edge. Can't go and see nothing. It's too dark on that edge. I'm being stalked. The stalkers are back. Girls, go lay down. Stop stalking me. Nosy ass. Nosy ass. Do you have your channel monetized, Sticky? Who's Joyce? Oh, hi, Joyce. I was like, what? Well, I don't know who Sticky, I don't know your name, Sticky Art Channel. Let's 
So I thought when she said something about Joyce, I thought that was you until I looked up a little further. You had a birthday? Did I sing you happy birthday? No, that, I sang, who did I sing happy birthday to? Shazzy. And then somebody else. But not you though, right? I didn't sing you happy birthday. I get to sing you happy birthday. Is your birthday actually today? No, this goes on this side like this. Yeah. It's monetized? Yeah, well then definitely don't ever take your, your, your live streams down. That's a really bad idea. Because that, that's, you're going to lose, you know, views, which, which equals subscribers. I mean, not obviously not everybody that views your channel is going to subscribe. Um, they should. And, and, you know, I need to get into the habit of doing this because I can give you the best advice in the world how to, how to build your channel. Just don't follow what I do because I'm stupid. I forget. But before you even say anything, when you make a video... First thing you should do is tell people to subscribe. Don't tell them at the end. Tell them at the beginning. Because when you make a video, nine times out of ten, people that watch your video, they don't watch the whole thing. They only watch what they want to watch, and then they're, they're out. That's just how it happens. So if you wait till the end, trust me, as soon as they see that you're, even if they do watch it for the project, you know, to see what you do all the way through, as soon as you say, okay, well, you know, the project is done, and then you start saying, okay, bye, I'm going to get off here, blah, 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 whatever, by then they're gone. So you need to say it in the beginning. Say it in the beginning. You know, welcome to my channel. Please hit subscribe, whatever, whatever. Say it in the beginning, it's important. I always forget to do it too though, so. I need to practice what I preach, but. Because 80% of those who watch your channel are not subscribed. It's either 75 or 80 percent, something like that. Girls, what are you doing? Doing something. They're up to trouble. Joyce, happy birthday, Joyce. Shall I sing you happy birthday, Miss Joyce? going on? Why is it doing this? Oh. Oh. I don't know what they're stalking me about. girls are stalking me down the hallway. Oh, I know why. Your birthday was the 8th, but I didn't sing you happy birthday, did I? That's, what, that's why I'm saying I didn't, I don't think I sang you happy birthday because it was, 
I don't remember whose birthday I sang happy birthday to recently, but I don't think it was you. I'm going to go get a drink because I'm empty, and then I'm going to sing Joyce happy birthday. I'll be right back. Don't move, Joyce. That's an order. <laughs> I'll be right back. Okay, okay, okay. All right. <sighs> um. Okay. Well, let's sing happy birthday to Miss Joyce. Everybody sing along. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Joyce. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Miss Joyce. Oh, yeah, and um, I have another present for you, Joyce. I'm going to sing the song you want me to sing for you. If you'll just allow me one second. Um... to prepare one second <laughs> and uh, I'll sing it for you. So I'm gonna, I'll be right back. Just I'll be right back.
Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. I'm going to do the best I can. <clears throat> it's not going to be great, but I'll do the best I can. Sweet dreams of you. Every night I go through, why can't I forget you and start my life anew instead of having sweet dreams about you? You plain I should know I'll never wear your ring I should hate you the whole night through instead of having sweet dreams oh god that was off key sorry instead of having sweet dreams about you been a really long time since I sang that. Sorry, that's all I can do though because it's bad enough that YouTube will get mad at me if I sing it. So, sorry, that wasn't very good. I'm much better at that song when I have the music on to play with it. I can, for some, like, I don't know what it is. Like, a lot of Patsy Cline songs, they're, they're very, like, melody funny. You know what I mean? They're almost like, you know, a lot of blues songs, they're like, they're like in a weird kind of melody. I can't remember what it's called, but and some of those songs, it's really hard to do it without music because you don't know where the melody falls properly. I don't know. It sounds better with music. <laughs> but I did the best I could. Anywho. All right, now I have to put these back in my book. I told you I needed to wait until a day, wait until my voice was not hurting and being weird. And it finally felt, feels a little better. It's not great, but it feels better than it did. I can actually, I was, I've been able to get words out, but I'm sure at some point that'll go back to being like garbage again because it, it comes and goes. I don't know why. And like a couple of weeks ago, when you had asked me to sing it, it's like my voice was just not there. And I don't know why it does that. It's very annoying though. You know what? I think I want to utilize this in my doings. No, it's all my fault. What did I do? Alright, so this is going to be our steamy steampunk pages. Somehow we're going to incorporate this. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm thinking that maybe I might cut it down a little bit because it is a bit long, but I might do something this way. Like I might cut it like um, maybe an inch because I don't know. I don't know, the, the letters or the numbers are that way. It doesn't matter. That's the back of it anyway. Just got to do it because otherwise it's going to be weird. Well, don't think about it. Don't make every sad song a song that reminds you of something bad. I know it's harder or it's easier said than done, but... You have to try, or else, guess what? Every time you turn the radio on, you're going to be miserable. 
and you don't want to be miserable. But sometimes it's good to have, you know, a song give you the feels when you're going through something. Sometimes it can help further you along too. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. I'm gonna attach this because I don't wanna, maybe just make a pocket or something to put it in. Because I think what I'm gonna do You'll get there. You will. In the meantime, listen to angry songs. The angrier, the better. Cool diamond ad, huh? Oh, ad is playing, oh. Yeah, that started happening recently where ads are playing in my live streams. I wonder if it's, uh, like, I don't, were they, they haven't always played, have they? And do they, do, do they always play, like every, like, is it recently that they've been playing? Do they play for everybody? I, like, I'm trying to figure out what, I don't know. It's just weird. Well, Janie's a good one because she's like in every live stream and so is Carla. Do you guys get an ad every time you're in my live stream? And is it just one or is it more than that? Oh, it's just once in a while, but always when you refresh. I gotcha. I gotcha. Help you, sir. It's not time yet, buddy. It's time for you to go play. Almost, but not yet. No, buddy, go play, okay? Be a good boy. Be a good little boy. You know what happens when you're a naughty little boy? You're on my paper. Ah, ah, ah. Back it up. Nope. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Gracious. You're like, you're the most of the reason why my papers always end up crinkled. Don't sigh at me, boy. Don't sigh at me. You weirdo. No, Carl. No, Carl. Well. Oh no, I ain't bringing Tigger up here right now. Forget it. Too much stuff on my desk. I'd have to clean off and it's not happening today. <laughs> Besides, he needs to go and lay down. And be a good boy. Alright, so let's see. I want to do it maybe like that. Turn it 
and You know what happens when you're a naughty little boy? Nothing. It makes who what think of, huh? Are you talking to me? What makes me think of what? Oh. You're talking about that. I thought you were talking, asking me what. Well, what side do I want to play? This side? Dark blue? Or the light color? Probably the dark side. poke a hole in this. I'm gonna have to poke me a hole. Do some hole poking. Where's my hole poker? Sticky leave. Yeah, well. Unfortunately, husbands have a tendency to do stupid crap like that. But, you know what? If he left you, his loss, you're better off. Because somebody that would do that isn't worth it. They're just selfish prickazoids. And we don't need those in our lives. We just don't. None of us do. They can all suck it. All the selfish prickazoids. They can suck it one suck at a time. And then when they realize they made a mistake, that's when you tell them, oh well, live with your mistake, jackass. Live with it and love it. Sometimes they, they do that.
that's the that's that's you coming out of the um, denial stage, which is good. Once that happens, you'll once you get angry, it'll make it better. Anger will make everything better. <laughs> it sounds sad, but it's true. But yeah, if you're coming to the, the if you're figure, coming to the realization that stuff wasn't exactly as it seemed, then you are coming to the the next stage in things. I had to go through that too. It's not fun, but things <sighs> I don't know but I think I'm gonna get off of here because I need to I realize it's almost six o'clock in the morning and uh, if I want to get anything done tomorrow I need to be able to get up and get things done so I better quit while I'm ahead so I can function tomorrow because I got a lot to do tomorrow insane so Anyway, that's right, you have a lot of people here to keep your mind off of it, which is good. That's helpful. I wasn't in any craft groups or anything when me and my husband split up, but... I didn't really want to deal, deal with anybody else because my breakup was so weird and I just was like, I don't know, I just had to figure it out on my own. And once it did, it took a while because it was just not something I was ready for, I guess. And it was shocking. It was like regular break, breakups I can deal with. It's like, okay, you know, it sucks for a while. I'm not saying it's like that for everybody, but I just mean like I'm used to guys being jackasses and things happening and breaking up, but you know, it sucks. It's a pain in the ass. It'll get better though. Definitely. It always does. Obviously it's not going to, you know what I mean? It's not going to knock it better. It gets better. It's just, you know, you got to go through all the steps and the stages and the emotions and work through all that and when you do you'll come out on the other side much stronger and with a lot more wisdom as far as men is concerned you'll realize things believe me along the way you're going to realize things that you're going to be like holy crap you know what i mean like it's going to start to get to the point where you're just like wow how did i not see that you know what i mean you'll you'll see you'll, you'll start to see things a lot clearer and that's around the time you'll get to the angry stage <laughs> but anyway um i hope you guys have a good rest of your night get sleep everybody i gotta feed the girls because i that's why they're stalking me right now because they want to eat yep they're tiptoeing at the at my door <laughs> i'll talk to you later poodle pack out Pink Poodle Crafts, join the Poodle Pack. It's time to get creative and make you laugh. Make your own art today. Pink Poodle Crafts is the way. What a good boy.